Okay. Now, if the fans there said that they had to celebrate for that victory, then I'm sure it was a double whammy because then Ghana women in the final against Nigeria in a Jalof battle, Ghana beat Nigeria in extra time. Um, after in, in regulation time, the game ended one all. Ghana left it, if you like, late in extra time to win it against Nigeria in a packed Cape Coast Stadium, Felix. What a game that was. It was a befitting finale. Of course, very entertaining game, you know, in the women's football. Excellent game, I should say. The Ghanaians never gave up. And what a strike from, you know, Tracy Chumesi to level things up for the Ghanaians. It was very, very entertaining. If you look at the crowd, it contributed to, to how you know, special yeah. the game was and how entertaining no, the game and what a is. goal to win it. What an for incredible you. goal. That, that yeah. goal should win a gold. Yeah. And definitely that, that, that did happen for the princesses of Ghana. And I must say that for Coach Yusuf Bazigi, this is the second you know, African game medal yeah. he's been able to, to bargain for, for, for Ghana. Impressive. And this same team already yeah. have dominated the Waffle competition. They won the zone and then they've already qualified for the World. World Cup, the FIFA Under 20 World Cup, and what a way to crown it by winning mm. the African game gold in women's football. Yeah, so they picked up their gold medals in style. Of course, uh, Team Ghana uh, clinching gold in that, got to the podium, they picked up the gold, as you see it there, uh, being given to them, and they've deserved it. Listen, and we just saw the women's World Cup a couple of months ago, and it was massive with the attendance in the crowd, and, and this matches that this actually if you like tops it every place in the Kepco stadium was full the was 15, packed, capacity full and packed and the, the, the atmosphere though amazing correlations to to the ladies uh, correlation to nigeria and of course uganda who came in bronze places i very surprising to see nigeria uh, uganda mm. getting a podium finish when they were in a group with a uh, 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 lot of difficult teams in the group yeah. managing to get to where they are but it tells you that the african game is growing is growing it is growing ghana nigeria south africa morocco you need to watch your back right okay so let's take a look at what is coming up today for you program of the day what are you gonna see where are you gonna be i've got plenty places to be meanwhile well, we've got tennis coming up right after the show uh, where there's a final between Kenya and Egypt also the hockey final women's is coming up then at 4 or 1600 GMT there's gonna be the track and field where this place is gonna be buzzing and back here then at 1900 there's handball final between DR Congo and Egypt we come back uh, to wrap up the day's events for you at 2000 then there is the football final between Ghana and Uganda, a place for gold. That is where we've got coming your way today. What an exciting day this promises to be. An exciting day in prospects. Plenty for you to enjoy. Phoenix, thank you very much for your thank time you, today. Sir. And for you across the continents, across Africa, keep enjoying the games in the African game because today is going to be final upon final, medals upon medals, and don't miss out. Have a lovely one with the African games. International Maritime Hospital, IMA, situated in Tema Community 3, is a 130 bed capacity hospital and your one stop shop for all your health needs. IMA provides all medical and surgical specialities. We have a modern gastroenterology and endoscopy suite to take care of all your health needs. The International Maritime Hospital offers nephrology with renowned dialysis and boasts of one of a kind radiology department with a wide board 3 Tesla MRI scanner, the only one of its kind in Sub Sahara Africa. Africa. IMA boasts of a flagship comprehensive stroke center. IMA is open to the general public. We have enough. A life of plenty for every child. We've had enough all along. There's enough choice for every child. Enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere. Let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough. Enough. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. With a new and improved taste, it's delicious and refreshing. 
Coca Cola Zero Sugar. You need to try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? And abilities. I can cook. I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror. In the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. So if you are watching, this is the women's single final in the long tennis. Kenya currently have picked up a point in the set. Kenya versus Egypt. The Egyptians will be hoping to pick up a medal. That was a big, big point picked up by the Kenyan. playing against Salama Lamis. Salama about to serve. Thank you. 
Both players returning their strokes. And that was a good hit. Excellent one. That was very, very good return by Salamo. That was a great stroke. Salama will be hoping to add to the already the 90 gold medals won for the Egyptians. But she has to deal with the Kenyan. Returning those strokes. That should be out. And a two point from the Kenyan. Good start. A good start from the Kenyan. Angela Okoti. Surely this is not the start that Salama would have wanted. But still a lot of tennis to be played. That is another forty seven. did not work Salama Lami have a lot of challenges getting herself across the net. Angela returns it. Temperatures over 33 degrees here in Accra. It's a very difficult condition to play tennis in. But these are experienced players. And I'm sure they will get through those temperatures as they seek to grab either the gold or silver.
So Angela Okutu. in love for Angela in the fourth set. Impressive rally from both players. A 15 all in the fourth set. Angela with the serve. That was very poor from the Egyptians. 30-15. Angela will be hoping to take a very good lead in the fourth set. That was excellent. Excellent return of that. Excellent return. By Okuti Angela. They should give him that point in the fourth set. A good start to the four sets by the Kenyan. Salam Alamis. Good return. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. That was very, very good. They should go for the Egyptian. Okuti Angela, a three one lead. We still have a very long way to see who gets to pick up a gold or a silver in the women's tennis singles final. That should be out, and yes, it is. in love.
a lot of forced errors by the Egyptian. Salam al So Angela have a 3 2 lead. Angela Okuti has a 3 2 lead in the set. This is the tennis women single final between Kenya and Egypt. Angela Okuti. She was the first Kenyan to ever win a Grand Slam title at the Genius in Wembley. Twenty year old, a two hundred backhand specialist. A medal hopeful for the Kenyans. And it's not surprising that she is in the finals of the women's single tennis. Will she be able to pick up a medal for Kenya in this particular discipline? She has a 3 2 lead in the first set, and she's seven. She couldn't return that from Salama Lamis. Temperatures around 33 degrees Celsius here in Accra. So much heat. But these are the temperatures you need to go through in search of a gold. 3015 for Angela. Salama Lamis a bit disappointed with her return of that ball. Angela Seves. Let's go. 
both players putting up an impressive rally. That's a very good one. Was that in? Was that in for Angela? And yes, it is. But Salama contesting that. That, that is very close. But the umpire says no, that was in. Angela has been very good, especially with this backhand returns. But she couldn't return that. Salama will be happy with that. of the tennis singles final at the 13th African Games. Salama Lamis. That was good. That was very, very good for the Egyptian. So much power, Angela couldn't retain that. Disappointing from Angela. Lamy serves. Lamy is out with Sayyid Abdul Aziz, currently ranked 562 on the WTA singles ranking as at 18th of March, and 716 on the ITF single ranking as at 18th of March. For the Kenyan Angela Okotuyi, 49 on the ITF Junior Ranking, was her best in September 2022. Currently 68. A medal hopeful for Kenya. 
both players trying to rally. And a point. That was it. Beautiful. Beautiful tennis. From the Egyptian Salam Alamis. So Angela now trailing the Egyptian. It's four three for the Egyptian in the first set of the tennis women's singles final at the 13th African Games. Some of the highlights from this first set. Al Hussein. Angela Okuti. She has a 4 3 lead in, in this set. And she gets to serve. Disappointed return of that serve by Lamise. Angela have started picking up the points in this game. Is she going to pick up the first set? That is poor. That was a poor return. A poor return from Lamis. That means return that moment of rally. That was difficult. Angela needed a lot of pace in returning that, but she couldn't get to it. And Salama pick up the point. <laughs> 
That was a very powerful serve by the Kenyan. So much power. Lamis couldn't retain that. A good return by Angela. The good backstroke. What a smash. That was a powerful smash by Salama. You are not getting to that. There was so much power with that smash. Excellent. Excellent. Samala Lamis. Was that out? Salama should get that point. If you are just joining us, this is the tennis women's singles finals, the 13th African Games. Oko Toyi Angela representing Kenya. Al Hussein Salama Lamis representing Egypt. A good return of that. Can Angela return that? that should, there should be a smash from Salama. And that was a powerful smash. It's been a very competitive game of tennis in this set. Salama won't be happy with that. She has the momentum. And I'm not sure she'll be happy with the return. When you have the opportunity to serve, you will surely want to make use of every one of them. Good return from Angela. So excited. They're picking up the point. single final the 13th African Games
5-4 in the first set. <laughs> Temperatures around 33 degrees Celsius. Difficult conditions. But I stick. It's a gold medal. And that is what both players are fighting for. Angela has a five point lead in the first set. And she's she's picking up this point. Lamis couldn't retain that serve. That point goes to Angela. Angela serves so much power with that serve. Lamis returned it straight into the net. It was very disappointing from the king. Angela Okutui, du Kenya bien sûr, pour l'instant, qui euh, fait la course en tête et qui euh, veut aller conclure ce jeu avant bien sûr la, la seconde manche. C'est plus réussi. Oh 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 Et c'est bon That was bon. excellent tennis from Angela. La première manche 6-4 pour la Kenya. Dans quelques minutes, place à la seconde manche. Stand the lead in the first set. So that's the game over. That's the set over. And Egypt took it by six games to four. That is Salama Lamis El Hussein. But just being um, Angela Okutoyi yeah. of Kenya wins the first set. And the Kenyans have not exactly had the best of performances in the entirety of the tournament because we tend to know that they dominate lots of the long distances. But for once, they are showing that they are a bit more diverse in other areas, and tennis in particular. And this has been shown by Kenya at uh, uh, Angela Okutoyi winning the first set six games to four so talking about angela she became the first kenyan to win a grand slam title at the girls juniors at wembley and and that tells you that she is very good at what she does the problem has been translating it into the main 
uh, arena. When I say the main arena, I'm talking about where you have not only the Grand Slams and the one that is regarded as the first Grand Slam, the one that was just taken, that took place at Indian Wells in California, but you know the the circuit, as it were, the WTA 500, WTA 1000, and that's where, if we'll be fair, Africans have been found wanting, absolutely found wanting. But here, it's for the nation, as it were, and of course, Okutoyi has taken the first set, six games to four. Question now is, can she maintain the run, or will El Hussein come back to level it all, and then we could be going for a third set? But here comes Okutoyi, and very soon. Uh, well, you can see that it will be El Hussein to serve. The first game of the second set. That's an ace. 15, love. Brilliant double forehand down the line. Thirty love. Second set. Beg your pardon. Second ball. Brilliant return there by Okutoyi. So that brings it to 40-15. Obviously, Hussein went down the line, but she didn't count on Okutoyi getting it. So it's 40 15. That was lock. And that's double. So it's 40 30 now. Double faults. Oh, that's very fortunate. And so that's the first game of this set going to Egypt. So Egypt now take the first set, courtesy of El Hussein. Very fortunate. The ball dropped in her favor. And so now they will change over. And of course, this is the, the women's final. Remember, Kenya took the first set, 6 4 to love, courtesy of Okutui. And Okutui now serves for the second. Ça travaille. C'est intéressant. 
Well, trying to do a lot of top spin lob. I'm not too sure whether this is the surface for spins. We know that when it's clay, that works out. But you really, you thought you should have gone pop power. It's love. That was reckless. And the Kenyan lady, Angela Okutoyi, had a lot to do in this set. She's really got a fight on her hands now. The first serve, that was working well. In the first set, it's not working well at the start of the second set. Double fault. That is a big point. For El Hussein. That was a fortunate call. Deuce. The return was not the best. But she got the call. He says fortune favors the brave. Advantage. Okutoyi, or is it Okutoyi? When I saw her for the first time, I really could have sworn she was Nigerian because of the green that she's wearing. But she's a Kenyan. Second serve. That looked out. So we're back. We're back to Deuce. And this game has gone on a tad too long, probably, for Okutoyi. But obviously, El Hussein will say otherwise. What's the problem now? Change of racket. Why? Is it a medical timeout? 
Non. Alors, heureusement qu'elle va revenir. Monsieur Romain a eu un, un petit contact hein, avec un ramasseur de balles. Il a retrouvé la concentration. Il a regardé trop bien. Why does he open she's not picked up some ailment? Deuce. Advantage? Al Hussein. And that's out. That murderous back to Deuce. I'd love to know how long this game has been going for. Advantage Okutoyi of Kenya. And that's game to Okutoyu. Kenya now levels it at 1 1. El Hussein will serve. And that was a very poor return from her. You could even have reduced the height of the net and it probably wouldn't even have gone over. Today is the last day for track and fields at the Legon Arena. And of course, today is the final of the men's football. Second serve. Love 15. Once again, into the net, love 30. Al Hussein is now two points down on her own serve. Second serve. Wow, that was out, and this is where we were talking about <laughs> there not being no Hawkeye. 
Hoka would have settled this, but it's been ruled out. It's been ruled out, and so two big points for Okutoi to give Kenya a 2-1 lead in the second set. And that's it. They'll go for the switchover. Kenya now leads two games to one. One set to love in the second set. Okuto he does a lot of these top spin lops, and that was where fortune favored the brave. The net stopped it from going out. Remember that Angela Okute had a fantastic junior, uh, which was on the junior circuit as it were, but the problem has, for most of us, when I say as Africans, of translating, moving it from that level to the circuit itself, the WTA 250, WTA 500, WTA 1000, and then obviously the Grand Slam, and Kwame, that's one of the major problems Africa has. You can't translate it up at that level. Well, it's it's very rare you see the African ladies at a very high level. It's, it's always been like that. Even for the men, uh, you, we've not had too many at a very high level, apart from maybe the South Africans, Wayne Ferreira and Cole, who played at a very high level. Even they, our own Franco Furi and Cole. They, they, they did, and um, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, Anderson, the South African. But basically, I mean, if you call a spade a spade, um, you have to say that for the ordinary African, um, it's quite an expensive sport. Exactly. Buying the racket is, is, is very expensive. It's Buying the ball is very expensive. And then you need to go to the few clubs that are on the continent, and they are rather tended to favor the exactly well-to-do in terms of um, whatnot. But, yes, you mentioned Wayne Ferreira. Uh, there was this Zimbabwe chap. But anyway, this is um, Okutei to serve, leading 2-1. Oh, right. So it's love 15. Women's singles final tennis. Kenya lead one set to love, 6-4, and two sets to one in the second set. Big pardon, two games to one, sorry. 15 all. Fifteen. She is getting her game going again. Okutoyi. Pretty much seven volley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. That's a fault. Second service. Second service. much of a slice yeah Thirty. 
nos parents aujourd'hui. Game to Okutoyi. Game to Kenya. Fair one. And she's already won the first set, 16 to 4. Yeah. And with a 3 1 lead in the second set. She's probably on her way to victory. The problem is El Hussein's returns have been going almost always into the net. So 3 1. The fault. That, that was out. Yeah. Second service. Whoa! Oh. Was that in or was it out? We would always have an issue with the video review here. When there is no <laughs> Hawkeye. When there is no Hawkeye, that's the problem. It seems to have touched it. Just, only just. Well, it's been called out. Um, the score is currently 3-1, so please totally disregard the, the graphic there. Out. That's out. Wow. That was a brilliant return, Carl. What a return. That was a brilliant return. Absolutely no Whoa. chance there for the Egyptian. He's out. Yeah. That one did not need a video review. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Uh, that one was clear as daylight. Yes. That's second service. She just do. That was an opportunity gonna beg in there. She had, she had what did she just do? Options. The court was there for the opening. The, oh, the entire court was there for God. the taking. Going with great, great. What that means is that she's taking a four games to lead. Uh, four, four one to one in the second, the second set. set. Four one in the second set. She's, she's broken her twice this. already. Yeah. My goodness. You get a feeling that. Um, sorry, fellow Egyptians, but the die is cast there, because Kenya leads one set to love by six games to four and now lead four sets to one but well, what's in the second set is really all up to the kenya down and what she does in the next game if she wins the next game and takes a 5-1 lead then it makes it a lot harder for the egyptian to come back into this one but who knows 
these are some of the returns and then some of the unforced errors that occurred with El Hussein sending the balls into the net this one for instance totally out the court was waiting for her and she's made one too many of this too many one too many her body language doesn't look great I think you've summed it up body language thank you so Okutoyi to serve in the sixth game she leads one set to love four one in the second set 15 love the returns of Hussein El Hussein are becoming more and more erratic I wish 30 love. I wish I could know how many unforced errors El Hussein has done. There have been loads of them. Loads of them. Her body language doesn't look great for me. She comes across as someone who is frustrated on the court, and that's probably seeping into her game. It's one of those days where nothing seems to be working well, for you. You can throw everything, including the yeah. kitchen towel, and it ain't going to work. But they are the office, maybe. That was brilliant. Just on the line. That was like brilliant. Right on the line. 30-15. Would that do her confidence some good? It could. And on the other hand, it could be just one of those things. You know? Yeah. Initial mistake came from Okuteyi when El Hassan was this one here. Yeah. Should have rather gone to this side. Yeah. The other side, sorry. So it's 30 all. I thought she was going to go cross court. Absolutely. And then she went straight at the player. And it was a little easier for the Egyptian El Hussein to retain that. Out. Second serve. Out. Forty thirty. Again, one of those very poor returns from the Egyptian. By a country mile. Okutei on the brink of making it 5-1 in this second set. That's second service. It's Deuce. Advantage El Hussein. Can she break and stop the momentum from Okutoyi? Ah. Deuce. 
Well, when brilliant you're inspired, when yeah. you're inspired, this is what happens. Yeah. That was a brilliant passing shot. Absolutely no chance. But I think Pukichoye has not been doing it too often. She's always rather seemed to be going for power down the middle and relying on mistakes or unforced errors from El Hussein. Well, if that's the game plan and it's working, it could be risky. Though. <laughs> Long second service. I was fortunate. Nice. Ah. Then again. Ah. Another backhand into the net. Unforced error. Another unforced error from El Hussein. This is the back to Adva use. Yeah. No advantage. Was that in? Was that in? Was that in? We'll probably have to have a look at the replay. Wow. If that was in, then it's game to open. Oh, it was yes. inside the line. Just. Only just. Oh, yes. He's now 5 1 up. And this is what El Hussein was probably looking to avoid. He's now, yeah, absolutely. Down by four games and playing catch up. 5 1. On the brink of becoming the African Games tennis champion. She's got to do everything to win at least this game. Oh, oh, oh. oh this ah. is, this is, when it's for you, it is for you. Love 15. Kwame, when it's for you, it's for you. Yeah, I mean, she's just having a very fine day on courts. It looks like everything she does Tell comes good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like everything she does comes good. Well done, Okutoi. Fifteen all, very uncharacteristic mm. of Okutoi there. And incidentally, two days ago, I met um, the um, senior brother Ike of uh, Franco Fori, right okay. in the stadium. Yeah, he's back, and he was just taking a look at it. And I asked them where Frank was, and he said Frank was still Must in, be the, in the US, he's yeah. still in the states. Yeah, he hasn't come back yet. Training the kids in Florida, I think. Wow, love. At 15.30. What is happening? El Hussein. Two points away for Okutoyi to be crowned women's champion of tennis. Oh. <laughs> 30 all. And that's an interesting thing. Um, Okutoyi sounds very much like Sharapova, Maria Sharapova. <laughs> or, uh, uh, what's her name? Arina Sabalenka. A lot of granting, a lot of noise making with every point that she hits. And, if, and even Victoria Azarenka. Yeah. I mean, these days, quite a number of them. Mm. These days, quite a number. Brilliant! Brilliant! Fabulous from the Egyptian El Hussein. 40, Why has 30. she not been doing this all I don't know. I mean, she's got to be looking back at this shot and be asking yourself, why haven't I done a lot more of these? Thank you very much. Ah. Second service. What is the I'm umpire? I'm not sure what the issue is. What is the umpire saying? Sometimes it has a way of distracting yeah, the player. Absolutely, bit. that's just the words or the words I was looking for. Yes. That's it. 
So 5-2. And this, they will go and take their customary time off. She does just about enough yeah, five to two. win this game. They'll switch over, and then it will be Okutoyi, the Kenyan, seven. And, and that's where it gets a little challenging for El Hussein. She's been struggling to retain the serves. Okutoyi and Okutoyi would know yep. that he's all, she's also seven, not just for the game, but seven for the match as well. Yeah. If she gets to win that game she wins 6-4 6-2 and is a best of three yeah so she would be in the position to give it everything and win in straight sets let's see whether i'm saying would we'll put in a fight in the next game And you have to say that tennis has been a sport that has been gradually attracting more and more interest on the continent. Hence, that's why it's in the African Games. It will be very, very lovely to see an African win one of the Grand Slam titles. And then who knows, from there, maybe that could be the yardstick for others to begin to enjoy the sports more. And so, you're back on court, probably for the last game, probably is the key word here as the Kenyan lady, El Kutoyi, I beg your pardon, Kutoyi will serve for the match. Second service. Out, love, 15. There's a momentum with the Egyptian now. One wonders. Or probably too little, too late. But who knows? Because who she's, knows? Got to, she's got to win three in a row to even get level. Left to a first service. Ended in the court, so... First so time. she's got two more service opportunities. Yeah. So now second service. Yeah. Oh, it's a brilliant return. Oh, Fantastic. yes. Oh, yes. She's got the bit between her teeth. Love 30. <laughs> More of this, she'll be hoping. She'll just be hoping that this game goes her way as well and gets uh, the Kenyan nervy a bit. Kutoi on serve has been great. She'll probably find her way in this game. Yeah. Wow. Just when I said she would find a way to lose the game, she wins a point. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was a very strong or should I say forehand, yeah. but not good enough. Fifteen thirty, mm -hmm. because uh, it's Okute E seven. Thirty thirty. Two points away now. Now the pressure begins to mount on both ladies. Yeah. Look who told you to serve. Oh. Whoa! A set points and much points now. Forty thirty, like you said, Kwame. Hmm? Not only set point, match point as well. If she gets this, it's all over. It's gold to Kenya. If she gets this, second service now. 
the nerves showing in that serve. <laughs> Brilliant! We got news. We're back on news. That was a good forehand there from the Egyptian. Going cross court. El Chance for Okutoi. Deuce. The Kenyan leads by one set and leads the second set five games to two. First service. Advantage, El Hussein. Can she break the Kenyan? That's the question. Can she break the Kenyan? Multi million dollar question. It's as if each of the ladies doesn't want to make a mistake, so they're just hitting it and hoping that the other one would have an unforced error. Can she win the next point and claw her way back into this game? It was, that was in. in. Oh. That was in. That was in from this no. angle. That was in. Surely. From this Surely. angle, that was in. But let's have a look at the replay again. Well, if they will give us, or even if this is why there's an absolute need for Hawkeye. Oh, this would hurt. It would hurt. Because that would have been an opportunity for LC to have been won this game. To make it 5 3. It's back to Deuce now. Would have to see this again. Second we would have to see this again. Game point, out. set point, and match point for Okutoi. She was trying to go cross court, but that shot was not good enough. Now it's game point and set point. Game point, set point, and match point. Kenyan. She might just finish the job now. You, you suspect so. She might just finish the job with the serve. For a moment, I thought that was a mace. I also thought it was. <laughs> oh. Oh. Back to this. Back to this. She was a point away from losing the game, the set, and the match. Now it's back to Deuce. Oh. That's out. Advantage. Okutoi. Advantage. The Kenyan. Game points, set points, and match points. She might just be thinking, I've got to do it this time. I've got to do it this time. We've been going back and forth this game. I've got to finish the job. Will she finish the job? Yeah. 
Yes. Box, game, set, and match. Gold medal goes to Kenya and Okutoyi. Angela Okutoyi beating Salama Lamis El Hussein. 6-4, 6-2 in the women's singles final. And that's another gold medal to Kenya. Are those Kenyans blowing the trumpets? Absolutely. At least I saw a Kenyan flag in there somewhere celebrating the exploits of Angela Okutui who has won gold in the ladies singles for Kenya. It's not often an Egyptian has been denied in the final at those years African yeah. games. Yeah. It does appear that when they make it to a final in any sport they find a way to nick the gold. Absolutely. That gold medal by Angelo Kutui now makes it six gold medals for Kenya at the ZS African Games and adding up to the 24 medals they have won in total to make it 25 medals for Kenya at the ZS African Games. But you have to say the Egyptians are running away with this. 94 gold medals. Unbelievable. Can they get 200? Well, there's still 48 hours more of competition to go. They seem to be winning a lot of their medals. So, but tomorrow will be the last day, isn't it? Yeah. So we've still got today and tomorrow to go.
noted powerhouse in men's hockey, winning the African Championships in 1974, or was it 75, sorry. But since then, it's been a systems of downward trend. Question is, can the ladies turn the trend and send it up another notch? Yeah. To really those, 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 those days. Yeah, yeah there's a sport that um, uh, has pretty much been dominated by, I mean, before the exploits of the South Africans and the North Africans, Ghana, Nigeria were in the class of their own, playing at a very high level. Well, that because uh, 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 that because South Africa were not part of yeah, it. At the time, <laughs> yes. At the time, they were doing it, but because of apartheid, they were not competing at the international level. And sadly, this year, they were here in Ghana, but for reasons for which we all know, they did not take part. Why are you afraid to say it, Kwame? Just say it. Well, I mean, everybody knows why they left. The South Africans have not gone public on why they left, never mind the pressure that was held by the African Hockey Federation boss. And the, and the African Hockey Federation boss said that they see it, they find nothing wrong with the pitch, exactly. they find nothing wrong with anything, so get on with the business of playing, and Just then you throw a half and you walk out. Yeah. So the South Africans decided to go, Ghana decided to play, just like Nigeria. And that's why the two of them are in the final, Ghana in the all yellow outfit, Nigeria in their traditional green and white outfits. There'll be two periods in this game. 30 minutes each. But it's played in quarters. There's a strike from distance. Uh, let me just run you through a few, a few rules as far as uh, this game is uh, concerned. The players that you see, that's the outfield players, of course, can only hit the ball with the flat side of their stick. And they are not allowed to use their feet or any other part of their body to control the ball at any time. You can only score a goal from inside the striking circle. And that's a strike, uh, striking circle in there. So it's not a sport where you can score from distance. distance. If you're scoring from distance, it's not going to count. You have to get into that circle, that arc you see there. And then, if you manage to find a target from there, then that goal is going to count. And that's the interesting part. Of course, there's also a golden rule in hockey where you always back up your partner on the offensive blue line, of course. And those are the lines that we're talking about. We've had some, quite some rivalry games between Ghana and Nigeria. It looks like we're competing with them everywhere. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this year's African yeah. Games, I, I, I've lost count of the number of matchups between Ghana. I mean, there have been 30 sporting disciplines, 3-0. And some way, somehow, you find a ghana Niger game somewhere. We'll be looking forward to more. It's not only football alone, but it looks like we're competing everywhere. That's the Nigerians in your show there looking to take advantage of this possession that they have. But Ghana control that and will look to start an attack of their own. Ghana will look to start an attack of their own. It's, it's quite humid here, you have to say. Some rains this morning probably will help play a bit. But the temperatures are still around 30 still to 32 Fairly, degrees Celsius. Yeah. Because the rain still coming early this morning. That, that might reduce the humidity Ghanians. a bit, but these ladies are fine. They've been used to playing in these conditions, Felix. Well, especially, they be fine. especially <laughs> they've been West Africans. Exactly. I mean, they are very familiar with this weather. So, I mean, whether it's hot or whether it's um, that humid or that cold, they would find a way. And that goes out of touch. We've played only a few minutes in this game. No goal to either side. The last time I saw Team Ghana in action, you have to say they have them puffed in getting a result against Gambia. Will they be able to get a result against Nigeria? Especially as we bring you the final. Remember, it's a final, so it's gold and silver. A lot of stake. A lot of stake. 
interestingly it was only three teams in the ladies competition only three so even before the hockey competition started once the south africans pulled out at least you knew you were going to go away with the medal, medal. at least but of course if you won something then you knew you were in a position for at least a silver or a gold medal so if ghana gets to win this one they go away with a gold medal and already ghana has won 11 gold medals at this year's competition looking to start an attack but no that ball goes out of touch that goes out of touch as nigeria would look to restart this your stamina levels have to be very high in the sport running up and down the the pitch with that hockey stick in your hand can be a lot of work the umpire not happy with something game restarts Ghana looking to attack did that final touch come off the Ghanaian player what were the empire's rule it did appear to have come off the Nigerian player so Ghana would look to restart this player number 13 striking from distance and that's the goal no that's not going to count it looks like the Empire yeah it was outside the, outside the scoring area and it even looked like the Empire had whistled for something even before this she did strike the ball so and the rules are quite clear you can't score from distance oh, so maybe one of those rules we're going for and they might have to look at again because if you can hit the ball very hard from a distance why not <laughs> i mean why does it have to be the arc if you can hit the ball from a distance why not no, you can pass from a distance oh you can pass from a distance <laughs> what i mean if you can pass from a distance you can't hit from a distance so one of the things that i've seen when i have seen a player strike the ball from distance is hoping that the ball might just deflect off you know the stick of another player and maybe just maybe it goes in so absolutely nothing wrong with trying your luck from distance but if it doesn't come off anyone the goal would not stand so that's why this has not stood it's still zero zero we'll get a confirmation of how many minutes the two teams have been on the pitch so far As a penultimate day of competition With respect to the entirety of the african games quite a number of athletes have come in here and performed for their nations winning as many medals there's now an opportunity for these two nations to also win something the nigerians have won quite a number of medals almost hitting 100 at this year's african games in second position at this point on the medal table and these ladies would look to represent their country very very strongly on this hockey court penalty corner advantage nigeria at a very high level a penalty corner is as good <laughs> as finding goal. the back of the net let's see whether the nigerians can convert can they convert from here no that was a poor the goalkeeper making strike. a great save and ghana will look to go on offense down do they have numbers in attack yes they do oh no she's left the ball behind it was three on three and an opportunity for ghana to have taken advantage of that possession they just could not take advantage of that possession as nigeria looked to create something of their own the umpire has whistled for a foul in favor of the nigerians Once there's a white and there's a green somewhere, I'm sure their Nikis might be green sticks. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Benedicta. Looking to connect. And what that is one of those long attempts. You hit the ball very hard and you hope that your opponents may just connect. And if it does go in. There's the gold medal game between Ghana and Nigeria. Ghana looking to slip through there. But that Nigerian defense deal with the threats from Ghana. Nigeria looking to break themselves. This could be a chance for Nigeria. 
Unfortunately, they do not have too many players in offense. Oh, brilliance there. But what a save from the Ghana goalkeeper. What a save from the Ghana goalkeeper. Well, I'm not too sure. The Reigns has made the movements of these players and the ball that easy. It's quite obvious that not all the water from the rain has percolated into the soil. Nigeria and their white and green outfit. Ghana in their traditional yellow outfit. We are still in the first period. No goal to Ghana. No goal to Nigeria. This is the final of the hockey in the ladies division. And I would hope for a strong performance to win this one. Represented by Nafisa to Umaru, Cecilia Mwako, Adiza to Sulimana, Rahel Banfo, Elizabeth Opuku, Lydia Free, Joela Aqua, Mavis Berko. Margaret Ousua, Vivian Nako, Abigail Boy, Akon Mercy, Amwa Ajoa, Ampimdakwa Mavis, Entry Doris, Kofi Anestina, Kopsin Hagit, and uh, Umaru Nalisatu. Ghana winning this previous game against the Kenyans by four goals to one. And they will be hoping to get yet another result. There's only three teams that participated in the women's hockey. So having won the first game by four goals to one, if they also win this with a healthy lead, Ghana would get to go away with the gold medal. Nigeria would have a lot to say about that though. Aisha Adamu in there together with Benedicta Johnson, Comfort Saturday, Damilula Ogumaki, Esther Bilu, Esther Chiku, Faith Obukoho, uh, Hannah Hosanna. Uh, together with Ivrin Ajikwe, Nigeria looking to break at this point. But not too much power on that strike. Not too much power on that strike from the Nigerians dealt with by Team Ghana. Nigeria will look to restart this one. Still no goal to either side. Oh, that should, that should be a be foul. A yeah. yeah, that's no doubt. Mm -hmm. That should be a foul. And both players remain some on the pitch. They clearly need some medical attention there. It was a bit of a Messiah con and notch. It was a bit of a notch there. Game restarts. Still no goal to Ghana. No goal to Nigeria. There's a final of the round robin. All three teams playing against each other. So it's all about how Ghana get to perform in this one. Having won their first game against Kenya by four goals to one. Can they finish the job against Nigeria and win that gold medal? Can they finish that job against Nigeria and win that gold medal? Ghana regaining possession high up the pitch. That was a strike from distance, but it was outside the arc. The scoring arc or the scoring circle.
Doris MP with that particular strike. I'm sure she was hoping for a deflection. Well, if I had my way, I would change the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of viewers around the continent will be ask, asking about uh, those umbrellas around the stadium. This particular hockey pitch is located right in the middle of the, the central, central business district of Accra. So. A lot of activities ongoing. Yeah. There are a lot of traders where you see those umbrellas. So never mind. They are not protecting themselves. <laughs> they are doing business. <laughs> They are not protecting themselves in those shades. They are doing business. Aheli, player number 12 for Nigeria. That was a wild hit. That was a wild hit from Ajeli there. Not too sure what exactly she wanted to do. But it does appear. The first period has come to an end. There are four periods in the game. But it, in between the periods, there are two halves. As we get to see some highlights of what transpired before the break, the Ghanaian goalie making some very good saves there to deny the Nigerians. Another one of those saves that we did see in the first few minutes. Doris entry. Hoping to lead Ghana to glory together with her skipper Elizabeth Oboku. The umpires confer as the players take a break and prepare to return for the second part or the second period of the first half. The Ghanaians are already back on the pitch. The Nigerians will take a little more time to confer and agree on a thing or two. The Ghanaian players would know the relevance of this game and how they may possibly be in a position to make history. I can tell you for a fact that most of the ladies that are representing Ghana and Nigeria are deeply involved in the African Cup for club championship when it comes to hockey. That's right. A lot of them are from the services, the Ghana Police Services. And for Nigeria, they are a very good hockey team when it comes to Delta Queens. The most important thing is what these two teams do in this final. Can they win this? Player number four for Ghana in your shorts there. The joy behind the ball. Together with Faith. I like the names, Joy, Faith. Yeah, that's typical Nigerian. Yeah. yeah. Player number eight for Ghana. You have Making her way you to have the bench. Comfort. You have precious, you have faith, you have joy. Ghana falls into a substitution. I'm not too sure whether player number eight, Cecilia Marco, has been injured. Or maybe whether that is a tactical switch. Or maybe, just maybe, she's not been good enough. Ghana with possession. That's a poor ball to give away. And a recovery. Excellent recovery from Us Usua Magnet. Margaret Ousua. It's not being that, if you like, quick fire Sweet. approach. Yeah. yeah. The game appears to be a bit slow. I'm not too sure whether it has to do with how the rains has possibly affected the pitch as Ghana look to break from here. But three Nigerian players in a very fine defensive shape, denying the Ghanaian player of making her way all the way through to the scoring circle. That goes out. And Kwame, we can also attribute the slow pace of the game to the conditions under which this game is being played. 33 degrees Celsius. 
These ladies play on the court, especially for the Ghanaian players. Train there every now and then. The sun is out. Never mind it raining here in a crowd this morning, but the sun is out. And then it's, it's, it's a medal game. Both teams are being cautious. Yes. There'll be a bit of nerves. Nobody wants to lose this one. Of course. And I'll be surprised if the winner wins it with a very close margin of scoreline. On the evidence of what we've seen of the two teams, you have to say that we might not see too many goals in this one. Not at all, Kwame. Probably one team might just score and that might just be it. But we still have some time ahead of us. Will the two teams be able to make a winner within regulation time? So if you've just joined us, this is the hockey women's final between Ghana and Nigeria at the 13th African Games. This game is coming to you from the Tulio Dosia Oko hockey pitch. So Dosia Oko was a Ghanaian teacher and a known artist. She designed the Ghana national flag and also played a very key role in developing the game of hockey. Exactly. So Kwame, not wrong at all to have the pitch or the stadium named, named after her. her. Yeah. Okay. That did not come off anyone. So again, it would not count. And that's why the Nigerian goalkeeper allowed the ball to just roll into the net. Because that hit was from outside the scoring circle. That, that, is, that is one rule you want to change. No. <laughs> I'm sure for the guys uh, with the International Hockey Federation, they, they are good with that. Yeah. They are okay with that. Yeah. If they were not okay with that, they would have changed the rule by now. I would want to believe they are okay with that. And that's why they've kept it that way. The umpire signaling something. Gonna start an attack from here. Player number 13 with possession. Oh, brilliantly done. But she loses possession, but she finds a way to regain possession again. Player number 13 for Ghana, Juela Aqua. She was trying something special there, but it, not, it did not come off. But Ghana was so press and look for opportunities to score. Did that go out? Yes. Ghana with possession. What are the options? Ghana attacking from the right hand side of your pitch. They've got to up the ante a little bit. They've got to up the ante a little bit. The game appears to be a bit slow. That was a oh, very good brilliant pass. through ball there. What would Nigeria do with this? It's just two on four. Oh, good strike. How did that not go in? She was hoping to get some support from her colleagues. And then when she turned around and realized that she was alone, Abigail, she just went for the targets. Abigail Boy had no answers to that. Not at all. The post to the rescue of the Ghanaians. Very much to the rescue. Then I would have been down by a goal by this time. That was Elizabeth Opoku trying to add a bit of pace to the Ghanaian attack. They need that. They need to feed off each other's energy. So when the energy levels are low with a single player, it might possibly affect everyone else. Ghana looking to try a one-two there, but that has not worked. That's Nigeria. Regain possession, Nigeria. What would they do? They find a good pass, but it's numbers up front that they lack at this point. Up to four Ghanaian players in defensive positions, and only three Nigerian players in attack there. He was trying to lift the ball into the net of the Ghanaian goalpost, Damboi, but that has not worked, and it will still remain 0-0. Zero, zero. It will still remain 0 0. The Ghanaian players being urged to attack and do well to find targets. The longer the game goes on without Ghana scoring, then it becomes a bit nervy. 
and the players themselves might become maybe a bit worried or you might just get to them and then someone might just nicking a winning goal and that would just be it and that's something that you would want to avoid njoku from nigeria they will be very happy that he silenced the Ghanaian crowd so far of course It's still 0 0. And just in case you are tuning in, this is the final. This could be a chance. Oh, well done. Great goalkeeping. Well done by the Nigerian goalkeeper. From, Pusaru, from Adamo Aisha. She defended this so well. And remember, she's the only person who can handle, can kick the ball, can do all of that. And she's also very well protected because of the power of that ball. It looks very small, but it can cause a lot of problems. And that's why the goalkeepers have a head gear, just in case there's a strike from distance and it connects with the head. You have some protective you gear. You have some protective gear. It is still no goal to Ghana, no goal to Nigeria. There's a final of the women's hockey. It's pretty much a round robin game though. Everyone plays each other. The Ghanaians should try it as much as possible and get their captain Elizabeth Opoku on the ball. You can clearly sense that they are pushing hard for that opening goal. But then again, you just have the feeling that the Nigerians. And that's Elizabeth. That's right very good Ghana on the back of that ball going out get to restart position there's no corner in this but there's what you call a penalty corner so if you're thinking the last touch me I'll come out and get a Nigerian player or a Ghanaian player at some point oh. play and then you go to the, you go to the far end. Nothing will happen. <laughs> Player number fifteen, Elizabeth Puku, with a decent strike. The Kenyans appear to have numbers on this offensive play. They appear to have numbers. Oh, but they've lost possession of the ball. Oh. Oh. The lack we, haven't, of concentration. we haven't seen a lot of chances being created yeah. in this game. It was a lack of concentration on the part of the Ghanaian player. Once you're on the pitch, you could be past the ball at any time. And she should have anticipated that. Ghana looking to start a counter of their own. The Nigerians are on the offensive. They'll try to create an opportunity or two for themselves. The Nigerians. They've been unlucky with that ball coming off the post. And again, the umpire has whistled for something. Player number six for Ghana would get to restart this. I've gonna look to find some holes and exploit the opportunities that may come their way. Nafisatu Umaru. That's the name. Player number four for Ghana and Estina Kofi in possession, but that ball goes to touch. Bilu from Nigeria will try to get this back into play. Esther Bilu. We'll try to get this back into play. 
Nigeria, but the loose possession of the ball, what will Ghana do with us? But that ball goes out, and Nigeria gets to restart the game again. Nigeria gets to restart the game, and will be looking to take the game to Ghana, but the loose possession of that, and Ghana has possession of this now. Ghana has possession of this now. I'm not too sure why exactly Cecilia wanted to shoot from that distance or to hit the ball or strike the ball from that distance. If it does not go off a Ghanaian player from that kind of distance, the goal would not count. So you'd rather think that they would work their way into the circle and score. you rather think that's what they would do, but maybe just maybe that's also a strategy by the Nigerians as they retain possession of the ball. It's all the Nigerians at this point. We should be getting a confirmation of how many minutes we've played very soon. Has that come off for a penalty corner? Has that come off to a penalty corner? Or is it a case of it is possibly not. looking for an opportunity to restart the game? Oh, that's a, a true pass there. Could this be the hit? Good, good block and defending from the Nigerians. And that's a good thing about this sport is three on four now. But as many Ghanaians quickly recovering, that was poor, that was poor, that was poor. When your team is on offense like this, you don't blow away the opportunity. When your team is on offense like this, you don't blow away that opportunity. Yes, that Chuku. Both teams are struggling to make better decisions when they get closer to the arc. I agree with you. There they go There's again. Many Ghanaians who find themselves in the attacking half of the Nigerians. And for me, that does not help, especially when they lose possession of the ball. Because when they lose possession of the ball, they have to quickly regroup. And when they regroup, it also means that they are burning a lot of energy running. Especially under this condition. Yeah. A lot of very, energy very will go. And it can be very, very tough as well. Unless, of course, you're, you're coming from a climate that is conducive enough for you to compete. And one of the things that I've been told in recent times that the Ghanaian team has some foreign base players. <laughs> Just like you see in football. Ghana looking to find an opportunity. Oh, but well defended again from Nigeria. But Ghana regains possession. Just cut back in. Cut back in. Not too sure why he was keeping possession all the way to the end. And she's forced to apologize. Just force that in. Unless, of course, she wanted glory for herself. Now, can the Ghanaians... Is that a penalty corner advantage? It, it is. Okay. And this is the second of the game. Let's see what technique they can use to possibly score from here. <laughs> I've got to admit that when I'm watching any kind of hockey game, especially at a very, very elite level, a penalty corner is as good as a goal. They work it out so brilliantly. Let's see whether the Ghanaians can do Elizabeth something. Elizabeth Opoku. It, and then you hit it. Oh, no. That was close. It does appear that come off a Nigerian player. The last touch was off a Nigerian player. Because that appeared to be going in. Let's have a look at the replay again. That appeared to be going in until there. That was a very good strike by... I'm not too sure how the goalkeeper was going to be maybe saving that for Nigeria. Maybe it's back home. I'm not too sure how she was going to be saving this. But well done to the Nigerian defense. They saw that ball all the way. And got your sticks. We are just a few seconds that. away. And that is it. Chuku. Well, the first uh, half of the game has come to an end. After 30 minutes of action, no goal to Ghana, no goal to Nigeria. We'll be back for the second action, the second half action, live here on this channel as the two sets of players make their way back to the dressing room.
Well, the two players, uh, the two set of players are back. We're waiting for the signal from the match umpire to start this. We've got another 30 minutes to go. There's a final of the women's hockey. Whoever wins this gets to go away with the gold medal. Is it going to be Ghana or is it going to be Nigeria? Both the teams are looking to win a medal here. At this point, Ghana is in the position to already win a medal as there were only three teams that registered for the women's uh, hockey. South Africa pulling out. South Africa were the fourth team. So all three nations that are playing in the women's division, that's uh, Ghana, Kenya, and Nigeria, were already guaranteed a medal. The only difference was what color of medal it was. Was it going to be a gold? Was it going to be a silver? Was it going to be a bronze? But if Ghana win here on the back of having won the earlier game, then they would be in a position to pick up the gold medal. Ghana looking to attack. They seem to have started the second half very strongly. Cross comes in. But then again, that Nigerian defense. That Nigerian defense that has stood tall. They mass up in numbers so well when they are in a defensive situation. And also appear to attack quite smartly when they are in offense. But the goal will go out of touch. And Nigeria will look to restart this one. Player number 16. Nigeria will look to restart this one. Estabilo. But it's Ghana in possession of the ball. Cecilia Amwaku. What can she do with this? Cecilia Amwaku with possession. Trying to get the ball into the scoring circle. But there was no Ghanaian in there to take advantage of that possession. The ball goes out of play. Ghana looking to restart this one. Player number 14 for Ghana, Mavis Beko, to start this. Finds player number six. Nafisatu Umaru. Nafisatu looking to strike from distance. But then again, the Nigerians are in there to deal with a threat. Oh, that was a fine attend from Team Ghana. Did that go out of touch? Yes, it did. Just in case you're now joining us as our coverage of the 13th African Games live from Accra in Ghana. There's a final of uh, the hockey woman. It's Ghana and the, the yellow outfits against Nigeria and the white and green outfits. A goal at any point in the second half will be decisive to the fortunes of the two teams. Will be extremely decisive. Both teams have had the opportunity of seeing what each other has to offer in the first 30 minutes and will surely have mapped out a strategy on how to approach the second 30 minutes. Possessing advantage Nigeria. And they mass up in the Ghanaian half. But Ghana will look to break from this one. Do they have the numbers to counter? Do they have the numbers to counter? This could be a chance for Ghana. This could be a chance. But the Nigerians have recovered in numbers. Oh, what a block there. What a block there. That was an opportunity gone begging for Ghana. That was an opportunity there. Player number 11 for Ghana, Lydia Free. If she had picked their sports, maybe, just maybe, Ghana would have been celebrating this one. It's still 0-0. Zero, zero. No goal to Ghana, no goal to Nigeria. There's a second period. Ah, oh, that's been gifted away. That has been gifted away to the Nigerians. Can they take advantage of that? The Ghanaian players would have to quickly find themselves 
in a defensive shape as Nigeria look to attack from here that goes out of touch that goes out of touch we've done 10 minutes of the third quarter there are four quarters we've done 10 minutes of the third quarter no goal to Ghana no goal to Nigeria remember the goalkeeper is the only player that can play with a hand and the feet goalkeeper Doris entry to the rescue there as Ghana look to attack the Nigerians Messi Akon looking for options finds uh, Vivian Nakor what can Nakor do with possession she loses out and Nigeria will look to clear the alliance Nigeria will look to clear the alliance that surely did cannon of player number nine for Nigeria Queen Esther in Joku gonna look to restart this one what a brilliant turn there from player number eight for Ghana Cecilia Marco oh but then again Ghana loses possession again how many times have Ghana found a decent position to attack the Nigerians but have lost possession They've got to take advantage of these little, little opportunities that come their way. It's extremely difficult. Very difficult. When Carl. you're playing against a local rival, there's all that uh, quotation marks here, animosity, and then rivalry, and then being the two biggest countries in the West African sub-region in terms of population, and more importantly, common language of English. And when there's also a gold medal at stake. Absolutely. Ah, that makes it even worse. <laughs> Thank you very much. And when there's also a gold medal at stake, but a Nigerian player is down. I seem nothing happened yesterday. I was more than amazed at the way the Ghanaians were able to come back against Nigeria. That's the powerhouse in African football. Nobody can take it from them. They are, without a doubt, the number one football nation in Africa. You get a feeling that the Ghanaians were extremely motivated to putting that performance in women's football last night in Cape Coast. There were thousands of fans who thronged in there to cheer the ladies on and what a way to pick that gold medal coming back from a goal down Bukarama scoring that winning goal in extra time to win for Ghana later this evening there will be the final of the men's game as well where Ghana will be coming up against Uganda what a team Uganda has been at this year's tournament they've won game after game after game after game and that's why they find themselves in Ghana. But uh, back to uh, back to this uh, Kwame women's hockey final, Ghana Nigeria, and um, you, I, 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 Nigeria at that level. I've always been one of the. Forget about South Africa. I mean, they are in a league of their own. Exactly. But with Nigeria, at least within the West African sub-region. Oh, that's about gifted away there. Can Ghana take advantage of this possession? Oh no. She's allowed the Nigerian defense to regroup. And another one of those opportunities going to begging again. What, you not being selfish? Exactly. Maybe, just maybe, she wanted the glory all for herself. Because there were players in a very good position. If she had found them in that circle, who knows? That could have been 1 0 advantage Ghana by now, but it's all leaves and bats. Game restarts, Nigeria that's what, with possession. That's what the game is all about, anyway. Game restarts, Nigeria with possession. It's still 0 0. No goal to Ghana, no goal to Nigeria. You get a feeling that if one of these teams find targets, that might just be it. I do not in any way foresee a lot of goals being scored in this one. This could be a chance, though. The Empire has whistled for something against Messi Akon. Messi Akon was in a good position to strike and possibly find target for Ghana. But right there, here, right there, the Empire, they call for a foul against Messi Akon. And that's why Nigeria does have position. They hit a long 
trying to find player number 12. Agalilusa. There's one too many for, uh, 40 passes from both teams at this point. I do not know whether it's a case of tired limbs and tired hands. Ouch! Now that would hurt. That will hurt. That stake did come off the head of the Nigerian player. You don't even want to see it out there. That should hurt. It was a stake of player number eight. Cecilia Mwako. Coming off the head of Agalilusa. But it looks like Agalilusa is fine and okay to continue. as going to look to start an attack here. Ghana happy to keep possession, happy to keep possession and string a few passes around. But they lose possession again. Player number six for Nigeria, Joy Christopher, looking to start an attack for the Nigerians. And again, they also gift the ball away. How many times have we not spoken about these players easily giving the ball away from attacking positions? Opoku looking to turn her way. Elizabeth Opoku, she's the skipper of the team. Probably reason why she's in a number 10 shirt. <laughs> well, the games, the games do come to an end um, tomorrow when the closing ceremony will take place at the Legon Arena at 6 p.m. But today, from 3.30, 3.45-ish, you're going to be having track and field with athletics. And the highlight will be the men's and women's 4x400 four meters. And that will end it all. And they will be interested and intrigued to find out how the table looks like. Because Nigeria in athletics have already eight, ten, nine gold medals. Let us see how much they can add to it. They're on top by a country mile. Ethiopia next on five. We'll see how that goes. But we get our attention back to what's happening here. And the Thudosia Okonwoki pitch in Accra. It's still Ghana 0, Nigeria 0. Penalty corner, advantage Ghana. How they would wish they get one of these to count. The top nations are so skilled. We're taking advantage of the penalty corner. Can Ghana take advantage of this penalty corner? And the fans are already shouting go. Cecilia Marco. Can Ghana convert? No. The Nigerians quickly regroup and deal with our threats from Ghana. But Ghana would still continue with the offense. That was a fine save. That was a fine save from the Nigerian goalie, Martha Uko. What a save, Martha Uko. Denying Ghana the first goal. Yet another penalty corner. Another penalty corner for Ghana. Can they take advantage of this? Oh, that was poor. That was poor. There was little or no pace on it. And Nigeria will look to break. Do they have the numbers to counter the Nigerians? And again, they also lose possession from an attacking position. It's been a highlight of the game. Players losing possession after possession after possession. Cecilia Marco, did that cannon off the leg of the Nigerian player? Yes, it did. So that might just be another penalty corner for Ghana. Yes, here. It did come off. Yes. There's been three penalty corners in succession. Three penalty corners in succession. Can Ghana take advantage of that? Hope they get their tactic right this time around. Hit it. No. Not too much power. And again, the goalkeeper. Martha Uku. To the rescue again for the Nigerians. Martha Uku has made two very, very important saves 
for the Nigerians this half. What can Ghana do to get past the Nigerians in this decider? Martha. This could this could be it? No. What an opportunity there for Ghana. What an opportunity. Haget cops in there. If only she had connected. That's a sitter. <laughs> If only she had connected, it would have been 1-0 advantage Ghana. But Ghana is set to benefit from yet another penalty corner. Kwame, if that had been football, she would have been lynched alive by the fans. That's a sitter. <laughs> she would have had some very strong words. Oh, yes, you know head. that. How do you miss that the, kind of sitter? The most intolerable fans in the world are football fans. One breath, they're on the guy. When the guy scores, they are, he's the greatest since God created sandwiches. <laughs> the Ghanaian fans sharing on the team at this point. They know they can help them get over the line, and this could be it. No. Ghana almost converting that opportunity from the penalty corner. It was started by the skipper, Elizabeth Opoku, here. For once, they appear to almost get it right. Oh, it hit the post. It hit the post. I thought the keeper there. saved it. No. It hit the post. It would not go in. Look at how small that ball is. But it will still not find its way into that big post. It does appear Ghana is up in the empty now and then taking the game to the Nigerians. The fans are rooting, singing, screaming and shouting for them. Momentum appears to be with Ghana at this point. Can they continue with that momentum? Strike from distance. This could be it. No. The ball will just not go in at this point. Vivian Nako. Almost putting Ghana in the lead there. Vivian Nako. There. If she had hit target, who knows? Who knows, that could have gone in. Cecilia Mwako finds her skipper, Elizabeth Opoku. No, goes out of touch. Indicating where she actually wanted that pass. This Nigerian goalkeeper has been absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. She's been so good, I, 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 I just can't believe it. She's always at the right place to deal with any threats. She's always at the right spot to deal with any threats. Remains to be seen how many minutes we still have to play in this period. That's a long one. The final touch of a Nigerian player. The home side clearly upping their performance they have the support of the fans behind them and once you have the support of the locals you've got to make that count playing the role of the 13th man you've got to make that count at this point the nigerians have been able to hold team ghana at bay and that's why still 0-0 not the kind of crowd we did see the last time Ghana was in action, but that would not matter at this point. At this point, all the focus is on winning that gold medal. Ghana happy to string the ball around, looking to enter the scoring circle and possibly create something from there. The team is in the scoring circle at this point. No. Is that another penalty corner advantage, Ghana? Yes. There was contact of the Nigerian player, and that's why the penalty corner has been giving advantage Ghana. Ghana benefiting from four penalty corners in the last few minutes. But what they have failed to do is to take advantage of them. Skip off the side, Elizabeth Opuku to convert this one. Elizabeth Opuku. What would she do this time?
the referee or the umpire would have a word or two with some of the Ghanaian players from this position not too sure what exactly she is communicating with them maybe just maybe Ghana takes advantage of this one no no Nafisa to Umaru almost almost it was a brilliant combination there it was a brilliant combination the third period comes to an end the players would get a two minute break haven't been on the pitch for the last 15 minutes an opportunity for the technical team to have a word or two with the players it's 15 more minutes to go and those 15 minutes are going to be crucial very very crucial 45 minutes on pitch no goal to Ghana no goal to Nigeria we will be back shortly The two sets of players are back on the pitch for the final 15 minutes of action. Damboi. She will be hoping that the gold medal will be going to Nigeria. But the Ghanaian players would have other ideas, of course. The Ghanaian players would have other ideas. They are giving it absolutely everything now. Attacking Nigeria in droves. Attacking Nigeria in droves. Trying to put a goalkeeper under pressure. But two successive kicks away from her post. This Nigerian goalkeeper, Martha Uko, has been absolutely phenomenal in post for her side. Martha Uko. Nigeria with possession. Mary Damboy finds Ugalilosa. Nigeria in a threatening position. Nigeria, what can they do with us? Ah, oh, that was a poor finish in the end that was a poor finish in the end it was a very very difficult angle to score but we get to see the replay of the two saves that was made by goalkeeper Martha Uko she's always at the right place at the right time the goalkeeper Uko I mean that looks more like a football clearance than an okay clearance the goalkeepers are the only ones who can kick the ball exactly and that's why they have that heavy apparel <laughs> If that ball hits you, you are in trouble. Who is going to blink first? And I can tell you, whoever gets to blink first is winning this game. Very, very tight. We're in the fourth quarter of this game. Is it going to be Ghana? Or would it be Nigeria? The Ghanaian coaches. Some nervy looks on the faces of the Ghanaian team. Very nervy looks. They know that all the efforts could be undone in the next few minutes. Same way the Nigerians would feel, though the foul has been called. 
There are two umpires on the pitch to cover each half. Ghana. And the ball goes out of touch. Possession advantage Nigeria. Possession advantage Nigeria to be converted by Hannah. But she kicks it straight. She hits it straight to a Ghanaian player. What can Ghana do with this possession? Oh. The Nigerians always recover. Even in the tightest of situations. They always find a way to recover. Is that a foul? Or was that one fairly? The, the Empire are judging that to have been won fairly by the Ghanaian player. There is entry. There is entry. Finds the skipper, Elizabeth Opoku. Elizabeth Opoku is giving it absolutely everything. She wants to win that gold medal for Ghana. She really wants to win that gold medal for Ghana. Skipper Elizabeth Opoku. Did that final touch come off Nigeria? Yes, it did. But it will still be possession advantage in Nigeria. Or has a foul been called somewhere? Okay. It does appear that a foul has been called. Ghana still with possession. A long one from distance. It wasn't going to count. A long one from distance. If it didn't make contact with someone inside the scoring circle, then that was going to count. Once it did not make contact with anyone on its way inside the scoring circle, it wasn't going to count. You've got a little over 10 minutes more to us to go, Hannah. Hits the ball into the Ghanaian half. But Ghana would regroup to deal with this threat from the suit from the Eagles or Spikers or Hitters from Nigeria. Lack of concentration there. Okay, Ghana looking to counter. They have the numbers. Ghana looking to counter. They have the numbers. It's four and four. This could be a chance for Ghana. No. Now watch the number of Nigerian players that quickly recover. Well, seven well, seven of them. Seven of them. Yeah. It was four and four. But they defend so brilliantly this Nigerian team. As many of the players tracking back in seconds to help support their team. Another moment where Ghana easily gives away possession to the opposing side. One too often, both the teams have been guilty of spending. Ah, oh, and the umpire goes down. <laughs> the umpire goes down. Okay, everyone at the stadium can afford. A little smile or a little laugh, but I'm sure <laughs> he also, you know, gave us some little smile out there. Yeah. <laughs> Adding up to the fun, but we are still not been served with a goal yet. And Kwame, earlier on you spoke about errors, and that is another one between Vivian, both teams are and Margaret Oscoa. Knowing very well that there's very little time left. It may just lead to a number of nervy moments. Because if one of the teams find targets, 
there is very little or no time this is a game for gold this is coaching from the stands <laughs> penalty corner advantage Ghana can Bambi. Ghana take advantage of this so no Matauko again to the rescue for Nigeria Ghana beginning to take the game to the Nigerians at this point Rahel Banfo to start play for Ghana Banfo oh. Nigeria will look to break Benedicta can she find oh no again Nigeria failing to take advantage of that play and possession but Ghana will not be bothered we look to start an attack on their own Mavis Beko that goes out and surely that should be advantage Nigeria we've seen several times how poor decisions have been made when they get closer to the arc decision making is very very important in team sports looking out for the rounds of your players looking out for the options whether it's on the pitch or on the court there good save another good save by Mata Uko. she's probably in the reckoning for man of the match Nigeria oh she had no support she was waiting and waiting for a Nigerian or two to approach that box you have less than six minutes to go but no one inside that inside circle to support her run less than six minutes six crucial minutes and quite, you know sometimes it's difficult for you to get support when your team have to track back to defend and when you are in that attacking mode it becomes so difficult for you to have the numbers to aid in that attack so so difficult good defending good defending from Ghana there we could have been in for some trouble the local team oh again Ghana loses possession of the ball and you can hear the disappointment of the fans in that play Nigeria appear to have weathered the momentum finding themselves inside the scoring circle is that a foul that's a foul advantage Ghana there's a foul advantage Ghana there but just when you thought that Ghana was going to be starting something special without possession they lose it again but found a way to recover that they found a way to recover that player number nine for Ghana Rahel Balfour this could be a chance is that an opportunity for a penalty corner <laughs> Ghana versus Nigeria Elizabeth Opuku she looks so determined she's given it absolutely everything for that gold medal one of the impressive players for Ghana that's not without a doubt That's all without a doubt. Rahel Obuku. Sorry, Rahel Banfo was looking to navigate her way through inside that scoring circle. But the Nigerians again will deal with the threat. Are they going to go long in starting an attack? Wow! If Nigeria had connected with that, who knows?
if Nigeria had converted from there, Ghana would have been in a lot of trouble. And you could see Mary Damboi appreciating that long drive from her teammates. It was a brilliant pass that splits the entire Ghanaian team up. Elizabeth Obuku a bit frustrated. Now the, the Nigerians are resorting to those long passes. Just a few more minutes to go before the end of this one. Oh, again, another opportunity going up again for Ghana. Every time Ghana has possession of the ball, they want to try and make it into the scoring circle and possibly finish the job there. But it's not that easy to finish the job. The men's final also coming up. That will see the Egyptians in action. Nafisa to Suleimana has been a rock in the defense for Ghana. It's an offense that Ghana has struggled today. In fact, both teams have. Ghana has really struggled in offense. They know they've got just a few more minutes to get the job done. Question is, can they get the job done? The Nigerians would have other ideas as they look to attack. Do they have the numbers? No, that's another poor pass. Rahel Banfo. Rahel Banfo surveys uh, the pitch and looking for her options. Trying to find her skipper, Elizabeth Tuboku. But to no avail there as the Ghana loses possession of the ball yet again. Is that one on one? No. That's Only excellent. just. Wow. Excellent defending. Only that for defend. If she had gone past that last woman, Ghana could have been in trouble. Ghana could have been in trouble. Oh yes, brilliant from Rahel Banfo. But then again, she loses possession. She's been immense in her performance for Ghana in the second half, Rahel Banfo. The players look exhausted. Has the game come to an end? Looks much like that. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. What that means is that we probably have to have a look at count back in deciding who has won gold. <laughs> because it was round robbing. After 60 minutes of action, Ghana 0, Nigeria 0, as we get to see some highlights from the Theodosia Oko. Hockey pitch. Are they going to go in into added on time? Uh, 
passer les doigts pour que les gars se posent. Once there has been no goal after 60 minutes of action, the two teams are going to go. In a shootout. Or into sudden death. The coaches will pass some last bit of uh, technical wisdom. The empires are conferring. like they're going to be going for a shootout to determine who wins this no action in sudden death straight to shootout and this is where you've got to take your chance if you've been selected by your technical team the empires just get them themselves in the right positions who goes first is it going to be ghana or is it going to be nigeria it looks like Ghana is going to be going first. Starting with the skipper, of course. She's got to lead from the front. She appears very, very confident going to take this first one for Ghana. Elizabeth Opoku. Elizabeth Opoku, the skipper of the team. She's up against a woman who has been brilliant in the game throughout Martha Uko. Elizabeth Oku. Oh, beautifully done. The skipper leading from the front. Excellent. Uh, how brilliant was that from Elizabeth Oku running up the keeper. I wish we would have seen this <laughs> <laughs> at some point in the, game. in the game. Well done. Huge advantage for Ghana. Elizabeth Oboku. 
is now to Benedicta. Benedicta Johnson. Can she make this happen? Benedicta Johnson. Oh, yes, she scores. It's 1 0. <laughs> so it's one all. Some of the players are in spiritual mood. Up next, Ghana. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. You can't beat that. Come where were you can't the beat skills that. where we needed it in normal time. Everybody would wish they did it in normal time. Anyway. Not at this point where the nerves are so high. <laughs> and in fact, in, in, in normal time you won't get a one-on-one -on -one situation like this. I am telling you. So it's still one advantage, Ghana. Up next is Nigeria. And when is your turn? You need to have nerves of steel. Can the Nigerian do it? Oh, it's been made. The save has been made. Well done. That's a very, very good save. Abigail, boy. Fantastic there from Abigail boy. A double save there. Oh, how brilliant was that, Abigail boy. Is that the third? Of Rahel Bamfo. She had a great game. It wasn't an attempt for that kick. So Cecilia Mwako. Cecilia Mwako. Can she make it 3-1 for Ghana? That would be a huge advantage. Cecilia Mwako. To pile on the pressure on the Nigerians. Cecilia Mwako, can she finish this? Cecilia, can she finish this? Yes, Excellent. she does. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Cecilia Mwako. Well done, Cecilia. And the noise levels at the stadium would go higher and higher. Cecilia Mwako. That was it brilliant. Was absolutely brilliant. She hit the ball right at, on cue there. Now there's pressure on Nigeria. Ogelelosa. Can she score? Yes, she does. Ogelelosa. Yes, she does. It's 3 2. But it's Ghana with the advantage. It's not a 10 of Rahel Bafo. It's 3 2 now. Abigail Boy has already saved Ghana on one occasion. So Ghana has a lead in this shootout. It's now the 10 of Rahel Bafo. It's now the 10 of Rahel Bafo. What can she do? Bafo. Bafo. Oh! No! She's failed to convert. Rahel Banfo for Ghana has failed to convert. Oh, the nurse may have just got into her. And the technique also quite didn't work for, work for her. Not at all, Felix. The technique was not the greatest. The technique was not the greatest. But Nigeria with a chance to level things up. Nigeria with a chance to level things up. Oh, they have. It's 3 all now. Game on now. It's 3 all now. Oh, 
And the skipper of the Ghanaian side, Elizabeth Ubuku, cannot afford to sit. Margaret pacing Ousua. up and down. Player number 15, Margaret Uswa. Can she convert? Can she convert? Margaret. Ah. Oh, 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 she's missed. Margaret. She's missed. Nigeria. Messi. <laughs> Uko. What a performance in the shootout. Messi Uko. Well, can the Nigerians It was convert? actually an excellent dink. I was expecting her to bring the ball onto her left. Can the Nigerians convert to win it? And Elizabeth Owusu can watch. Can Nigeria convert? Can Nigeria convert? And they cannot come back. Abigail Boy has just saved Ghana. Estabilo failing to give Nigeria the advantage. And it's declared well done. Goalkeeper Abigail Boy. It's been three on target, two misses for both sides. Three on target for each side, two misses. Who is going to be going next for Ghana? And who is going to be going next for Nigeria? They were tied in the game. And they are tied on pens in sudden death as well. There's a 10 of the Nigerians. Precious Irimaya would go for Nigeria. Precious. Can she convert for her nation? Can she convert for her nation? It's been cleared. Excellent. It's been cleared to touch. Goalkeeper Abigail Boy to the rescue again. Good goalkeeping. Abigail Boy to the rescue again. So it's a turn of Nafisatu Umaru. Can she do it for Ghana? Nafisatu Umaru. Can she do it for Ghana? Nafisatu. She couldn't fail. Nafisatu Umaru has also failed to convert. Player number 13, Benedicta Johnson. Benedicta Johnson is tied for your. Can she do it for Nigeria? Benedicta Johnson, can she do it? Can she do it? Oh, and she's missed. Benedicta Johnson has missed as well. Oh, what a game. This is becoming a bit too emotional for these ladies. If that had gone in, it would have been game over. But Nigeria missing again. So the skipper, Elizabeth Opoku, would attempt another try. Elizabeth Opoku would attempt another try. She finished brilliantly earlier on. Can she do it again? Liz. Liz, can she do it? Liz, can she do it? Oh, no. She couldn't. And she's missed. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Elizabeth Opoku. Oh, 
Martha Oko. What a performance she's putting for Nigeria. Martha Uko from Nigeria. Now, Abigail Boy has to save Ghana again. The Nigerians cannot afford to watch. <laughs> the Nigerians cannot afford to watch this. Can they finish this off, Nigeria? Can they? Can they? But Abigail Boy to the rescue again. again. Abigail Boy to the rescue again for Ghana. How many times is she going to be rescuing Ghana in this situation? I'm sure she won this done as quickly as possible. And gonna get it done. Yes. 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 Cecilia Mwako. And that is a gold for Ghana. Wins gold for Ghana. And the Nigerians. Would be in pain. Cecilia Mwako wins gold for Ghana. This was very, very nail biting. What a way to do this. What a way to do this. Ghana had to do this the hard way. Ghana had to do this the hard way. The Nigerians could have won this earlier. They blew away opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. But finally, Ghana finish off the job. Ghana finishing off the job in a sudden death is gold for Ghana and it's silver for Nigeria.
The International Maritime Hospital, IMA, situated in Tema Community 3, is a 130-bed capacity hospital and a one-stop shop for all your health needs. IMA provides all medical and surgical specialities. We have a modern gastroenterology and endoscopy suite to take care of all your health needs. The International Maritime Hospital offers nephrology with renowned dialysis and boasts of one of a kind radiology department with a wide war 3 Tesla MRI scanner, the only one of its kind in sub Sahara Africa. Africa. IMA boasts of a flagship comprehensive stroke center. IMA is open to the general public. We have enough. A life of plenty for every child. We've had enough all along. There's enough choice for every child. Enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere. Let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough. Enough. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. With a new and improved taste. It's delicious and refreshing. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. You need to try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? Their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This effort is FDA approved. All right, folks, welcome back to the Athletics Arena Legon here in Accra. And uh, quite a lot of um, events to take place. It will culminate at the end of it all in the evening with the men and women's, or should I put it this way, women and men's 4x400 four meters relay. That's what will end it all. But the key thing here, as far as many of the locals here are concerned, is the men's 200. This is the start list for the high jump. Nigeria, Ghana, Ebenezer, Jima. Kwong Duom Lim from Ethiopia, Bohwami Hisham. Uh, well, there are actually 14 of them, which is surprising. Normally you have 12, and then um, the top eight then get another three uh, 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 jumps, as it were. But, but like I was saying, um, for the locals, it's mainly the 200 meters to see whether they're idle. Joe Paul Amwa can make it, can take it to the next level. Remember, he was a bronze medalist back at the Commonwealth Games in 2022 in Birmingham in England. And already you can hear the fans chanting and singing in the background. So from where we are sitting in the commentary position, we can see the ladies. I think it's for the ladies uh, short put. Yes, they're testing their, their metal. Whilst the men's high jump on the far side, people are still testing themselves. That's the first event for this afternoon session. Well, a number of events are to look forward to later this evening. The men's high jump final is coming up. And then, of course, we'd also be looking forward to the men's long jump final. The men's are juggling through a final. Quite a number of finals, Carl, later this evening. Women's 400 meters headles final. Everything should be a final uh, today. That Last looks day. like coming up as uh, well. I see the headles are uh, in uh, position yeah, uh, already. That's the uh, 400 meters hurdles, right? Yes, Absolutely. at 16.35, it's a race that I'm sure a lot of Ghanaian fans will be looking forward to, the men's 200 meters final. That's uh, one with Ghanaian interesting there. Two of them, Fusini and uh, Joe Paul, 
in there. Hopefully, they might make a medal for Ghana. The women's and, 200 meters and, also coming up And you know one thing, because they've cramped up the athletics program from Monday to Friday, which is really unheard of, because normally they do it over a 10-day period. Yeah. It starts on a Thursday and ends it's on a Sunday. The following Sunday, yeah, as it were. Uh, but, hey, it's so good. I mean, um, people are not doubling up here, so it's probably not going, or probably wasn't a problem. But in the Olympic Games that is due to come up, uh, there are many who are now of the view that they need to separate, give enough uh, 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 days of rest between the end of, let's say, the 400 meters woman and then the end of the 400 meters woman hurdle. Because the two main dominant features in the hurdle, Sydney McLaughlin Lavone, will be available if she makes it for the US trial. Mm. She's the world record holder. She holds the three fastest times. And then she's coming against the lady who won the title last year in Budapest because of her injury, Femke Ball of the Netherlands. And they both are absolutely fabulous 400 flat runners. Mm. So there is a, a school of thought that is saying that give them enough time, like with Michael Johnson back in 95, 96. 96. In Atalanta. He refused to do the 200 and 100 combo until the then IAAF, now World Athletics. The 200 and 400 yeah, it was. Separated it out. He wanted a day's rest. So I finished with the 400, get my day's rest, and go for the 200. Rather than when it used to be that you would do the 400, then somewhere in, you'll be doing the 200 hits, and he didn't want that. Yeah. He wants to focus on one and the other. And so maybe the Olympic Games, the example has been set anyway, so we could do the same for Femke Ball and uh, Sydney McLaughlin Lebron. But here, unfortunately, the, the only double gold medal is that I... I, I, I I know of here at the moment yeah, so far in the games yeah there's Tobia game. Musan yeah, Tobia Musan yeah she's won gold in the women's 100 meters hurdles and I've also won gold in the women's 4 by one yes and I had the privilege of actually meeting up with her at the um, um, in the VIP stand and absolutely down-to-earth lady amazing lady and she's got a wicked smile and then yeah uh, 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 a, a very unique sense of you just like her on courts you know mannerisms uh, on uh, track mannerisms as well oh, very yeah. confident young woman yeah. uh, she and then the men's she long do. jump final yeah. that they have 12 so that's fine the last four will get out and then the top eight will then go for another three more jumps everybody initially will start with three jumps we get a confirmation of the athletes who have made it to the final of the men's long jump fiaku good luck from nigeria is in there together with uh, ibeneza jima from ghana kong diop lim from ethiopia Hishem Buhanuni from Algeria. Kemboy Aspel Kiprop is there from Kenya. And then it's uh, Kennedy Okansi. Uh, Chwanelu Aobebe. Kennedy Okansi from, from Ghana. From Ghana, of course. Aobebe Chwanelu from uh, Botswana. Quite a number of athletes from Botswana. Uh, this year's African Games. They are the surprise nation. Yeah. It seems as if track and field is becoming... It's a big thing there now. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The only worry and the only problem I've had has been the ridiculous World Athletic Federation rule that says that the new sensation, Christine Mboma, will not be allowed to run the 200 and 400 meters because of the testosterone or whatever rubbish they're saying that are in her. This is highly, highly prejudicial as far as I'm concerned. And I've, I, I, I wish the, the, the world controlling body would have a look again. It applies also to the South African cast in Semenya. Kassin Semenya was an absolutely fabulous 800 meter double Olympic gold medalist in the process. And now she can't run her specialized event because of the so-called testosterone. And so therefore, she must only do 1500 going, which obviously is clearly cut against her because she's not a 1500 meters runner. She can't do it. She's tried it a few times and it's not proved well. Yet I sit down there and I ask myself, what did world athletes get into? And so, all are getting prepared for their respective events. This looks like the long jump. And the song you can hear in the background is a typical Ghanaian uh, Christian uh, gospel song, which simply means, uh, well, when you translate it, it's a hampuni nasro. That is, simply means that if it's joyous here, how much more in heaven? That's all that they're singing. And then when they say, Ebe ye nije, Ebe ye wan wan, say, it means it will be amazing, it will be awesome. And it's these people who have really kept the atmosphere going, not only at the Lagos Arena, but the finals of the um, finalists of the javelin throw, 
Two is Ethiopia are actually in there. Two of them actually. Don and Poma of Ghana is in there as well. I mean, it's been strange to see some of the events that Ethiopia are competing in at the African Games. Yesterday, I did see an Ethiopian win bronze in the men's pole vote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah. was that was striking for me. An yeah. Ethiopian winning a medal in pole vote. It was absolutely striking. You don't see that every day. No. Nope. You would see them do something on the track. Mm. Well, a number of events are uh, going on concurrently. We see a confirmation of... Uh, the list of uh, men doing the final of the men's uh, javelin as well. But let me just run you to the athletes uh, who are going to be doing the final of the men's uh, high, uh, high jump as well as we get to see. I remember when I had the opportunity to go to Mauritius for the African Championships. I, I was amazed to see some of the Nigerians doing the hammer throw. And, and they do everything. And they were, they were good at it, very good at it. Let's get a confirmation of uh, the start list uh, for the final of the men's javelin. In Namdi, uh, Chinichirim from Nigeria is there. Abdul Khalid Mustafa Mohammed from uh, Egypt. Ojulu Utho Kelo from Ethiopia. Obango Tadi Ogula from Ethiopia as well. Samo Osadolo from uh, Nigeria. Abdul Rahman Ihab. Oh, and the big man himself. And the big man himself had walked in. And um, So the men's uh, javelin throw is the first event of the evening session. Earlier today, this morning, in the track and field, the women's half marathon was won by South Sudan's Atalina Lolinia, uh, who took away the gold medal, and that's the women. Zodito Andre Galai of Ethiopia getting the silver and Nancy Jepleting of Kenya with the bronze medal and there was in the men's half marathon a very unlikely silver medal for Ghana. William Amponsa got the silver medal in the men's half marathon but the goal went to Eritrea's Haile Michael something Omari and Zimbabwe's Impofu Isaac take the bronze medal. At uh, the moment, currently running is the men's long jump final. And these are the athletes that you see on your screen being introduced. Today is the final day of the uh, track and field event. It's being Four days of absolutely wonderful competition, all of it climaxing today. And uh, this evening's session, every single event is a big, big final. from South Africa. 
Well, we're going to see a long list of athletes who are going to be competing in the javelin. Being introduced, 14 of them competing in that final. Now, with the University of Central Missouri, I introduce to you Evans Cardman Yawa. These are certainly the men's high jump. Okay, this looks like the high jump. Yeah. It's being done concurrently with the javelin. Yeah. So these are the high jumpers. Uh, Cardman from Ghana. It's a high jumper from uh, in college in the US to South African. South African uh, is Fori Keegan Craig. This is uh, also Mauritius is uh, Joseph Dizadine. There's 14 high jumpers, so certainly there will be eliminations. So we'll see what becomes of that eventually. Obviously, uh, the home team feels like they have another chance. I guess for many of these fans who have made their way here, they are looking for the race at 16.35 and 16.50. <laughs> the men's and the women's 200 meters final. A lot of Ghanaian interest in that one. Final of the men's long jump is set to start. The stadium crowd will be filling up. And that's our Nigeria's Injoku Emmanuel Odinaka. Only 21 years old. Born on the 4th of May 2002. His official personal best. To introduce you, the finalist for the women's shot put event. The current record for the shot put in the African Games stands in the name of Chukwemeka Bibi. He's going to be having three attempts at this height. Benita Jima makes the first height as well. Ebenezer Jima of Ghana. That's a bit of a warm up session for the men's high jumpers. You mentioned the 16 year old Nigerian in there. Good luck, Fiaku. I gotta tell you though that uh, he could have been competing for Ghana. Oh, wow. His father is actually Ghanaian from the Volta region. Oh, that's interesting. Now, take a look at his last name again. 
Okay. I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. Good luck, Fiaku. You're right. So, I saw that in my research. He's a very talented young chap, the Nigerian. There's got to be reasons why he's opted for Nigeria rather than it's Ghana. Mad. Yeah, he's born and raised there, uh, so it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, meanwhile, uh, so a couple of field events would be going on uh, concurrently. Meng's long jump is currently running. This is the men's high jump. Josephine Desardine, 1.90, he's cleared it. And his first attempt absolutely sailed over that like it's not there. This was the height that uh, the women's long jump winner won by clearing 1.90. So certainly it should be relatively easier for the male counterparts to clear that. Here's uh, Fiaku again. And... Uh, He must be in high school or something. At only yeah. 16. This is lunky, isn't it? Anyway, so this is the final day of the track and field event. Uh, good luck, Fiaku. Ghanaian father, Nigerian mother. 1.95 and he's cleared his sword of it like the eagle that he is and uh, what's happening is that some of the uh, the jumpers are opting not to go for a certain height yeah so but for a 16 year old in competing in his first major championships this is a a great opportunity for him the African Games record was set back in 1999 by another Nigerian in Diata. 2.27 meters is the height that many of these athletes will be aiming for, especially the ones in here fancying their chances of winning. This is Ethiopia's uh, Lim Diop. The name sounds pretty much like a South Sudanese name. It does. Lame has soared over this one as well. It looks like there's a very comfortable height for as many of them. It does, but I think... Uh, What's happening is that uh, a lot of these athletes, uh, jumpers, are using this to warm themselves into their actual target heights. So... It looks like we already have a final coming up. And the women's are 400 meters hurdles. Hamidou Asana from Ghana will be of interest to many who will be looking forward to this one. We'll get your confirmation of that star list very shortly. Hamidou Asana from Ghana in one. Sibiri Sita from Burkina Faso in two. Angunu Linda Christel in three from Cameroon. Joseph Samantha from South Africa in four. Nyagisira Vanis from Kenya in five. And Nadi Nura from Morocco in six. Kamangirara from uh, Zimbabwe in seven. And Ayana Dagnao from uh, Ethiopia in eight. The women's 400 meter hurdles. 
it uh, should be uh, an exciting race indeed uh, that is gone as Hamid Asana in lane one Cameroon's Crystal Aguilo in lane two Joseph Rugel of South Africa in lane three y Nyagisera Venice of Kenya in lane four and Adi Nura of Morocco in lane five Kaman Guerrera of Zimbabwe in six. Ayana Dag now in seven. Sita Sibiri did not start. And off they go. This is the final of the women's 400 meter hurdles. Uh, and look at the Kaman Guerrera. She's gone out strong, the Zimbabwean. Out in lane seven, closing in on the Ethiopian already as they approach the 200 meter mark on the back straight now this is wonderful handling also from the south african joseph rogel she's running very very well indeed joseph rogel as they approach the home straight she's in the lead joseph rogel and uh, uh, she has a slight advantage but not over everyone look at uh, christel angudu of uh, Cameroon, she's going strong, but the South African is still in the lead. The Moroccan is coming in strongly. Nura Enadi, but it's going to be Josephine Rogel to get this over the line, and it's goal for South Africa. Joseph Rogel, 55-39. And uh, she can't believe it. It's a wonderful run from the South African. The moment she came out, came out through the band, she was in the lead, and at that point, it looks like the Moroccan Enardi was going to catch her, but uh, it was just too much. But Enardi, great run from behind himself to take the silver, and the Cameroonian Christelle Anguna will have to settle for the bronze. 55-39 is the winning time. 55-85, Nura Enardi gets the silver and 56 41 is the bronze medal time look at the smile on her face it's a really wonderful medal for her Joseph Rugel of South Africa and uh, she will celebrate deservedly so 23 years of age and uh, she's a two-time African under 20 champion and she definitely has elevated that to a major championship winner massive massive for her she's at which, uh, there you see 55 39 she's also a key member of that south african 4 by 400 meter relay team yeah and uh, she was part of the team as well that uh, ran the final of the mixed 4 by 400 meter relay so she's a a flat runner as well as the hurdles runner and uh, she's got a great goal to go with the South African wonderful wonderful for her another gold medal in the bank for the South Africans and certainly that looks like South Africa's first goal on the track exactly exactly they appear to have won almost all their medals on the field on the field and at bottom one with the swimming 46 medals they won in swimming alone a incredible south africa pulled out of the uh, hockey competition which the Ghanaians have taken full advantage of, of to win the gold medal in the women's edition the men's final hockey is at 4 p.m today between ghana and egypt egypt the biggest favorites but a great height skill there uh, by Algeria's Buhamun Hisham. His first attempt at 2.00, no troubles whatsoever. But here comes the Kenyan. And uh, he had no trouble whatsoever in clearing that. Kenboy Asbel. That's a height of two meters. They are making it look so easy. And why not? I guess it's going to get a bit intense when the heights keep going higher and higher and higher. 
Yeah, the mark is to, the mark to beat is 2.27. That's the uh, the African Games record. But here's Kennedy Okansi. Ghana has three jumpers in this. Kennedy Okansi for two meters. Oh, and he's knocked it down. Kennedy Okansi. Well, he's only his uh, his first attempt at two meters, so he will have a few more chances to clear this height and uh, he's shown capacity in the past to jump way over two meters Kennedy or can see He's a locally based athlete, uh, based in, in Ghana, so uh, and earlier when I made my way to the tracks uh, about two hours, uh, two hours ago, his family was here to see him compete, so that should encourage him. He's a young man. It will be a nice uh, experience for him. Yeah, he's a uh, he has cleared 2.12 meters before, and uh, so I'm not sure he'd be too bothered at the first instance. But uh, here's Josephine Desdine for two meters, and uh, Desdine has no trouble whatsoever, scaled it to absolute perfection. The Mauritius national champion. It does appear that almost all of them, at least, going past the height of 2.0. We get to see the Nigerian in action again. Good luck to good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck to him. Good luck for two meters. At the second time of asking, has cleared it, the Nigerian. 16 years old with the Ghanaian father and the Nigerian mother, born and raised in Nigeria. Yes, uh, the Ghanaian Okansi for his second oh, yes. attempt at 2.0 meters and he had no trouble whatsoever. As I indicated, his uh, personal best is way above 2 meters. So. Look at the crowd, they are uh, having uh, an amazing time singing and dancing and jamming all over the place, giving this an incredible atmosphere like they have done for the past four days. The track and field has seen some of the best atmosphere of any track and field event I've seen anywhere in the world. Uh, the famous Michael Johnson, 400 meter record holder in the past has tweeted about the atmosphere at the african games yeah. and uh, and the excitement around it and praising especially the quality of the four by 100 meter relay team but the men's long jump ongoing as well second attempt for Ntembu of south africa his sec his first attempt was no jump 
This is one event, uh, the men's long jump, where South Africa have dominated the continent over the last few years. And they currently have the African record, don't they, Manyonga? From 2017 in South Africa, 8.65. But the games record belongs to a Ghanaian who is currently at these games as a coach, Ignatius Geysa, set in 2003 in Abuja with a mark of 8.30 meters. 21 years ago. So at some point he decided to compete for Holland. He's not the only record holder of the African Games who switched allegiance from an African country to a European country after setting the record. I'll tell you about the other one, but here's Edwin Kipmutai, the men's long jump for Kenya. Kipmutai's jump. Is uh, is decent, if not great. And uh, we to see confirmation of uh, what mark that is. At least this one will count. The first one didn't. Seven. 0.71 meters. For the Kenyan. Yasser Mohammed of Algeria. It's not a great jump, and it's not a legal jump. But his foot well over the, uh, the board. Kenyan Edwin Kupanta is a uh, four times Kenyan champion and uh, an African Games silver medalist in this event. So, uh, it's worthy of note that the uh, you need to keep an eye on him. In qualifying yesterday, he jumped 6.82. Another no jump. Did that one count? This time from uh, Injoku of Nigeria. His first jump was 7.46. Janet Mensa du Ghana attendu tout comme Goya Kamabila Tasha du Congo so currently in first place in the uh, men's long jump is actually a joint top is Apollinaire Camer of uh, Apollinaire Yunra of Cameroon 7.71 and the aforementioned two Edwin Kipmotai 7.71 but now is Konu of Togo Komi Bernard Kono is currently ranked seventh. It's going to be a legal jump, but is it a great jump? So that's it. his first jump, 7.44. Four. And they would have multiple opportunities to try. Six attempts overall. Meanwhile, we're getting back onto the track for the final of the women's 200 meters and the lineup is quite a sight in lane one choni bakani of botswana lane two claudine injarasowa of madagascar lane three janet mensa ghana gina bass the favorite of gambia 
in lane four. She's the defending champion as well. Natasha Ngoya, Kamabi of Congo. Olayin Nine Bongiwe Skile of Swaziland. Also, the individual 100 meter champion at these championships. So she's looking for the double. Gina Baz. Never won the double. She did win this event five years ago. Nigeria. She has already won a gold at the front. This game is already. Date a bronze in the end of the meters. A gold medal in the next. Well, in the four by one meter. Korea. Can't be as well. He is B on the lookout for. He is 30 years of age, very experienced indeed. So the ladies just uh, being made to wait a little bit, but surely this is one of those races where you know there's an overwhelming favorite, and then the scramble for second and third is really up for grabs. The Nigerian, 21 years of age, Olajide is looking for her third medal at these championships already. That's the Ghanaian, Janet Mensah, run the back straight of the Ghanaians, bronze winning 4 by 100 meter relay. Kamabi is a three-time Francophone Games winner, Natasha Ngoya Kamabi. She's also made the final of uh, African Games four previous times. And this is Bongiwes Akile, Botswana's Chioni Bakani. And this is what we spoke about the other day. The athletes don't like to be on the track and be made to wait. Because once they get out there and fix their blocks, they just want
Jaina Bass is a two-time Olympian. There she is in the red jersey. She is the overwhelming favorite, Gina Bass, to get a second gold medal. And finally, they've been asked to get into the blocks. The final of the women's 200 meters. Bakani in Jasoria, Mensa, Gina Bars, Akamabi, Olajide, Nakibi, and Sakile. Well, let's see whether Gina Bars will be able to do a double. And off they go, final of the women's 200 meters. Uh, look at that. Approaching the bend already, the Nigerian Olayinka has gone strongly, but so has Akamabi, the Congolese, but Gina Bass has negotiated the bend out in the lead in the red jersey, but she's struggling to establish a confident lead, but Gina Bass is just peeling away from the rest, but look at Olajide, it's coming through the Nigerian, but she has fallen a little bit short, it's Gina Bass who will take the goal, medal. the Nigerian Olayinka Olajide with a stormy last 10 meters will only have to settle for silver medal but it's a great run from the 21 year old nigerian look at that 50 meters to go she was so far behind but she showed enormous strength to put gina bars under pressure and bars had to lead in she had to lead in because that race was not won the Nigerian making sure this was a much closer race than the 100 meter final. Nonetheless, the star of the One three second African champion in the 200 meters, but Akamabi as well. Impressive bronze medal for the Congolese 23 42. The Ghanaian Janet Menza in her first ever, first ever continental competition. She finishes fourth 23 45. Is not the first gold medal for Gina hard for that and she deserved both Absolutely everything. Now, when set was 500 a second, drove seconds. Gina Bars, the day. In that silver medal, the medal for Nigeria on the track. But uh, Mtembu of South Africa with his third attempt in the men's long jump. And now the Kenyan Kip Matai. A four time Kenyan champion. This is a. Uh, this man 
time because he knows that he just, just didn't get that right. But he was a really good job. He has to have a job. He's illegal. He doesn't count. What is it? You can see he's very it was a really good jump in terms of a distance, but surely it can't. Just make sure that you can pass the ball. Almost all the efforts were done. To win the African Games, so you need to jump over 8 meters. Uh, yes, are tricky to Algeria. The champion from uh, five years ago.
I know, sorry. That is a... Uh, and it's a brilliant jump from... Uh, The South African, correct, Furry. Martinez Daniel of Guinea Equatorial, currently in 11th, with his second attempt at 2.10 meters. Might have taken off a bit too early there, and his arms just knocked over the bar. He's, he's, ah, he's hitting his own elbow because he knows that's exactly where it was. He was jumping over it, and then his arm just took the bar away even before his body has had a chance to get over it. Here's the lineup for the men's 200 meters. Subisuso Bruno, Ibrahim Fuseni, Olukule of Nigeria. Two Ghanaians, two Nigerians. You've also got Ekanem Konsida of Nigeria, Claude Emmanuel of Cameroon, Joseph Paul Amo of Ghana, Samuel Waweru of Kenya, and Adam Majame of Gambia. Final of the men's 200 meters. Claude Emmanuel in the bright Neon green jersey, Joseph Paul Amor in the yellow. Ibrahim Fuseni, the Ghanaian in lane two. is a bit of an unfancied name in this list, but you've got to watch out for him as well. But the big favorite in this has to be the Ghanaian. He's already got a silver medal on the four by one. It's destiny time for Ghana and Nigeria yet again in the men's 200 meters. Running the bend really well is Claude Emmanuel of Cameroon, but Joseph Polamo has come onto the home straight on the lead. Is neck to neck with Ekanem Joseph of Nigeria. But Paul Amor is uh, coming through. Paul Amor is running really strongly, and it's going to be Joseph Paul Amor. Goal for Ghana in the men's 200 meters. Joseph Paul Amor. Finally, a global title to his name. He's tried in the past and it's not come true for him. And after years and years of sacrifice, he's finally African Games champion. Joseph Paul Amor is the winner of the men's 200 meters. And that will be a second gold medal in the track and field. The first on the track for the Ghanaian. Remarkable achievement. For Joseph Paul Amwa, 20.70. As they came through the bend, it was not obvious he was going to win it. Look at that. He had to dig deep, chased and put under pressure by Claude Emmanuel and Ekanim, consider of Nigeria. He found the extra energy and he celebrated right on the line because he knew he had it. Joseph Paul Amwa, African Games champion. And he has deserved it. But Claude Emmanuel, what a wonderful silver medal for himself, for Cameroon. And Ekanem consider coming through to complete the podium places. So finally, Ghana get one over Nigeria in the sprints. And the noise uh, out of the stadium is on another level. As uh, Joseph Paul Amor who was the anchor man in the men's 4x100, getting a the silver there. Gets to land gold this time around. And the celebrations would go on for some time at the studio. But that was close. Claude Canem. Claude Emmanuel. Claude Emmanuel, the Cameroonian, at some point looked like, at some point, looked like he was going to be getting past the Ghanaian. But Joseph Paul Amor had to dig very, very deep to win this one. 
for Ibrahim Fusini will be a learning curve for him, finishing fourth at the global stage on head of before the start of this competition. But he's one to look forward to in the near future. That's a remarkable goal, Veda. Just a Valamua. He's smiling. It's a smile of big relief for him. He was under pressure considering the events of the last few days where Azamati missed out on the podium places. He knew he had to deliver and he has come to the party. And they get to celebrate with their coach, former national star in Kansai. And we get to see the results, Fence. Confirmation 20.70, the winning time. Claude Emmanuel 27 to 4. And uh, Ekenam Consider 2080, completing the podium places. That was a race that was of a massive Ghanaian interest. And the fans in there in their thousands. I'm sure had come to see this particular race and boy has Joe Paul delivered. Well, the former Prempe College student is making his school proud and you bet that the celebrations will not only be heard inside this stadium but all through the suburbs of Kumasi where he started his trade up to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, to the campus of Coppin State University in Maryland. Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, Joseph Bolamor, now African Games gold medalist. Yet again, representing his country with enormous pride. Joseph Bolamor. Winner of the men's 200 meters final. Oh, we're back to the men's high jump final. And that is a Ghanaian. And it doesn't come true for him. Kennedy or Kansi. Hisham Bohanun Oh he's currently in first position. Yes, in first. Hisham for two point one zero, his first attempt. And he has scaled it easily. He was doing this at a height of 2.13. And he made it look so easy. That's the young Ghanaian, Kennedy Okansi, in the men's high jump. Oh, yes. Ah. And he has done it. He has scaled it. 
Kennedy Okansi at his second time of asking. A 2.10. No mistake whatsoever. This is the uh, medal ceremony for the women's 200 meters. Gambia's Gina Bars with the gold medal until the national anthem of the Gambia. And that's the national anthem of the Gambia. Gina Bar is completing a sprint double, winning the individual 100 meter champion, and as well as the 200 meters title, which he successfully defended. But here's Evans Cardman, 2.13 meters for the Ghanaian. He goes to school in central Missouri. Uh, Evans Cadman at 2.13 and he has scaled it and he's absolutely delighted. The home crowd love seeing their very own compete. Yeah. It's amazing, really. Absolutely brilliant from Evans Cadman, the high jumper. 2.13, successfully scaled it with no problems whatsoever. Well, it's massive, massive motivation to see all of these fans rooting for you and urging you on to succeed. But the heights are going to go higher and higher. And they'll be hoping that they will be scaling all of those heights. Both Ghanaians scaling 2.13. Get to see the start list for the men's 5,000 meters final. So the final of the men's 5,000 meters. No heats required. It goes straight into a final. It's going to be uh, another classic Kenya versus Ethiopia affair. Yeah. Then I tell you what, there were so many people who were watching that women's 10,000 meters final last night. I had a lot of messages yeah. from people who were following our coverage and it was like, at the start of the race, no chance for the Kenyan. But how she navigated her way to go past those three Ethiopians was just marvelous. Interestingly, I think she was the favorite on my books. Uh, she was just running alone, making it tricky, yeah? But in terms of real form, she was always the one to beat. But we'll see whether we'll get to see another Kenyan-Ethiopian classic in the next 12 and a half laps. So it's an amazing lineup. David Siri of Eritrea. Gabriel Meskel of Eritrea as well is in there. Three athletes from Eritrea, the other one being Mahawi Miburatu. Then Djibouti have got Ibrahim Mohamed. 
Sierra Leone, Conte Abubakar is in there. Burundi have got half Shimona Emil. Zimbabwe's Wellington Allenting is in there as well, also running the 10,000. Michelle Lasiva Precious of South Africa. Cornelius Kemboy of Kenya. Teko Antonio of Angola. Peter Kambawi of Tanzania. Uh, Evans Kiptum of Kenya. Mibratu of Eritrea. I mentioned him earlier. Bewe of Ethiopia, Celestine in the Kumana of Burundi, Abraham Gwem of South Sudan, HM Obega of Gambia, Adin Hussein of Djibouti, Jama Mohammed of Somalia, Wale Getnet of Ethiopia, Kuma Gema of Ethiopia, and Simon Kipro, also of Kenya. Mesdames et Messieurs, j'ai l'honneur de vous présenter la championne des Jeux africains et médaillée d'or représentant la Sud-Afrique, j'ai nommé... Interestingly, there are three Ethiopians and three Kenyans in this race. And three Eritreans. Another medal ceremony. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillons nous lever pour observer l'hymne national de la Sud-Afrique. So big congratulations to Joseph Rugel of South Africa, winner of the women's 400 meter hurdles, the gold medal, Nuro Enadi of Morocco with the silver, and Crystal Anguna of Cameroon with the bronze. Now back onto the track for the final of the men's 5,000 meters. Veuillez les raccompagner avec des bons d'applaudissements. It is a men's 5,000 final. So they get ready to go. And we are waiting for the men's 5,000 meter final. It's 12 and a half laps. And... Uh, the games record is held by the game both the games record the world record in fact all three records the world record the african record as well as the games record are held by ugandans 
with uh, Joshua Cheptege of Uganda holding both the world record and the African record 12 35 36 which is set in Monaco in the 2020 where the African Games record is uh, held by uh, Cape Zero 13 12 51 set in all years back in 2007 certainly not a single record has been set on the track so far at these games and a lot of things not explain that they are mostly running against a headwind uh, some of these races were actually run against a headwind of minus 2.5 so minus 1.5 and then you add that to the very hot temperature conditions and the humid conditions with humidity at around 77 percent most of the time it's hard for a lot of these athletes to run record times on the track we have seen records on the field with the women's javelin show in particular with joanne van wick of South Africa setting a new games record. At this point, South African Marcelli Lesiba Precious in the lead. Uh, they're going to take their time is uh, 12 times around the field so uh, no one is particularly in a hurry to get there not at all <laughs> not at all you don't want to be kicking so early in the race you were doing this 12 and a half laps We've done a thousand meters in 251.92. 4,000 more to go. Meanwhile, the other events still ongoing the men's long jump, as well as the, uh, the men's uh, high jump, just as the men's long jump. Currently in eighth position, the South African Keegan Craig or Craig Keegan. Uh, this is the high jump, I beg your pardon. This is his third attempt at 2.13. Oh, just uh, his trailing backside just knocks it out. So he is down and out. So unlucky he had skilled it there here and that's the athlete from Mauritius Prosper Joseph de Zardin. this is his third, third attempt at 2.13 Oh, he just hesitates there. Wasn't ready for the takeoff. Conditions were not right. So he's had to taxi around a little bit and try again. Try again. Here's another opportunity to try again. Can he go past a height of 2.13 meters? Dizardin, can he do it? Oh no. Dizardin can't get there. He's knocked it out and he's out. Dizardin of Mauritius and uh, at 2.13 the last time so he's eliminated at 
the athletes from Mauritius. So that's a leader, Hisham Bahunun, the men's high jump is currently comfortably in the lead, having scaled 2.1 meters in his first attempt, along with uh, Schwanello of South Africa, Cadman Evans of Ghana, and here he is at 2.16. What attempt, ooh la la, he's uh, scaled that with no troubles at all. It's now shipping up. Ah, uh, that was close. Indeed, it just, he was flying agonizingly close to the bar. But uh, he's got it over with, so. Uh, A lot of field events happening as we speak. The men's long jumping is ongoing. The men's high jump is ongoing. The men's javelin throw is ongoing. And the women's shot put is ongoing. Sammy? There is a lot for the audience and the spectators to choose from. It is. And today, today is a day of many finals. And so there you have the Ghanaian. Oh, can see. That he, would. Oh, he's a locally based athlete. He was a bit more energy, the Ghanaian. <laughs> from the crowd. Uh. Yeah, he's attempting to skill 2.16 meters. Yeah, at 2.13. It took him just one attempt. Yes, as he did at 2.10. Oh, and he's knocked it down this time around at 2.16. He's asking the crowd to get a little louder. He needs their energy. It's only the first attempt at 2.16. Well, this it's the only difference you get as a whole. There are three Ghanaian high jumpers in this. And this stadium is buzzing. Buzz and this is this is the biggest crowd we have had at this time of the evening since the event started and um, he's hoping to feed off that energy to excel there you go Schwanello Schwanello is uh, uh, with no trouble whatsoever scaling that look at that oh it's knocked it down it just went maybe he might have taken off a bit too early he did he did his shoulder just uh, tapped it and uh, knocked it over but this is evans cadman the missouri state university student certainly the most highly rated high jumper in ghana at the moment while others want the energy he doesn't want it he's asking them to be quiet so he can concentrate on his thoughts here he is evans cadman at 2.16 meters first attempt now he's asking for the club and the rhythm has been disrupted hasn't it because he's waving I'm not sure what's going on around him and it, it's quite a familiar side with high jumpers we probably have to find a way of asking them 
why they always want to feed on the, the crowd encouraging them or clapping for them and how that gives them an extra meter or so as far as the leaping is concerned but very often in global events you have the high jump um, athletes particularly always try to get the, the clap of the crowd or the sound behind them so perhaps there's a connection there somewhere whereas um, athletes would rather want a moment of silence before they take off uh, the, the sprinters um, the high jumpers seem to want all the noise in the world to be able to lift them beyond the bar and here it goes again with the clap it's a rhythm that he needs to feed off it's not just noise it's a rhythm reminds me of more tasks you know preparing or lining himself there up he goes Evans Cadman at 2.16 the gun in oh! oh it's a brilliant leap surely he's giving the fans a reason to dream of a medal in the men's high jump Evans Cadman no troubles whatsoever way beyond the bar that was smooth surely he's won for a medal place no, he, he got the execution completely right um, his assessment of the height is taken off that there was no way his shoulder was going to come across as we've seen some of the other jumpers and um, and hit the lifts afterwards was also right on point so that's a, that's a very good jump and as you mentioned way above the bar shows that he can go a few more meters up should the competition get that far 13 high jump has started and only five remain now the rest of them all clearing out wow and we, we saw something similar in the women's event uh, which was won by rosa monimaya boa that too many of them crashed out too quickly and ultimately she was on her own um you know attempting to jump um high levels and make the olympic uh, qualifying um Mark. height which eventually he she, she couldn't make so I'm, I'm hoping that these guys will be able to stick it out longer just to give us a very exciting uh, contest although i know for the fans they would rather everybody crash it out and the Ghanaians win the medal the two Ghanaians in the top five yeah. right now in the high jump and we're in the final lap of the 5000 meters men's final. there you go and that's the uh, bell going we haven't had a lot of the air time for the men's 5000 meters but now we do and it's shaping out to be some race and uh, what you see is uh, Gabriel Metzger that is Ethiopia's uh, Bewe Gebrevet negotiating the band coming on to the home straight it's gonna be just him Gebrevet Bewe no one else really close to the Ethiopian running really well the 30 year old but he's being pursued by the athlete from Eritrea but he's not going to be denied. It is Gabivet Bewe who has taken the gold in the men's 5,000 meters. And he points to the Ethiopian crowd in the stands. And then that's the cross. Hallelujah. Praise the Holy Mary. And he gets a celebration from the high jumper who has failed out, by the way. Well, this race was mostly run on the blind side of the crowd because there were so many events taking place. Absolutely. But the key thing was that he picked his moment and the timing was crucial. This, is, this was a very controlled race where they were bunched up together and when he made his move, none of them could stick to him. Um, he lapped a few of the athletes on his way to finishing. Uh, the athletes from Eritrea tried to stick with him, but it was not to be. He had just too much energy. And um, it's Ethiopia again who win the distance running here at the African Games. And, and there is the moment he decided enough was enough. I'm going to do this all by myself. And nobody quite could keep up with him. It's actually the athlete Somalia. from Somalia. Greater teeth. You could that tell the difference. That is Abdullah Jama Muhammad. Jama was at his wit's end, you know, pulling everything he could just to keep up uh, with the Ethiopian athlete. But in the end, it just wasn't good enough. And um, he wins. Um, this time it was not multiple yeah. Ethiopia podium finishes for Ethiopia. It's just one, but they will celebrate together. So it's Ethiopia one, Somalia two, and Kenya wins the bronze medal in the men's 5,000 meters. Gabrivet Bewe with the wonderful win. 
Yeah. There he is, celebrating his 5,000 meter win. And you made a very good point about this race being run on the black side of the, the fans. And not just them, even for the television audience, this race didn't get a lot of uh, air time. It didn't. Um, well, it, it's because of the simultaneous nature of the events. Typically, we've had one the after the four other. field events ongoing at the yep. moment. High jumpers waiting for their turn. Long and, jump. And now the javelin can resume because the reason why the javelin wasn't taking place is so because So there was javelin, there was right. men's javelin, men's long jump, men's high jump, and women's shot put. And here's the victory ceremony for the men's 200 meters. Um, yeah, you can understand why there's a roar in the stadium because Ghana's national anthem will be heard at the stadium for the second time since the athletics program began. That's Ekanim Joseph of Nigeria with a wonderful bronze medal, 20.80 seconds. Uh, this is the first time I have seen him without his durag. <laughs> Such a charismatic figure. And he's been so ubiquitous throughout the whole competition with the durag and um, his very stylish warm-up sessions and trying to um, get the fans behind him. And um, well deserved Bronx, I'm sure he would have fancied his chances of upgrading that to a silver or a gold. But hey, Claude has been one of the standout athletes right from when he started running the heat, winning his heat in the outside lane, you know, from, from lane eight. And it was quite clear that he was going to be one to look out for. But eventually he slightly fell short because there was a Commonwealth Bronx medalist who had just missed out on a 4 by 100 gold who seemed quite determined to appease the local fans with a 200 uh, meter gold and that's exactly what happened <laughs> so the gold medal will go to Ghana's Joseph Paul Amor, bronze medalist from the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham he's now African Games champion he didn't even make the final in the African Games from five years ago in the 200 meters. No, he didn't. And this is the culmination of a journey uh, that has sometimes had people questioning whether he was a real deal. But I saw him jogging to the finish line in the heat of the 200 meters. You could tell that this was something that he was prepared for and that he was a cut above the rest of the field. And he's fulfilled that potential finally by bringing gold. He's a former Ghana national record holder. His fastest time over this distance is 20.05. His winning time here is 20.70. And now we shall all be quiet for the national anthem of Ghana. And the crowd would roar as the national anthem of Ghana, God bless our homeland, bells across the speakers in the stadium. You bet the celebrations will not just be inside this stadium, but across the whole country, and particularly in Kumasi and in the campus of Prempe College. Many students would have been inspired by what this man has done. Started his journey as a footballer, he was the overall sportsman, Joseph Paul Amour, specialized in the sprint event, and he's gone on to become a national hero. This one is his crowning moment. Definitely is. And um, we've seen this journey with a lot of African athletes um, when they start out young. And then there's the frustration as to whether they can live up to the expectation that there's usually a huge weight of expectation he's been part of four by 100 quartets for ghana he's been um in and around 
medals at events without actually winning the medal. But once he finally cracked that with the bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games, you know, a competition that has all the, you know, the Caribbean athletes and the best of the African bunch in there. I'm sure he must have realized that perhaps that next level will follow. And being African champion is a big deal for the next three years until the next competition in Egypt. So this will give him the platform he needs to go on to the next level. And, it, and it's much needed relief also for the Ghanaian sprint team. Um, having missed out on the 4 by 100 and then the individual honours as well. They were desperate for something within the short distances and this is a crowning moment for them. And um, yeah, congratulations all around. And as I mentioned, Claude Emmanuel from, from Cameroon. Uh, Cameroon had already won the 100 meters gold and was hoping to match the achievement of his compatriot by winning the 200 meters medal. Silver is not bad at all and I'm looking forward to seeing more of this young man um, in, in, in global competitions. Well, Claude Emmanuel with another sprint medal for Cameroon out into Manuel. The same is gold in the 100 meters. So that is a wonderful achievement for Cameroon in the sprints. No, I mean, it's great. The Nigerians would not be too happy about it, the Nigerian men's team, because they would have started as favorite. And we saw it in the 100 meters. They threatened to run away with it, but ultimately fell short. And in this 200 meters as well. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's excellent, you know, from, from Cameroon. To, That's two to, silver medals for yeah. Nigeria as well in the 100 in the and 100, 200. In 200. But, you know, Nigeria will never be satisfied with playing bright me to any other country. But congrats to the Cameroonians. Um, it's unfortunate we, they couldn't make it into the 4x100 final. As we see Hisham make another attempt at 219. And this has not come to for him. Cadman will be smiling to himself because it gives him an advantage at 219 to make a clean jump and perhaps attempt something at a higher um, a higher height. So 219 has not come to for Hisham. Botswana is uh, Chuanello with his second attempt. And he's, uh, well, this is his first attempt at 219, and he's knocked it down. So he has this interesting style where just before he gets to the bar, he, he appears to pause before he makes the jump with his false brief flop. And um, what he has shown at 216, that first jump doesn't rule him out. That and this is the Ghanaian. If he can clear this, he immediately goes into the lead. His first attempt at 219. Because he's had the cleanest jump so far. And at every point in time at his first attempt, he has made it. Evans Cadman. The Ghanaian. Big medal potential here. Ghana is going for a double in high jump. Even for the gold. Here's Evans Cardman. Cardman knocks it down at his first attempt. So he, Hisham, and Chanello. Well, I think he knows he had it. He, he knows he had it. He went over and his backside touched it. So it was after the main part of his body had gone over, it was a final clearance with his torso that ended up clipping the bar and he'll be encouraged by that Hamoud Assad is also still in the competition the Moroccan he will make his first attempt at 219 Assad. there he is the Moroccan currently in fourth Hamoud Saad. Saad, well, has not come through for him. Never had this under control. Went too low with his back and could not even clear with the other part of his body. He would have to watch his next attempt. 
because he was nowhere over the bar there. We'll see links in for Benjamin. Currently in joint fourth position with Hamoud Assad with his first attempt, the South African, at 2.19 meters. And uh, yeah, he's he's not happy. Um, another at least just crossed him now. In a moment, and that's the start of the women's 1,500 meters final. And uh, there's a familiar figure sitting in front of the bunch over there. Yeah, <laughs> and that is uh, Halima Nakai of uh, Uganda. She has decided to double in this event for endurance training. Obviously, she's an 800 meter specialist where she already picked up the silver medal in this event, uh, uh, in these championships. And there they go in the lineup. I can't be wrong, Kay, of uh, Nigeria's in there. She's out on the back with the green and white. How we are bear of Ethiopia's in there. Meshasha also of Ethiopia. Asiru Knight of Uganda. Lydia Lagat of Kenya. Rosa Sale of Eritrea. Bekile Ambezi of Ethiopia. So there are three Ethiopian athletes in there. Angola's Juan Ngeve is also in there. Mary Ekuru is one of the big favorites. Ariela Harimana is also in there. Nakai Halima of Uganda, they aforementioned. And Sawakua Odet. Final of the women's 1,500 meters. Howie Abera of Ethiopia is the Ethiopian you see out on the front. Taking no chances yep. and taking good control of this race from early on. And uh, again, expect the team tactics to come into play. There are two Kenyans, there are three um, Ethiopians in this race, and there are two Ugandan athletes, and that includes uh, Halima uh, Nakai. And this would be fast. They've started already at a frenetic pace. And the um, crowd is responding with a Mexican wave. And the record, the game's record for the 1,500 women's is held by Berka of Ethiopia. She set the game's record in 2007 in Algiers. A long time ago. Yeah, four minutes, 0, 0.89 seconds. The African record and the world record still are held by Faith Kipyegon, perhaps one of the most famous runners ever to come out of Kenya. She's um, unbeatable in that event. She, she, she is she's unbeatable. in a class you can ask by herself. Sifa and Hassan at the Olympic Games, she tried to take all three. Uh, fake if you can stop here at 1,500 meters. And she runs sub four minutes on a regular basis. The African record is three minutes, 49.11 seconds. The African record is her record. <laughs> it's her record. world record. <laughs> the world record is the African record as well. Um, Three minutes, 49 points. Well, here come uh, another so Ethiopian uh, coming through uh, strongly is Herut Mishasha. And that's the bell, the final lap of the women's uh, 1,500 meters. It's going to be three Ethiopians out on the front, but the Kenyans are coming as well. Uh, it's uh, Mary Ekuru. I spoke about her. She's uh, one of the big favorites. If anyone is going to stop the Ethiopians from doing a 1 2 3, it's going to be Mary Akiru, but the Ethiopians are out on the front and they are with Harris Bishasha. And they are spreading to the outside to prevent her from flanking through the outside. As Just well as Ambezu, out. as they come through the bend, it is Mishasha in the lead at the moment. But Mary Ekuru is coming out strongly with about 100 meters to go. She's going on the outside. Mary Ekuru, Meshasha can see her from the outside of her eye. She's going past the first Ethiopian. Oh, but she cannot do it. Ethiopia are going to do a one-two. Uh, Mary Ekuru will have to settle for the bronze medal because Meshasha has executed a flawless race to win gold for Ethiopia and a country woman. Um, Bessu also coming through. It's actually Howie Abera who's come through 
win the silver medal. Well, and uh, Mary Akeru will have to settle well, here for the, the, the bronze. Race, um, and quite clearly, Meshesha kicked at the very last moment. Kenyan trying to get past. But there was no way she was beating the first and the second one. Uh, but eventually she managed to knock herself, nudge herself into a bronze medal position. The whole plan at this stage was for the Ethiopians to have shut out the Kenyan. At some point they spread themselves out to try to prevent her from coming down the flank. And in the end, Meshesha taking the gold, uh, Hawi Abera um, taking the silver, and Mary Akiru having to settle for bronze. Well, there was no catching Meshesha there once she took off and for uh... Abera himself, uh, she could see Mary Akuru coming and she just stepped into another gear. Brilliant medal for Ethiopia again. And Mary Akuru, we, we spoke about it, we mentioned that if anyone was going to stop the Kenyans from doing a one, two, three, it would take Mary Akuru. And it was her that denied Ethiopia a clean sweep. Again, it's come down to the superior team tactics and in the end that puts you in a very good position um, when it's time to accelerate or make a sprint for the line akiru in the end just ah, didn't have enough and and didn't and run out of um, um track meters to be able to make a difference and here's the confirmation of the result mero hero to meshesha it's a new games record it says here 40571 for meshesha and this eclipses the previous mark of 40689, which was set by Becca uh, all those years ago in Algiers in 2007. So it just shows you how fast this race was. It really was fast. So we spoke about the lack of records on the track at these championships and Meshasha has just delivered one and Cardman of God has skilled over 2.16 meters and he says this is our land, this is our competition. Evans Cardman of Ghana is shipping up to win the gold medal in the men's high jump. The Ghanaians have already won the women's high jump and Evans Cartman is giving them reason to believe that they could win the men's high jump gold as well. Well, I did mention to you that for all those who failed to clear the 219, he had the best chance because he had clearly cleared the bar with his upper body, but just missed it because of his lower body. And he knew that and he just corrected the technique and managed to get over with some distance to spare, with some heights to spare. So I'm sure he would challenge himself by going even higher as we see if the other athletes can match. And this stadium is rocking. It's and rocking. guess what? He is the first to clear that height of 2.19 meters because he sham Buhan. Buhanun of Algeria didn't clear. Now Botswana is Chuanello. And he's also cleared it. Oh, he's in absolute delirium. You can understand why, because this was his final attempt at 2.19 meters. Oh, my word. And if he had missed this, that would have been... Oh, uh -huh, look him. at the celebration. He was quite fortunate. Managed to get himself over with his stop and jump style. And for a moment, it looked as if the, the bar was not going to hold. And look at the excitement and exhilaration. And now the South African, Benjamin Lynx. Info. There he goes. Final opportunity for him. But before him, though, Hamoud Assad will have his his attempt his final attempt oh he's also cleared it my word this is turning out to be some competition Hamoud Azad has sailed over that like an eagle over the sky it's a brilliant jump from the Moroccan 
at 2.19 and we have ourselves a real competition now. What we do and all the time that he spent pacing himself trying to gauge just exactly how he would go over the bar. He so knows. And there's pressure on him for Benjamin. There, there really is pressure. <laughs> Flipping his tank. He knows he has to clear this or else he is out. Third and final attempt at 2 on 9 for Leeds. Oh, he's cleared it. My word. The men's high jump is turning out to be some dramatic competition. On their final attempts, they've all cleared 2.19. And Info's approach is quite different because he approaches it from the left-hand side and not from the right-hand side, as we've seen with all the athletes. Wow, they set it up beautifully. And Katman's only advantage, the Ghanaian, is that he managed to go over at the second attempt, which will count for something um, later on when it comes to differentiating between these athletes. Should they all miss a particular height? And the decision is to be made as to who would win this event. But this is not done yet. If Katman thought that he had the gold in the bag for Ghana, well, it's not done yet. And the bar has been raised. Literally. And not metaphorically. Absolutely. The fans are loving every bit of it. Who thought that on a day where there will be a football final somewhere in the capital, people will opt to come and watch athletics and um, fill up the stadium. It's great where? to have such, such crowds and a full stadium cheering on these athletes. And I'm sure to a large extent, it's pushing them to the limits as far as this competition is concerned. To be fair, there are over 2 million people in the crowd, so they can afford to fill multiple <laughs> stadiums of 40,000. But here is uh, Chanello at 2.21. And it's 2.21's uh, first attempt. Is, uh, he's knocked down the bar, just sizing it up at the moment. Well, if form is anything to go by, you'd realize that third time is a charm for a lot of these jumpers. Um, Evans Cadman will attempt to do 2.21 meters at the first attempt. Cheered on by the fans here. This is high, it's just texting his environment, and he would ask for the clap. And the home crowd would oblige. Look at that. Jama group. That's, I believe, is from. Anyway, Evans Cadman. Oh! He has absolutely sold that! With space to spare! And they do the zoo celebration of Cristiano Ronaldo. He's not going this to lose this. He's not leaving this to come back. He wants to win this outright. This is turning out to be some competition. This is the superstar Ghanaians didn't know about, that they didn't know they had. Lots have been spoken about the others. Look, and the camaraderie with the other jumpers is just incredible. He's such a showman, and he's turning on the banners and turning on the heat on the other jumpers. The pressure now will be on Links Info Benjamin. Abobe Chuanello. Look at how high, high above the bar he was. This is phenomenal. It's as clean a jump as it gets. For Evans Cadman. And now he has the luxury of, you know, putting on his track top and really just watching at his attempt to clear 2.21 meters. Morocco's uh, Saad Hamouda staring up the crowd and staring up the viewers. Well, he's done it before at 2.19 when he had just one chance remaining. Was there to doubt about his ability? The first bite will go to Links in four, Benjamin of South Africa. First attempt at 2.21 meters. Meanwhile, we are preparing for the men's 1500 meters.
Benjamin Ling Simpho. His first attempt at 2.21. And it's not come true for him. It's only the first attempt. He screams in frustration. It wasn't a bad jump. You know, the upper part of his body went over. Again, the corrections and the adjustments he needs to make in the second jump are quite minor. It's just about getting the lower part of his body over in one fell swoop. And I'm sure he'll fancy his chances of matching Cartman. Um, in the second or third attempt, although the Ghanaians would be sitting pretty just watching the others sweat it out um, as Abobe Shwandelo prepares for yet another goal at the bar at 2.21 meters. This is the second attempt, so it's just left with the three of them the South African, the, Boswa, uh, the Botswana, and the Ghanaian. Here is Chanelo. Chanello knocks it down at his second attempt. Cardman has cleared it and he's waiting in the gold medal position as things stand. Yep. And if these two, Chanello and Benjamin Info do not clear this, it's gold for Cardman and even if they do and all of them do not clear the next one it's still gold for Cardman and it will be Cardman against Cardman for the qualification bar um, just as we saw with uh, Rosa Munimaya Boa with her jumper on <laughs> but in Paul Benjamin links but fancy having a say about the destination of the gold medal as he makes a second attempt at 2.21 meters here it goes. Almost got over the bar the first time. I'll be surprised if it does. Uh, Cadman has knocked it down. Well, Cadman is putting everyone under pressure. There's now one attempt left for Chanello and Benjamin. Evans Cadman will be champion. And this is where the athletes will take their time before the next attempt. Because it's sudden death, really. <laughs> you don't get a second chance for a first impression. And here's a shot of the field for the men's 1500 meters race, which will be starting any moment from now. Ethiopia had a 1 2 with Kenya taking bronze in the women's um, event. What will be the outcome in this men's competition? We'll Rowan, Ronald, Abdel Latif, Gemma, Janini didn't start. Yobol Zerit is in there. Kepsan, Koming, Izikwinkunda, Waberi, all of them starting. By the way, Cartman is Ghana's indoor high jump record holder. We've already seen some of these athletes in either the 5,000 meters or the 800 meters. Abel Kepsan and Brian Komen already competed in this and they would have their eyes hungrily set on winning a medal for Kenya. But they would not be short of competitions from the Ethiopians. There are two of them in here. So there are, there are three Ethiopians in the starting blocks. And two Kenyans, just to run through. Abraham Goem of South Sudan. Ronald Musagala of Uganda. Abdelatif Sadiki of Morocco, Germa Emias Shea of Ethiopia, Shinini Riyad of Tunisia, Zerit Yobiel Wede Rufayel of Eritrea, Chala Adisu Wegene of Ethiopia, Asefa Belachiu Zenebe of Ethiopia, Hussein Igwe Rubere of Djibouti, Eric Inzikwikunda of Burundi, Bran Komen of Kenya, and Abel Kipsan make up the field. It's the men's 1500 meters final. And it's Eric Inzikwinkunda. Who is taking oh, the early lead. Yeah. Running from the front. 
she has four laps and already started at a blistering pace and he's setting the pace for how long he can set the pace or keep the distance between himself and the rest of the field well we can't tell at this stage but don't take your eyes off this because this will be fast some of these athletes hoping to make amends from previous um, events at this african games by winning the medal and it's in Zikwikunda who continues to run ahead of the pack ahead of belichiwa sefa of ethiopia and watching them closely is uganda's ronald musagala bunched up behind the race leader who continues to tear away and at the back of the pack is the eritrean athlete yobiel zaret well the rufail and he seems to have dropped out of the race way too he, early after just two laps but uh, burundi is uh... well the noise is for cardman but well he's won the gold medal evans cardman for ghana this is a stadium where he's used to competing it's a former university of ghana student and he's a three-time NCAA Division II silver medalist competing these days for the University of Central Missouri. It's a final year student. And he's come back home to the University of Ghana where he started. And he's won gold for Ghana in the men's high jump. Just like they did for the women's high jump. Ghanaians showing enormous capacity an ability in areas never known before that's in the high jump high jump double for ghana but we're back to the 1500 now and it's we're getting at this with chala chala who is taking over the lead as they go into the final lap it's chala for ethiopia leading the field eric inzikukunda has dropped down to third and chala is followed by his compatriot the other ethiopian emeas gemma it's Ethiopia 1-2 with Kenya in third place with Brian Coleman. As they go towards the finish line now, it's the Ethiopian Chala still in the lead. Yeah, They've absolutely. come down the back straight. Going around the bend, it's Chala. But here comes Coleman on the outside. Coleman on the outside, threatening to overtake Chala. The Ethiopian with Emeas Gema still in third. And Coleman overtakes the Ethiopian. As they go towards the line, he's accelerating head bobbing it's Coleman of Kenya Coleman of Kenya Coleman of Kenya and Shia Emeas will finish second and at the very last moment it seems the Kenyans are taking the bronze medal as well brilliant brilliant run from Brian Coleman storming last 200 meters or so he had Ethiopians to beat stepped on the outside and blitzed his way past Chala like he wasn't there 3.39.19, a little shy of the African Games record, but still a brilliant win. Look at that, head bopping the whole time too, and there was no catching him from then on. You could see the Ethiopians had slightly given up, but what a great run once again uh, from the other Ethiopian coming through late on. Emias Gemma, 3.39.40 to take the silver medal and abel kipsang will complete the podium so it's two kenyans on the podium but brian coming what a great victory for him and what 339 19. what a run from abel kipsang who literally stole that third place from wigeni as arisu chala chala would be very disappointed he ran 300 meters of this race at the front he looked like he was capable of finishing but he faded into the final 40 meters or so allowing brian coleman to come past him and in the end abel kipson also pipping him to a podium finish so it's coleman first gamer second and abel kipson completing and the kenyans have sweet revenge because what they failed to do in the women's 1500 meters is what the men have been able to do in the men's event absolutely kenya took two well medals in the men's 1500 ethiopia took two medals in the women's 1500 so they've shared it 
and they've shared those medals equally. This is a rivalry for the ages, a rivalry that we've absolutely enjoyed, that has served the continent for many decades in the middle to long distance races. Kenya and Ethiopia, every time they step onto the track, there's always a story. Brian Coleman will take an, his flowers. And an, an, an orthodox way of finishing the race, and you could tell that he was carrying himself with everything that was within him and racing with his head. And this is a, a confirmation of the official outcome. Brian Coleman, three. 39.19 seconds. Shia Emayas Gema finishing second with the other Kenyan Abel Kipson finishing in the Bronx position. Two athletes did not finish this race. As we prepare for the climax of the evening, which is the 4x400 women's and men's ra um, races, we are back to the high jump. And it's my good friend Impo. With a second attempt at 2.23. So Impo seems to have an uncanny habit of pulling victory from the jaws of defeat. At both 2.19 meters and 2.21 meters. He cleared them at the last attempt. Absolutely. And, ah. <laughs> and I hope he's all right. <laughs> yeah, he is. Didn't even attempt to jump. Yes. Well, Evans Cartman, by the way, the Ghanaian, has knocked the bar out in his two attempts at 2.23. And Impo has done same, and so has Hamoud Assad. So. Chanelo cleared out at 2.21, so it's just the three of them. And this is Evans Cadman's last attempt at 2.23. You know, I think I recognize the group that is singing. It's probably the Commonwealth Hall within the University of Ghana, taking ownership of Cadman as one of their own and cheering him on. Evans Cadman with his last attempt at 2.23. Cadman! Oh! He has killed it! My word! Oh! That's and certainly a bona fide superstar! Sue from the Ghanaian! Well, we said Impo had a way of, you know, pulling defeat from the jaws, pulling victory from the jaws of defeat and staying alive. Well, Cadman says, I can do that too. And once the voices were raised and the Commonwealth boys in red, in the stands, started claiming him for himself and he goes to cheer them on and he goes to acknowledge their role in this. He, he you know, well, there you, you go. You are speechless, aren't there you? There you go. If you ever wondered what home advantage was, this is it. And this is not to take anything away from Cadman, but he seems to be at once in sync with the crowd cheering him on. Well, he came, well he, came, he came with his coach from the University of Central Missouri, and he's in the stands. Evans Cadman, bona fide superstar. He's competed at this stadium many well, years. Well, he's announcing himself to Ghanaians, the many Ghanaians who have not watched uh, who him. Who had never heard of him. Who have not seen him develop into a world-class talent. Here he is, and the pressure is on him for the South African. Can he match Cadman jump for jump? The pressure is on the South African. Look but at Cadman again. He had his eyes on the bar. He went over it. There was a slight brush of his backside, but it wasn't enough. The bar stayed into position. It was almost like he was willing the bar to stay. And 2.23 meters. And look is at down. that celebration. Look at that celebration. My word. This is turning out to be. The unlikely star attraction of this evening's event. It's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable drama. And it's carrying the crowd along. And he's not done yet. And we are not done yet. Well. Because there's one more jump from Impo Links, the South African. And Hamoud Assad as well, the Moroccan. He's thrown the gauntlet now. The battle lines are drawn. Evans Cadman in the gold medal position now. 
Hamoud Assad and uh, Benjamin Lynx in Port. And you know, with no other events going on at the moment, every single eye here at the University of Ghana Stadium in Accra is fixed on the high jump. Here is Hamoud Assad. Well, he has cleared out. Certainly, yeah. that is gold or silver for the Ghanaian. Unless Benjamin Impo. Well, Benjamin Impo uh, and uh, Evans Cartman are the only two left now. The Moroccan is inconsolable at the moment. He's out. He will still get the bronze medal, the Moroccan. It's not what he hoped for. Hamoud Assad. That's what he would have to settle for. And now, Impo, the only thing standing between Ghana and the gold medal in the men's high jump. Can't this it? is the moment of glory. This is the moment of truth. It, Benjamin Impo, if he does not clear this, is gold for Ghana. It's either going to be a moment of glory for the Ghanaian or a moment of heartbreak for the South African. Benjamin Impo links. He's taking his time and he needs to take his time. But then the crowd have their voices up. And I'm sure he's finding a way to filter that out. He has this wry smile on his face. Speaks to himself. Measures. And here Benjamin he goes. He likes to jump from the left-hand side. The Benjamin Impo. Can he do it? Oh, no. Oh, Impo is not in there. And it's gold for Ghana. Evans Cadman is the high jump champion of the African Games. He celebrates, punches the air, and surely he has deserved it. He's come here roaring and flying like an eagle. The man that started his craft at this very university on which this stadium is located. He's gone to the United States where he has been shaped into becoming an African champion. Evans Cadman. Gold for Ghana in the men's high jump, just like they did for the women. He has delivered an unlikely gold medal. You know, it's a double for Ghana in the high jump, and there's only one, one thing I can see. A star is born today here at the University of Ghana Stadium. And the boys and the men from Commonwealth Hall, University of Ghana, I believe, have been rewarded for all the singing and all the encouragement, their shirts are off. And when was the last time you saw such a partisan crowd in an athletic stadium? Well, he has the option to discontinue or to stay on and try to make a better mark. Remember, he would have Olympic qualification within his sight. But I have to feel sorry for Benjamin Impo Links. I don't know whether the pressure got and to him. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> he is having a ball, Evan Scottman. If it is a show stopping affair at the University uh, he, of Ghana. He's at home more than anybody else and these guys will not stop singing until he has missed his final bar and he will go at it again. The bar will be lifted beyond 2.23. It will be lifted yeah. to 2.25. And then I was just you know commenting about Benjamin in pullings and his jump if we get to see that replay again because at the very last moment before the jump, he hesitated. And at that very moment, it was quite clear that he was And that's Rosie Aboa, the women's high jump champion, encouraging the men's high jump champion. She, she's been the chief cheerleader today. Ghana have done the double over the high jump. Evans Cadman, the final year student from the University of Central Missouri, has returned home to the University of Ghana, where he started his high jump career made in Accra and molded in the United States. He is going at 2.25. When Lynx knocked off the bar, it was heartbreak for South Africa celebrating. Yeah, the contrast. For Ghana. And this is excellent sportsmanship. He comes to congratulate and perhaps encourage Cadman as we prepare for the women's 4x400 meters race Cadman will be preparing to take on the bar at 2.25 meters
So here is Cadman for his own history. He's going for a new personal best. Evans Cadman. Never before has he cleared a height higher or up to 2.25. But cheered on by this crowd, anything is possible for this former University of Ghana student. Couldn't agree with you more. Sometimes you take advantage of the atmosphere as it goes. Three okay, attempts yes. at 2.25. First attempt was not to be. And I wonder how deep an athlete has to draw from when they are out there alone having to challenge themselves without any competition. With gold already in the back. Well, his personal best is 2.21. Certainly. Well, by the way, this is the final of the women's 4x400 meter relay. This will be the final event of the evening. The 4x400 meter relay as well as the, well in the women and men, who we'll start with the women, with Nigeria, Botswana, Namibia, Ethiopia and Zambia. So Kenya did not start, so Nigeria, Botswana and Zambia will fancy their chances of a gold medal. Meanwhile there's a medal presentation. And you can hear the national anthem of Nigeria in the background. That's the final. The women's discus draw. Amachi Obia Jerry. Congratulations to the winners. And then Chioma Onyekwere. Onyekwere is the game's record holder and the African record holder. She was dethroned yesterday by Obia Jerry. It's a, it was another really feisty competition in the women's <laughs> discus throw. Between when the defending champion and the African Games record and the African record holder is dethroned, surely she wasn't going to let that go off easily. When your teammate has played second fiddle to you for too long, they pick their moment and they have their moment in the limelight. And that's exactly what happened. But watch out because this rivalry will be rekindled when these two teammates go head to head again. Kenya taking the bronze in the women's discus as we prepare for the 4x400 four meters relay event. Thank you. And Thank you very much. Kenya's absence is a big surprise. Um, it is a big surprise, I'm sure. Boga potentially would have been going for a third gold medal. She did run the heat uh, yesterday, Mary Mora. She ran the, the last leg of the heat. Kenya already picked a bronze in the women, uh, well, in the mixed 4x4. Four four. And uh, they would have been counting on Mary Mora to anchor them home. But I think she's probably seeing enough competition. So. And this opens the door to other teams to potentially snatch a medal. That's Nigerians will be favorite, but. You never discount the Botswana team. Very strong when it comes to 400 meters. Um, I think Botswana and Nigeria is a straight fight for first and second. And certainly, I think Zambia will take the bronze. That's for sure. <laughs> what is not sure is between Nigeria and Botswana, who gets the gold and who gets the silver. The only thing I can say is run, Barbie, run. And let's see how far they can go as Cadman makes yet another attempt at 2.25. He failed at the first attempt. He has two more attempts. And the crowd is carrying him on. Cadman floats. Doesn't scale it. You make a good point. What's the motivation? It's a difficult place to be when your much coveted gold is already in your pocket, in the bag and you are left out there on your own to lift yourself, how much risk will you be willing to take when you and know that more so he's negotiating on chartered waters because he's never jumped this high. But he's never been this comfortable in a crowd because unlike anywhere else in the world where you probably have just a handful of people in the stadium cheering out for you, almost everybody in this stadium is cheering him on. It's a unique opportunity and he has one more attempt to try 
and set a new personal best at 2.25. The gold medal is already in the back and you shall be hearing another national anthem for Ghana before the evening is over. In the meantime, the ladies are down on the tracks and on the max and they are off. Off they go, the final of the women's 4x400 meter relays. Uh, the favorites, Big Nigeria in the middle lane. Uh, out in lane one, you can see that two lanes are missing in the middle. That's because two teams did not start, but Nigeria wouldn't care. They've gone out really strong out in lane one. Zambia are on the outside lane running really strongly as well. And uh, this first... The first leg will be run in their various lanes all the way through to the end. Uh, but from the second leg onwards, you are allowed to cross onto the inner lane. But it's Zambia, who have done really well to hold on to the lead as they come through. But the Nigerians have done really well. They've changed the baton quicker than anybody else, and they are off being pursued by Zambia as well as Botswana. This is what it's going to be. Nigeria long gone. Zambia have overtaken Botswana themselves and are running in second place. That did indicate Nigeria, the big favorites here. Botswana themselves have fallen behind, too far behind, too quickly. But Zambia running really well as well. Just behind. Well, they are, and it's Nigeria's race to lose at the moment. Botswana lost ground um, after the first leg was run, and the Nigerians will be very hard to catch. Botswana in third, the Zambians in second, Ethiopia. And in the Nigerians fourth. are flying right now. Nigerians. They are the four by 400 meter mixed relay champions. They are the four by 100 meter women champions they are the four by 100 meter men champion and now they are leading in the four by 400 meter women so far clean sweep for nigeria in every single relay event that has been run on this track they have come to west african their west african rivals ghana and look at Botswana coming through as i indicated they have snatched that second position from zambia Botswana and now they will pursue Nigeria for that gold medal place. Seems, it will seem to me that they have just a bit too much to do. There's no way they are catching the Nigerians who are running a race against themselves and against the clock at the moment. But silver medal currently in the hands of the Botswana team who are trying to claw back after a few errors in their first and second legs caused them to fall behind. Well, here's Nigeria coming through the home straight, running impeccably. It doesn't look like that's catching them. It's been a really well executed race. But look at Botswana and Zambia. The Zambian is coming strongly. My word, it's uh, the bronze medal are going to escape. Zambia are going to turn bronze into silver, and they have done it on the line. My word, Zambia have shot Botswana. It wasn't Nigeria's winning. That was the big story here. But it's Zambia who had been pipped. Well, the, the, from the, 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 the Botswana athlete the running the ankle leg went too hard at it trying to get into the Nigerians. And with about 30 meters to go, she ran out of steam. And, you know, in the end, the Zambians came past. But where and it's deja vu for Botswana again. It, it happened in the, the mixed. Mix really. Really, where Nigeria picked them right on the line and they have allowed Zambia to come through and pick them with 10 meters to go to the silver medal. You have to be full of admiration for the Zambian athlete running the ankle leg. Where did she get that second win from? Because she looked finished after the bend when they were coming into the home shed. But suddenly she seems to have found energy from deep within to haul the Zambians into the silver medal position and now Cadman with his very last attempt at 2.25 he doesn't scale it that's the end of his evening and he applauds the crowd 
Doors of Philip. Cartman celebrates. The whole stadium celebrates with him. And everyone else watching on the screen would have done that soo with him in front of their TV set. Cape Coast born, University of Ghana trained, University of Central Missouri. You know, I, I just think. Molded, and there he is. He's a bona fide superstar. Even Scadman, not many people knew about his game before these championships, and now everybody will remember his name. Evans Cartman, gold for Ghana in the men's high jump. Very charismatic chap, isn't he? With a flip and the CU celebration, I'm sure now he would go on a victory lap and take in the adulation of the crowd here at the University of Ghana Stadium. In the end, though, I just think he, he, he and, and there he goes on that victory lap together with the other Ghanaian jumpers. Take note, Ghana had three jumpers in the finals, and Ghana has come through with a gold medal. In the end, I just think he just didn't have enough motivation. And if there was another athlete pushing him at 2.25, as we've seen him do, as we saw Benjamin Lynx do, perhaps he could have pulled um, off the, the jump. And here he goes. He goes to take the Commonwealth Hall flag. And I'm a proud <laughs> alumni of Commonwealth Hall. University uh, of well, Ghana. This is a home celebration. I mean, it's... it's and it's, the stadium is in full capacity it's, now. It's, it's more home than usual because it's not just that he's running. Started here. Ghana. The former University of Ghana student these days uh, competing for the University of Central Missouri. I can't say that much. He is too familiar with the stadium. He has competed here many, many years before sojourning to the United States, Evans Cartman. I covered him as a local athlete and now as an international superstar. When they see him, they will be asking for autographs. Oh my God, he's still got way yeah, too got, much energy. A, and you know, the international audience is asking, what is that red flag? What does it represent? Well, it's a, it's a flag representing Commonwealth Hall, University of Ghana. All that is, all that is, I mean, that, let that. me just explain this. That's his hall of residence. That was, that his, was hall of his residence when he was at the University of Ghana. There you go. And he wore the colors of the university uh, to jump. So he's a mall. proud Vandal. They call themselves Vandals. And you'd have seen them in the crowd because there's a huge turnout of Commonwealth Hall students and former students who call themselves the Vandals. Um, Vandal is an acronym, it, it's not in the sense that we know within the English definition. And he's gone for the flag and he's celebrating with the vandals who've come to see him those over are, the bar that's those you are know. the three ghanian hand jumpers and, and, and it's good it's great for ghana you know ghana's had very good jumpers in the past but you wouldn't say that jumping has been at the forefront of ghana athletics i'm sure the track athletes would have had more average than the jump all that has changed now because everybody would want to have a piece of um, evans cartman now and what a moment it is but incredibly ghana makes a double gold in the high jump so meanwhile the men's long jump final the bronze medal went to apolina of cameroon and this is one of the uh, this is one event we barely had any coverage of on the screen it just happened on the blind side of everybody tricky yasser we saw him jump just once He's got second place, the defending champion, so it means he's been dethroned. Yasser Triki. He won the gold five years ago, but now he's got to settle for silver. And let's see who took that gold medal from Yasser Triki. Uh, it's South Africa's Asande Mtembu. Massive congratulations to him, taking the trophy and the gold medal back to South Africa. It's an event they have dominated with Luvo doing his thing and setting the African record from 2017. Luvo Manyonga, yeah, the South African has come to Accra and he's taking the gold medal yeah. and Luvo would be proud of him. Well, he takes a jump with a, he takes a gold with a medal of seven point, with a jump of 7.86 meters. Um, not close to the game's record, which is held by the Ghanaian long jump coach, Ignatius Geyser, uh, who is in the stadium. What, what, looking on but he would love every bit of it the young south african and you know it's quite interesting fans that in this long jump event we found a lot of the triple jump athletes competing you know we've seen fire amath 
in the triple jump. He came back um, for the, the long jump. We saw Jakubo Lue, who won the, the bronze medal um, in the triple jump, also coming for the long jump. But in the end, it's the traditional long jumpers who dominated. With South Africa's Mutembu Asandi winning the gold medal. Just one more event remaining before we conclude the athletics leg of the African Games. It has been fabulous five days of competition with the crowning movement and the last event being the men's 4 by 400 meter relay. That's what we're just waiting for and then we can call it an evening. It's been ridiculously competitive. Games record, we had one games record today in the women's 5,000 meters. 1,500 meters, I beg your pardon. And, and it's also been the best day for the host nation. Um, they started off the day with a half marathon gold and I've ended the day with a high jump gold. And in between, they won the 200 meters gold medal as well. So, um, yeah. yeah. The game's record in the women's 1500 from Ethiopia's Meru Mishasha. Cadman has been mocked. <laughs> Uh, at the moment, he's, a, uh, he's the, uh, the star of the show. That is two gold medals for Ghana on the last day of the athletics, having won the 200 meter gold men. And uh, Gina Bars completed the sprint double when she took the 200 meters for women. Was there ever a doubt? <laughs> Never a doubt. In the end, Olaika Olajide of Nigeria made it a real contest. Of Jinnabaz only won that by 500 of a second. The women's shot put final concluded with Erasmus Ashley of South Africa picking the gold medal. Olatoye Oisade of Nigeria uh, getting the silver. And Senegal Ishke of South Africa picking the bronze medal in that process. The day started with another goal for South Africa in the women's 400 meter hurdle, Joseph Rogel, 55-39 in the end. Nura Enardi with an impressive come from behind race to secure the silver. The medal ceremony for the men's long jump, Yasser Triki. And, um, and yeah, and that's the gold medal for Ntembu being handed to him. Asandi Ntembu by Beatrice Ayukoru, the World Athletics Council member from Uganda. Um, what Along. a moment it is for the young star. He's just that is the vice years. chancellor of this university. At just 19 years, you know, he turns, he turns 20 on the 4th of June 2004, and he's standing on top of the world as far as long jump on the continent is concerned.
So congratulations to Mtembu of South Thank Africa, gold much. medal in the men's long jump. Congratulations winners. Also tricky, Yasser yes, Mohamed of Algeria wins the silver and Cameroon's Apollone Yina who won the bronze. He's full yeah, of yeah. smiles. He can't stop so tricky. He's not happy. No, he's not. It's his title. <laughs> he got beat by a 19-year-old. He's not happy about it. But what a future uh, this young man from South Africa, Asande Mutimbu, has in front of him. Thank you, so, Professor Nana Abba, Abia, Amfo, oh, I mean, yeah, the Algerian just quickly the takes the medal from around his neck. He's really, <laughs> he's really upset about losing. Yes, yeah, Tricky, the defending champion, not happy that Tembo. his uh, his title has been snatched from him by a 19-year-old. <laughs> Certainly not pleasant to lose your title. Yeah. It's even worse to lose to a teenager yeah. who will not shut up about it. <laughs> well, he seems to be on the up, so let's watch out for Azande in Tembo and what he's capable of doing on the African continent and the global level as well with that jump. He's, he's just grinning from ear to ear like a Cheshire cat. Do stay with us because we have one more event remaining. Presentation ceremony. After the medal presentation ceremony, we shall have the final of the men's 4x400 meters event. And now I introduce you the winners of the women's 1,500 meters. So I think we'll have one more medal ceremony before the final of the men's 4 by 400 meter relay. And this is the medal ceremony for the women's 1500 meter race which was uh, won by Michel Shah with a new games record she just pushed all the way but in the end she was just too good and had that extra win that the others did not have so it's an Ethiopian 1-2 with Kenya having to settle for the Bronx although just a few minutes later, there was sweet revenge for the Kenyans who took gold and bronze in the men's 1500 with the Ethiopians taking the silver. It's been a fascinating battle between these two nations. And I always say that that battle here is a global battle because at that level, they are the two strongest nations. Absolutely. The current world record holder, Fake Kipi Egan. Set three world records last year. Faith. Faith. From another world. Fifteen hundred. <laughs> the mile. And five thousand. The five thousand record was snatched from her towards the end of last year. But she still holds two world records. And there's still a lot of athletics and a lot of running to be done in 2024 in the run up to the Olympic Games in Paris. Absolutely. So that's the uh, Howie Abera 40609. Even her time is faster than the previous games record by Bruka of Ethiopia set back in 2000. And seven. That was a mighty 17 years ago. So the one that finished second and the one that finished third all beat the previous mark. Just shows you, especially in the last um, 150 meters of the race, just how quick these women were. And it was all because they were pushing each other. The Ethiopians had a one, two, three at the beginning. Kenyan managed to break through, but just could not in the end break into gold or silver positions and then for that bronze medal. 
congratulations to these Ethiopian men. And you know, all along they've, they've had the support of their teammates who have turned out when they are not competing to push them all. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the national anthem of Ethiopia. And the national anthem of Ethiopia is for Hairut Meshasha, winner of the 1500-meter gold medal with a games record 4.05.71. The silver medal winner, Howie Abera, and the bronze medal winner, Mary Ekuru from Kenya, all finished with a time faster than the previous game record, which had stood for 17 years. That was the enormity of the race that uh, produced these three champions. Absolutely blistering pace was how they run this 1500 meter event. I think we might have the medal ceremony as well for the 1500 meter men before that four by 400 meters mixed, uh, well, for four by four men. We still have about three more medal ceremonies to go. There is the, the medal ceremony for the men's high jump has yet to happen, the medal ceremony. But the relay team is out, so I'm uh, guessing that that medal ceremony or those medal ceremonies would happen after the final race of the evening. It seems so. Or they will be asked to wait on the track for the ceremony, <laughs> which has happened a few times. It has. And this is the lineup. Ethiopia, Algeria, Nigeria, Botswana, Zambia, Kenya, Senegal, and Zimbabwe. It's a full track for this event, unlike the women. So there are no red draws. Ethiopia will start in lane one, Algeria in lane two, Nigeria, the favorite in lane three. Botswana, watch out for them in, in, in lane four. Zambia in lane five, Kenya in lane six, Senegal in lane seven, and Zimbabwe in lane eight. Botswana will be eager to correct the errors from the women's four by 400 meters. And this time, men's traveling through. I introduce to you the winners of this event. Well, it looks like they'll, they'll uh, make the four by 400 quartet teams wait just a little longer whilst they prepare. Um, for a few more medal ceremonies, uh, yeah. just calling the winners of the javelin throw for men. Well, uh, they <laughs> looks like they are going to compress the medal ceremony. Absolutely, back-to-back -back medal ceremony. So they still have quite a few outstanding. There's also the uh, women's shot put, men's high jump, Ooh. men's uh, uh, 1500 meters, That's just women's how four by four. Yep. So there's That's just how packed today was. Yeah, the organizers are struggling to keep up with the medal ceremonies. <laughs> and you know, they would want to do them whilst they still have um, an almost full stadium and people Absolutely. paying attention. Because the moment this race is done, people are going to start leaving because this is the last race of the evening. Well, they might. People will still wait for Evans Cadman's <laughs> gold medal, medal presentation. 
and especially you know the, the, the you know the home supporters here at the University of Ghana and the Ghanaians they would want to hear one more Ghanaian medal before the night is over. Unfortunately, Ghana is not in the four by four hundred meters men's race, yeah. and uh, that's something that perhaps Ghana Athletics has some work to do on in terms of putting together a team of four hundred. They did who put can together at this a team. Level. They did put together a team. Just had to withdraw because they just had a few issues here and there. Maybe not confident in yeah. the abilities of a team, or maybe an injury here and there. Yeah. But in the list that they released, they did put a team together for the relay. They did put a team together for the mixed four by four. Didn't make the final. And we've seen that with a lot of the the North Stars. When yeah. a when a team has, let's say, a fixed number of four, the moment something happens, one of the athletes or one of them does not feel comfortable enough uh, anatomically to take place in it that affects the whole team and uh, that's where the likes of Nigeria and Botswana come in but because they have always had strength in depth and can always summon an additional athlete who is not part of the starting team in fact they can even afford when it is that other athletes have competing um, events to stay some of them or to have them sit and rest until such a time as they can recover for the finals when they qualify and here's the Algerian Brana will be running the first leg. Botswana. That, that's Hamouni Anas Es Sadik. Mm. Nigeria have drafted in, and they are the big favorites in this event. Nigeria, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Botswana and Zambia are the others that I believe would medal once again. Zambia, Both where he's surprised in the women's event. To get they the do silver? the same in the men's event. I'm not going to stay away from predicting <laughs> this time around. So, certainly they will end up in the podium, but. Kenya have also fielded a team for the 4x4 and this is the javelin throw the winner is Nigeria and Nigeria. I love what I'm seeing because the quartet team have stopped right where they were and are singing the national anthem of Nigeria which is playing now in the background Another gold, another national anthem of Nigeria, this time the men's javelin throw. So, congratulations to Nigeria. The great man had to settle for silver. Julius Diego, Diego of Kenya. After this medal presentation, we shall have the men's high jump presentation where that will be after the four by 400 meters event. So let's all wait patiently as we all go up once more for the Ghana National Anthem. Stata. ready for the final of the men's four by 400 meter relay and off they go there's no turning back here Nigeria are the big favorites running the opening leg for them is Ojeli Ifianye out in lane three but the Zambians and the Bots Botswana running right next to them in lane four and five are running very well. The Kenyan that has gone out very strongly indeed. Weisman Mukobe is not messing around in that opening leg. Weisman Kobe negotiating the bend here. He's run a great curve. He's come onto the straight in the lead. Weisman Kobe is running strongly. What a first leg from the Kenyan. And already Kenya look like they are in the lead. And he would hand over to Sandia Caparante. 
Cabrante is taking off, but he's been quickly caught by the Zambians and the Botswana. Running for Botswana right now is Lungo Scotch. Lungo Scotch is in the lead, but only slightly ahead of Zambia's David Molenga. But look at the Kenyan. Cabrante is coming back very strongly. Is keeping Gatic. Keeping Gatic in third position, but Botswana still leading. This is going to be a frantic end to this second leg. It's keeping Getich. He's got a fiery finish. He was a medalist in the 400 meters. Against Kennedy Luchembe. But it's Botswana's second leg runner, Scotch Lungo, who has handed the baton out to the third leg runner. This time around is Ndori Bayapo. Ndori Bayapo against the Zambian third leg runner, David Molenga. This is going to be some fascinating race to the end. Look at the Nigerians as well. At the moment, Nigeria is in fourth place. It is not looking good for them. Oh, the Zambians are taking the lead. David Molenga has taken the initiative, being pursued by Ndori Bayapo. And these two are pulling away from the rest. And of they're the peeling park. away from the rest of the park. I said Bayapo is running strongly. Oh, Look at him. Back. He's overtaking the Zambian. And uh, Molenga is in trouble. Bayapo will hand over to Patrick Nyambe in the lead. Nyambe versus Samu Konga. But it's Chidi Anthony of Nigeria, the individual 400 meter winner who is running this leg for Nigeria. He got the gold in the individual event. Currently in third position, can he run down those first two? Is Samu Konga of Zambia right behind Botswana's Patrick Nyambe. This is going to be some fascinating finish to the end. But watch out for Senegal's Ndilovu as well. He's running really strong. Sheik Tidiani also make the 400 meter final. But we're coming on today. The home straight. Samu Konga against the Nyambe. Samu Konga overtakes Nyambe. It's Samu Konga and it's gold for Zambia. Nigeria gets the bronze right on the line yet again. Botswana are pip. And it's been the story of these championships. It happened in the mix 4x4. It happened in the women's 4x4. It's happened again in the men's 4x4. And Botswana would be cursing their stars. They had it, almost had it. But Samu Kanga burned his heart. It's it came unbelievable. Down to, it came down to individual brilliance. We knew Samu Kanga had the finish. Look at him gritting his teeth. Arms swinging back and forth. And he overwhelmed the athletes from Botswana who had nothing left in the tank and that's why trying and gritting and trying the Zambians just had too much and the Zambians have been the surprise package of the 4x400 meters race it was neck and neck shoulder to shoulder but the Botswana at least simply Yapo, out of steam he just couldn't keep and it up and look at that at the finish line just celebration for Samu Konga disintegration for Bayapo it's absolutely ridiculous the way this has ended it is a befitting end just like this competition started with drama aplenty is ended with the most and in the most dramatic fashion zambia with your very first goal with a new games record 259 12. he had to take something special to win a race with zambia with Botswana, with Nigeria, with Senegal, all running brilliantly. And my word, well, a happy, new game's record. I'm happy you dodged the invitation to predict, because the Nigerians were the autumn favorite to win. But in the end, the Zambians, with the individual brilliance of Samukunga, had just too much for Botswana. And you don't have to wonder how Botswana will be feeling, having been overwhelmed on the line in three straight events. The 4x400 mix, really. The 4x400 women's event. And then also in this one, where they look like they had done just enough to claim the gold medal, only to be usurped by Samu Kunga. But what a race from the young man. What a race from the young man. It's a Brilliant. games record. Brilliant racing with a new games record, snatching the record from Kenya. It's quite fitting. Which it's they set back in 2015. Ridiculous racing. And this was one of the most dramatic events this evening. One that finished with a Ghanaian on top of the podium. Benjamin Lynx will take the bronze medal. And the explanation is that he finished 
with the say at the same height as the Moroccans. The difference being how often he missed before he finally managed to clear the header. And based on that count back, the Moroccan would finish with the silver. But the Ghanaian, well, he managed to clear 2.23 meters. And so he was in a different class than the rest of the field. And so there was no doubt about who the gold medalist in the high jump was. It's Evans Cardman. He seems to be overwhelmed by the sort of support he has received so far. And seems to have been overwhelmed by emotions as well. Well, this medal, the high jump final for the men was special. And surely the medal presentation needs a bit of drama <laughs> with a splash of some spice of Ghanaian Jalof. It's not going to be a straightforward affair, is it? This announcer is way too ecstatic. And now the African champion, Ivans Kerma Yabua. As the gold medal for Evans Yabua, Cadman. A former student of the University of Ghana. He's come back here from his surgeons in the United States where he's a final year student at the University of Central Missouri. And he's claimed the African Games high jump gold medal, completing a double for Ghana in the men and women's high jump events. And for the last time this evening, and for the last time in the track and field, we shall hear the national anthem of the host nation, Ghana. Look at this celebration in the crowd. That's the last national anthem. Oh, the last time Ghana's national anthem will be belted out inside this stadium. And every single person watching this would have been singing along. And for those in the stadium, they have truly witnessed history. That's Ghana's sports minister and the playback of the events that unfolded in the lead up to the high jump gold medal for Ghana. And for Benjamin, with a jump of 2.21 meters, claimed the bronze medal for South Africa. And uh, tried at his good. It just could, didn't work out for him. The Moroccan Hamoud Assad got the silver medal also with a 2.21 meter jump and the Ghanaian there he is channeling the energy and the spirit of the fans inside the stadium he outdid himself at 2.21 meters he scaled out and sent to the stadium into complete delirium and then celebrated like a true football star. This celebration, you would know, and that is an acknowledgement from his fellow competitors. And that would be 
Fantastic for the Ghanaian. Look at the celebrations. Congratulations to him. A moment of pride for him and his family, but certainly for his country. Gold for Ghana in both the men and the women's high jump events. of plenty for every child we've had enough all along there's enough choice for every child enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough enough Delicious is being denied. Munching has become mindless. To that we say, not on our watch. Messy munches, play dirty. Busy fighters, take a moment and intensify it. Because when snacking is under attack, we'll be there to fight back. Snack in the name of play. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? You like no other. I'm talented. Me like no other. I can sing. I can dance. You like no other. As well as their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook. I can play. You like no other. In the mirror. In the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved.
between Egypt and Congo. The Congolese in all red, the Egyptians in black and white. Wow. Already one in for DR Congo. The Egyptians very, very dominant in this sport. We get a confirmation of the scoreline very shortly. Here's the final of the men's handball competition. The Egyptians in the white and black outfits, the Congolese in the red outfits. The Boitier Man Arena is, uh, how do I say it, uh, packed to the rafters. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is packed to the rafters. For a handball game. Oh, yeah. The numbers I mean, are four. very impressive, yeah. It's four. For a handball game. And uh, considering the... It's 14-13. The Egyptians leading by 14 to 13. 22 minutes of the first period already done. And the fans, the Congolese fans in there cheering their team on. They know this is going to be a very difficult game. 14 13, the Egyptians lead. The Congolese are happy to move the ball around and look for an, uh, a chance to penetrate. But the Egyptians will defend us and will look to attack. They've got the numbers. This should be it. This should be it. Yes, it is. It's 15 30. to 13 now. Absolutely. Egypt clearly in the driving seat now. As Congo have it all to do. They certainly have it all to do here at the Botiman Sports Arena. What an interesting day it's been. I mean, it's, it's been a fabulous uh, 13th African Games, you have to say. I mean, everything from handball, basketball, volleyball, badminton. I mean, just name it. I have actually fallen in love with the other so-called minor sports. Yeah. Well, you and I have spent a great part of our time here yeah. covering, covering these sports and disciplines. Minor ones. Not the the yeah. and the boxing. No, and not at all. No. Not at all. Not the very familiar ones and here in Ghana. Very, very intriguing. The badminton in particular just blew my mind. The table tennis, the swimming, oh. and all of that. Loads of amazing action here in Accra. There's a final of the men's handball. Who gets to win this? Would it be the Egyptians or the Congolese? It's 15-13. It's a two-goal game. Your oh. defense... Your defense in this game matters so much, Carl. It does. It does. You've got to learn how to prevent in whatever way possible, obviously legally, from having sight of the goal. And once that is achieved and you're leading and the time is going away, it helps. It helps a lot. It does help a lot. We are still in the first period. And that looks like the pivot who, for the Congo, The Egyptians looking great defensively. The Congolese are down by two. They've got to find a way to get and into this. And they score. They reduce the deficit to one. 94 gold medals the Egyptians have already won. Yeah, but it seems as if over the past three, four days, they've stagnated. Because they are not competing that At well here on the yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, the track and field as well, yeah. In but the last four days, they've won nothing. Yeah, but here's an opportunity for them to set the record straight. But I hope uh, winning the men's handball, if they can. If they can. Oh, that's a brilliant finish. So that makes it 16-14. 16-14. Yes, 16-14. Five more minutes to go for the end of the first period. And remember, this is live from the Bottoman Sports Arena. Exactly. It's now or never for the Congolese or the Egyptians. One final hurrah of the games. How that goes out. The Egyptians will look to start this one. Have they got numbers? Ah, uh, that should was be that foul. Inside the arc or was it outside the arc? Oh uh, well. That looked like it was outside. If it was inside. 
free, free throw. It would have been a free throw for the Egyptians. And it's great to see all of these fans there. Never mind Ghana not being in action. Mm. Sometimes the fans tend to be fellow athletes from your country. Exactly. That come in there. Exactly. Because I see all green there. Whoa, what a save. He was not fooled by it. Not at all. What a save. Not at all. It's still a two-point game. The Egyptians will be looking to hold out for this one. But it's only the first period. It's 30 minutes for both halves. The Egyptians. I used, I used to wonder when I didn't know the rules of the game. That, what would they keep for just to end the ball to one another? <laughs> get on with the business of getting the, then an experienced handball player, former national team player, actually told me that, Carl, you can't spend more than three seconds with the ball. The only way you can do it either if you're bouncing it. And then, you know what I mean? So yeah. Then I began to understand, oh, that's why right. you just do it looking for the opening. But it's 16 14. And that's the pivot. Well said. Well said. You can only keep possession of the ball for three seconds. Beyond that, there's a three second violation. Oh. Just in case you're tuning in, it's our coverage of the final of the men's handball. Congo up against Egypt is a two-point game at this point. I'll lose in possession of the ball there, but that's a foul. Police getting a look in with us, but just a little over the post there. The Egyptians who hold on to their ah. lead and they score again. Olua. They score again. 17 14. It's 17 14 now. Advantage Egypt. And the North Africans beginning to move away from the Central African side. Very experienced team, the Egyptians are. And it's not just them. The teams in the North African space are great with us. The Algerians, the Moroccans, the Egyptians, the Tunisians. Did that go in? No, it didn't go in. And brilliant save. They say it is a foul. So it means it's a free throw. Free throw advantage Egypt. And that puts them in a position where they can extend the margin. There's a three goal margin. This could be four. Oh, easy. It is four. <laughs> easy. It is a four, uh, four point margin. <laughs> easy. Four goal margin. There's a four, four goal margin, margin at this point. So no matter what it is, it's four. Yeah, the Congolese will now have to find a way of getting oh back into this. The Egyptians look to attack again. Oh, oh, what a finish! What a finish! No, but it won't count. It looks like the ref had already whistled for something. I have to admit it though, I did hear the whistle, but that was absolutely world class. Looks like it won't count. It won't count. Looks like the ref's whistle did go. That's what I'm saying before the Egyptian player found the net. I'm but, sure it was only just. But that was a world-class goal. It, it just for the fact that it was a world-class goal, the ref, uh, the, the umpires and the referees... Or the goal should have stood. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the goal should have stood, maybe. What a finish that was. But it won't count because the ref's whistle had just gone. So it... But I'm having a look at the scoreboard and it's reading 1914 Egypt. Maybe, just maybe, that did count. That's what I was saying. 1914 and it Probably a difference of a second. It should count. I am not from any country 
but I mean the two competing countries but it should count but anyway so folks this is it we'll leave it there we'll be back for the second half remember it's Egypt 19 RD Congo 14 print like no other as well as their own unique talents and abilities so every day in whatever you do remember you are special in your own way like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mommy. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved.
Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? As their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the me, in the me, it's you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special in the me. Thank you, Mom. I love my. So we have a 15 minute break mm -hmm. and after five minutes you're yeah. already out of the dressing room. Let's, that's intimidating. <laughs> yeah, the fact is, uh, let's go win gold medal, bro. That's very, very intimidating, especially when you have a five goal lead. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not too sure how close the dressing rooms are, but if they happen to be close, I'm, I'm just imagining what the Congolese will be thinking. I mean, these guys play the same game with us. After five minutes, they are going back. Here we go. It's well, Congo that started off. Yep. And you can see the pivot. Yeah. The number seven. That's such a huge character. Have to, to make, himself, <laughs> make himself a nuisance to all of them. Yeah. Put his body all over the place. Make sure that he pulls people away from certain places so that his uh, colleagues can strike at goal. Yeah. The Egyptians have a five-goal lead from the first period. Remember, the second period is going to be lasting for 30 minutes. But in between time, there could be some timeouts. Well, that you say, what, what is it, foul? That looks like a foul call by the ref. So it'll be advantage the Congolese. They will try to claw their way back into this game as quickly as they can. What you don't want when you're playing against a very good side like the Egyptians is to allow them to tear away. Today's not been the best of days for Egypt because the athletics arena wasn't the best. Uh, they also lost in the women's tennis final, but he has an opportunity to turn things around. Exactly, and make it gold, num uh, gold medal number 95. That's incredible, Carl. For a second, I thought we were going to get 100, but it seems <laughs> as if it's just tapered off. Well, I I'm not too sure how well they're doing it with uh, boxing and other sporting disciplines, because I know there are a number of finals uh, still coming up, probably tomorrow as well. If they could hit that magical 100 gold medals. But that will be a record that may stand for a very long oh. time. But good goal there from the Congolese. Good goal there from the Congolese. Reducing the deficit to four. 1915. 1915. And some members of the Congolese team in here to support them as well. The Congolese in all red, the Egyptians in white and black. Happy to move the ball around as always, the Egyptians. And looking for opportunities through the channels. They move the ball around so quickly. Yes, oh. sir! Absolutely no chance. 2050. Absolutely no chance. For the Congolese goalkeeper. That did come at him with such venom. There was absolutely nothing he could have done about it. And here they are once again. So, this goalkeeper, absolute fab and sets off the team. And this should be it. Whoa. Oh, what a save. What a save. Those are the words you use, Kwame. What a save from the Congolese goalkeeper. But the Egyptians still have a five goal lead. No, that would not go in. The Congolese have got to take their chances when they get them. Because you bet the Egyptians would when they get those opportunities. But loads of credit to that Congolese goalkeeper. What a save. Reminds me of the day when Sammy Patel used to play handball. Oh, yeah. He, he, he was a touch fail. <laughs> Egypt. Happy to keep possession and look for spaces to score. Can they do it? Oh, that was a brilliant dummy there. That's a foul. That's a foul all night.
as a foul all night in the final of the men's handball is it going to be gold to Egypt or gold to Congo Egypt with possession and like you would have seen in the course of this game <laughs> they score from everywhere on the court 21 am I right 21 now 21 This is probably going to be the longest 30 minutes in Congo's uh, career. Well, they've got to it's, find a way to win. Yeah, it's 21-15 right now. 21-15. They've got to find a way to win. Oh, and they couldn't... Uh, well, they say that's a foul. Well, they put one in now. So it's 21-16. Still a five-goal game. Player number 29. Saleh Mohammed Ahmed. 21-16. Not 20. Suleiman Mohammed. Moves the ball around to player number 29. Sakmeg Mahmoud. Mood find Suleiman looking for an opportunity to throw that a one hard 22 Suleiman Mohammed it's 22 16 now Suleiman Mohammed is at six goal lead down And it's the introduction of the pivot again in the Congolese side. They've got to find a way. Well, they just have to break. No. That's a foul. And they break with such speed. The Egyptians. Their defensive organization is absolutely on top. This should be it for the Congolese. Yes. And that's a goal from the pivot. He only comes in to get the job done. And he's already making his way back to the bench. The Egyptians have possession. Suleiman looking for his option. Suleiman. Oh, great save there from the Congolese goalkeeper. Fantastic save there from the Congolese goalie. It's still a five-goal game. It looks like the Congolese goalkeeper needs some medical attention. The ball did come at him with such power. He made a save that clearly needs some attention. How do you stop a speedy Egyptian team like this? It's like they're swarming over you like that when Are they have possession me? of the ball. <laughs> Are you asking me? <laughs> Like they're swarming over you when they have possession. If I had the answer, I knew the answer. I'd probably be there playing. They've got six players on court. But when they are swarming at you like that, it looks like they have seven, eight, nine. Well, we've done only six minutes of the second period. Still 24 minutes to go. There's a game played of two halves. 30 minutes each. But some timeouts are allowed. That was a brilliant defensive check. By the Congolese player. That's a foul. Advantage the Egyptians. The Egyptians happy to look for opportunities to score. Yes, that would count. It's 17 23. It's a six goal lead now for the Egyptians. And look at how they mass up in defense. Almost making it impossible for the Congolese to penetrate. I've got a smile on my face, you know. Why? Because anytime the Egyptians want to move up another gear, they seem to just be able to do it. 
They find a way to slow down the tempo of the game sometimes. Oh, oh that's a good one. That's a good one from the Congolese. Well, that's another goal that he didn't capture. And that's a very good way to deflate your opponents. So 24-18. It's got to be 24-18 now. 24-18. They score, you score. And that deflates them. It's 18-24. Egypt still lead. There's a final of the men's handball. Well, some Egyptian ladies in the crowd to cheer on their male team. The Congolese are looking to attack, and this is where they, they face problems. It's four on one. This will be it. Yes, it is. 25 18. 25 18. And this is going to be a worry for the Congolese all through the second half. They attack with numbers, but the Egyptians defend and transit so quickly. Look at how they won possession of that play. And within a split second, it was a 4v1 situation. That one counts. Looks like a foul has been called. So that one counts. That one counts. Looks like a foul has been called. Advantage to Congolese. Yeah, that goes in. Yes. 5 19. The Congolese reduce the deficit from 7 6. And look at how quickly the Egyptians attack. They are all over the Congolese. That went out. That's a foul. But the foul has been called. Advantage the Egyptians. Foul has been called. Quite a number of Egyptians in the crowd. That looks like a free throw awarded. The Egyptians. An opportunity to make it a seven goal game again. Player number 10. Oh, well saved. By putting the rebound. Imad Shaban. 26 19. 26 19. Imad Shaban missing from the first opportunity. But taking advantage of the second. Pretty much like a follow up on a pin. <laughs> it's 19 26. And we are in the second period now. There's a gold medal, my dude. That's a good one. Oh, yes. Well done. 26, Congo. 20. That was a good passage of play there from the Congolese. And this is what the Egyptians do so well. 27 20. Anytime the Congolese do score, it's now 27 20. Within seconds, they're back on target. And the way they even walk to the center circle. They probably given up the goals. 27 20 now. Thing is, they need to go all attack now, but that would mean leaving so many gaps at the back. That's the problem for the opponents to exploit. The Egyptian ladies, I'm sure, are happy with the performance of their male team, rooting for them to win yet another gold medal for the next host of the African Games, Egypt. That almost looked like a quick counter there. But it does appear the ref whistled for something. Not exactly too sure. What did, the what did he whistle for? Not exactly too sure what it was. No, 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 no. We need to know sometimes. Sometimes they need to transmit some of these things to us for us to know. Oh, my goodness. That, was, that yeah, should be that, a foul. Was, yeah. That, foul. That, should be, that should be a foul. Uh -oh. Imad Shaban. Uh -oh. Rocks down. Just look at how quickly they transit. One, two, three, and then and bang. But I think they've got a free 
throw. Yeah. Looks pretty much like that. Looks like a free throw for the Egyptians to extend the lead. It's so, it's so, it's so. And that will be taken by player number 55. It's an emphatic game so far. Oh boy. Player number 55 for the Egyptians. Soliman. 720 now. Yeah. Soliman Mohammed. 2720. The Egyptians almost feeding off that poor pass from the Congolese. That would go out. Has a ref call the foul? Looks like that. The Egyptians are not amused by that call, but that will stand. There are no video reviews here. None. So that would stand. <laughs> but did we have Okai join the tennis final? No. <laughs> That's why I love this continent. Well, it's good to know that handball fans all over the world are watching this. I have a good friend watching this in Finland, of all places. Of African descent? Of African descent, yes, Ghanaian. Living and working in Finland. Okay. And he's watching. Yes. He's he just sent me a message. He's watching. He's not going to work. Well, it's probably late. It must be almost um, Finland. 9:37 p.m. Yeah, that's Finland two hours right ahead now. of yes, of Ghana. Good for him. Good for him. Oh. Good evening to you, Mr. Forsen. But for now, we focus on the handball. The coverage of the Finland has been absolutely brilliant. And that's a pivot again. He only comes in to watch, score, and goes back to the bench. <laughs> I don't know how they utilize him that way. Anytime he scores, he's making his way to the bench. Absolutely. I'm not too sure what tactic that is. Maybe he can't defend. <laughs> he can't simply defend, I guess. That's what the Congolese would have to try and do. Shut out the Egyptians and look for every single opportunity to counter. And when you try to shut them out, it doesn't work. It's a goal. <laughs> Sometimes when you concede goals like this, they can be deflating. Can. Yeah. Can. They are deflating. <laughs> <laughs> they are deflating. And they are searched to oh, score. Well, safe. And their quest to score, they leave so many gaps at the back that are exploited by the opponents, the Congolese. It's a seven-goal game. What do they do? Looking to attack. No, that goes out. What the Egyptians have been able to do is to take advantage of every possession. Trying to take advantage of practically every single possession. And this is what they do so well. They are so smart with how they move the ball around. And get players in the right places to confuse the, Egyptian, uh, to confuse the Congolese. Ah, Yet another goal for Egypt. They make it look so easy sometimes. Now it's an eight-point gap. And the Egyptian fans have a big smile on their face. And who wouldn't? It's going their way. The men are dominating every facet of this game. And Congo, unfortunately, are the ones who are just, well, feeling the brunt of the attack one after the other. Yeah. Oh, that should be it. Oh, that was a fabulous brilliant, goal. fabulous goal. 22. Some semblance of um, 
normalcy. Yeah, he just dinged the ball over the Egyptian goalkeeper like that. It's a seven goal game now. It's amazing how so many people all over the globe are watching this handball final. For the first time, an error. Yeah. Oh, wow. We but don't often say that, do we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Egyptian side. Wow. We don't often say that, do we? And to all of you enjoying the coverage of the 13th African Games from any corner of this globe, we hope you've had a great time. 17 amazing days of sporting action from 30 sporting disciplines. Did that go in? Yes, it did. He's come up and he's going up again. Yeah. <laughs> he only comes on to score and makes his way back to the bench. You have a feeling the Egyptians are going to be punishing the Congolese. We rarely say the Egyptians have lost possession of the ball. This should be it. Yes, it is. Now they're beginning to narrow the gap. And Come on, Congo. And they're getting support from their, from their ladies. Next door neighbors. Come on, Congo. Chitombi Aurelien reducing the deficit to five now. Well, this is the closest we have seen since the end of the first period of 30 minutes. Chitombi Aurelien on target for the Congolese. Can they hold the Egyptians and keep them at bay? No, what a save! What a save there! And your neighbors from Kinshasa would applaud them. Ali Ali Congo should be the chance from the Congolese inside the arena. Urging them on. If only they can reduce the deficit a lot further. It would lead to a grandstand finish. Bang! Yes! 25! Oh, and the celebrations are on in the crowd. The ladies from Congo Kinshasa cheering the team from Congo Brazzaville. It's timeout. Timeout. And a timeout only lasts for a minute. Yeah. We get a recap of the last goal scored by the Congolese there. Oh, what a way to set the opening tap. He found his colleague brilliantly. Absolutely no chance there for the Egyptians. Have a look at this for a scale. Bang. It's time out. The Lats will be back on the court shortly. It's a four goal game now with 13 minutes to go. <laughs> you can imagine the Congolese reducing the deficits by one, two, three, and then all of a sudden it's game on. But will the Egyptians allow the Congolese to get that close? We would say. Suleiman. It does appear that the Egyptian juggernaut has been stalled a bit. They're looking for options to score. It's been a while they put the ball at the back of the net. That's a foul advantage the Egyptians. Abdel Sachi. Looks like. The Egyptians have been awarded a free throw and this is what the Congolese would have dreaded. Player number 55, Soleiman Mohammed. Oh! Did that go in? Yes, it did go in. So it's 25-30. Advantage 
Egypt. It's a five-point game now. A little over ten more minutes to go. The Egyptians looking to break quickly, but the Congolese intercepts that. Can they make something out of this? Can they? No, that should be a foul. That should be a free throw because I think it's in the six-yard arc. Exactly. Let's have a look at the replay again. Was that in the six-yard? Just outside it. Just outside it. So, yes, that will be just a foul. Can the Congolese take advantage of this possession, though? It's not enough to just move the ball around. The most important thing is to score. You're looking for spaces to exploit. Yes. That's a foul. because That should held. be a foul because he was held. And I think he was held in the six-yard arc. And if he was held in the six-yard arc, then that should possibly be a free throw. That should possibly be a free throw. To be affected by player oh, on, It's now a three-point game. 29-26, it's only three points now. Aureli and Chitombi. It's a three-point game now. The Egyptians have gone off the boil. Are they running out of gas? Are they running out of steam? As a three goal deficit now. Well done to the Congolese. They've been the better of the two teams in the second 45 minutes. The Egyptians looking for an opening though. Will that go in? Yes, it does. Finally. Finally. It's been a very, very difficult second half. For the Egyptians, the Congolese have outscored them in the second period. But it's still a four-goal lead. The Congolese have eight minutes on the clock to even this. And possibly take the game into extra time. Let's see what happens. Congo on the move. Clearly, that was an obstruction, and that should be a foul. That was an obstruction, and that should be a foul. The Egyptians appear to be tiring. They were by far the better team in the first period. Obviously, the Congolese are a lot more physical. And it appears that that strategy is working. Be a lot more physical. Take the game to the opponents. Go very physical. Yes, it is. Chitombi Aurelian with a goal. This just deflates you. If you're a police fan watching this. It just deflates you. It's when you think you're getting closer, <laughs> the Egyptians punish you. For me, it's like <laughs> you've just got to admit when there's class somewhere, you really have to accept that there's class. It's just like if you translate it into football. Anybody knows Man City is a class team. Case closed. Not accept it. But you've got to find antidotes in ways and means to handle that class team, which is why... Oh, fantastic! The Congo, Come on, Congo. are making it a ale, ale, Congo. What is the problem now? Looks like a timeout. Nope. No nope. change. There's only a substitution. It's a change, bro. Now, what will be the strategy for the Congolese now? Not too many minutes left. Do they go on offense and try to claw their way back into this game? That would mean exposing themselves in defense. There's a change of balls. 31-28.
is a little under six more minutes to go a little under six more minutes to go Soleiman finds player number 29 for the Egyptians Sakme Mahmoud Ahmed back to Soleiman Ahmed finds player number seven Hani Ali Rashid the Egyptians looking for an open they drop that ball come on Congo can they do this yes sir it's a two goal game now It's a two goal game now and sadly the what game, is happening to the, the Egyptians game that was being run away with by the Egyptians has suddenly turned around and boy are they having their nose bloody what is happening to the Egyptians in the second period they can't seem to navigate their way oh yes 32 to Egypt now and it's a is it a timeout looks like a timeout oh it is an injury but a Congolese player needs medical attention 32 29 the Egyptians are not going to lose this <laughs> they will give it absolutely everything to maintain this lead they know if they can hold out for the next five minutes they know that if they can hold on for the next five minutes they are champions there will be a lot of Ali Ali Congo a little under five minutes to go and five minutes is a very long time in handball especially when the score can be narrow there's a three goal deficit now not too much time left though is that a foul advantage the team from Brazzaville Newcastle Olivier finds Newcastle Newcastle looking for a breakthrough there but he's been stopped and his tracks he seems to be the man yes Newcastle what a finish innovation innovation how clever can you be olivier in your cast olivier in your cast <laughs> you can't be any clever than that how about that for a finish well done well, what did you do and just look at how two defenders made it almost impossible is a two goal game now what a game we might just be up for a grandstand finish to this bang these egyptians and that's a class act that Carl was talking about even in difficult moments they find a way they know they are not having the greatest of second house the most important thing right now is not to be too flashy not to be too flamboyant just score anyway anyhow and let's be champions with the Congolese attempt to reduce the deficit here wow how the mighty have fallen <laughs> It would take an effort to get him up. <laughs> it would take an effort to get him up. Yes. And you saw where the foul was. It would take an effort. Thank <laughs> you. 
The Congolese pivot clearly needs some medical attention. Okay. That's an effort there. <laughs> That's an effort to get him up. There's a three goal deficit. There's a gold medal going to Cairo. As far as they are concerned, you can bet your bottom dollar. Or is a gold medal going to Congo? As far as they are concerned, you can also bet your bottom dollar. The game should continue shortly. That's a free throw advantage, Congo. Oh. You don't blow away opportunities like this. You don't blow opportunities like this at this time of the game. At this time of the game, you've got to score. You've got to take your chance. And that was a chance gone waste there. You've got to take your chance. You've got slightly less than uh, what, two minutes. The Congo needs to do it and do it fast. They do not have too many minutes left. Oh, and Tombi, yes. They're back in it. It's a two goal game again. I would love to see the clock at this point and see how many minutes we still have to go. I would love to see the clock. That should be a foul, yes. That should be a foul. We may just be set for a grandstand finish. Oh, against the post. Can the Congolese reduce it to a one-point game? Oh, no. Oh, no. Did they score it? I think they may. Has that counted? Has that counted? It has, it has. It's a one point game now. It has. Oh la la. And it's only one more minute. One minute and a one point game. What drama. What drama. Oh la la. What drama. Oh, it's getting a bit physical at this point. A good time to call timeout if you're the coach of Egypt. A good time to call timeout if you are the coach of Egypt. There's only one minute of regulation time left. Less than a minute, actually. What will be the tactics at this point? Do we go on offense? Do we go on defense? With only 40 plus seconds to go. Will the Egyptians go on offense? To just score within that final one minute. What will the Congolese do? If they tie it, we go into extra time. This is so, so close. What would Egypt do? Would he attempt to score again? Would he attempt to score? And yes, sir. No, that would not count. The foul had already been called, so that would not count. The clock is running down. What would the Egyptians do? That should be another foul. That should be another foul. Pay attention to the clock. It's almost time. What would the Egyptians do? Would they attempt to score? If they lose possession, they are in loads of trouble. That should be a foul again. <laughs> what a finish to this one. It's over. It's, it's over. over. Gold medal. Gold to Cairo. 
Egypt have made it yet again. What an Man. effort by the Congolese. But they made a fist of it. They surely made a fist of it. Well, 95 gold medals now for the North Arabic country. That's called the, the Northeast Arabic nation, if you want it that way. You've got to give the Congolese a lot of credit for that. No. Wow, has the game not ended? Well, uh, let's see. I think it's probably ended. Or can we have a look at the clock again? It was 0-0. Zero, zero. It's over. It's over. It's over. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's Egypt over. have won the gold medal, beating Congo by 33 goals to 32. What a finish. every child we've had enough all along there's enough choice for every child enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough enough what happened to snacking delicious is being denied Munching has become mindless. To that we say, not on our watch. Messy munches, play dirty. Busy fighters, take a moment and intensify it. Because when snacking is under attack, we'll be there to fight back. Snack in the name of play. Every child is so unique. You like no Standing in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like in the me. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? You like no other. I can play the drums. I'm collecting. It's me like no other. I can sing. I can dance. You like no other. As well as their own unique talents and abilities. Whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This effort is FDA approved. And hello Africa, welcome to Ghana, welcome to Accra. It is the 13th African Games. It's been pulsating, it's been fantastic, it's been fun, it's been enthralling. All the words you can pick to describe something that has been magnificent, go for it. Because that is what these games have proven to be. And under the lights here at the Athletic Oval where we've seen amazing competitions, we've seen many athletes making history and winning gold, we are going to tell you how the day unfolded. Joining me on the show today is Felix Romak, who was here in the morning. Welcome back, Felix. Sicho, it's been jumping, exciting. <laughs> jumping all the way from commentary onto the set. Sorry, Bartels. Hi, it's always a pleasure to be here. Hey, brilliant stuff. And for you out there, let's do this now. Let's jump into me straight away. Start off with athletics. Yeah. 
in jumping into it the high jump was keenly contested for the men in the end it was Ghana Stevens Katman Yabua who who through the energy of the crowd and his ability went on to win gold what are the odds that Ghana will win a double high jump at the African Games mm -hmm. I mean the odds were not you know in Ghana's favor but for him to do that after what Amoinima had been able to do a few days ago and, and she was in the crowd supporting him as well and your eyes about the the, the you know the supporters today and you know it saddens me that athletics is ending because just when people started coming to the stadium and you know filling them up um the, the games are ending the crowd were vociferous today it was like a, a festive or a football atmosphere and special shout outs to his hall of residence whilst he was here at the university of ghana the commonwealth hall i, I they had give, a, I big, give a shout outs to your hall well, as well because i'm an alumnus of the commonwealth <laughs> hall of the university of ghana and they showed up for him and you could see him feeding off the energy that was coming from the crowd but it was by no less uh, but you know it was not an easy journey all right so um, that is that is a dance that that is he did a shuffle yeah after yeah, winning yeah yeah and you know for Stabba Felix man he's, he's he's a showman of course and Sicho you look at where Evans Cadman has come from in 2018 he had to break the Ghana Athletics Championship record of 2.06 meters and for him to go all out to conquer Africa in the African Games with 2.21 meters that is that is something that yeah. I'm sure he will cherish yeah I don't think that Four years ago, if you had told him he would be on the podium to pick up gold for Ghana at the African Games, he would have said, my time is not here. But we saw it. And I think that kudos to the fans and the supporters as well. They were brilliant. They came, yeah. they gave it their all, and what a way to celebrate. And yeah. I'm very, very proud you know, of him. I'm hoping that when the African Championship comes back to Ghana in May, he might or should be able to get some qualification mark that could send him to the Olympic Games in Paris. Yeah, it was a fantastic way to perhaps end the day with him winning a gold because he probably, he, he truly, well and truly put up a fa fantastic show, getting the crowd on their feet and giving them every reason to shout. But let's hear from the showman himself. It was Ivan Skadman Yamo. Uh, I feel excited. I feel like I'm on top of the world right now. I don't know what, I, I don't know what word to use to describe this feeling. First of all, from the beginning, it's been great. It's been welcoming ever since I got here. Ghana has been my home. I started in the University of Ghana, so I felt welcome home. Training, everything, it's been hard. Having a change of environment, I went to the cold, then I came back to the hot. It's been wonderful, it's been excellent, and to date, I feel like excited. I don't want to go back. Yeah, you can sense that excitement <laughs> in his voice, can't you? He is a happy boy, and why not for giving Ghanaians all those smiles and putting up that show. All right, so, Mariam Das. 100 meters women's winner 200 meters women's winner she was the favorite coming into this one and she didn't disappoint well, she was and she was defending both titles which which she won uh, well she won at the african you know senior championship everybody knew that she's world class and throughout the heats and the semi-finals she was in a class you know by herself she was a cut above the rest in this final she was made to work a bit harder than usual because typically you see her jumping uh, well, jogging down the home street, but this she was pushed all the way. But again, you could see the extra acceleration she had yeah. to hold off the Nigerian who was surging towards the, the, the finish line. So, congratulations to the, the, the Gambian for doing the double. It was close, very close, was very that competitive. 0 0.05 uh, 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 seconds you know, to, to, to get a goal. But there you see, uh, yeah, like, 0 0.05. Uh, that was very, very close. But you could see from the hit and the semi-finals that she was making the right time she was making the fastest time so it wasn't in doubt that the gambia had to come out there mm. and pick up the gold and you look around i think that hardly do you see most of the top top athletes coming to compete at the african uh, championship but she came defended her title and it's not surprising because she's the finest at this discipline when right. you come to the african continent superb it was but also the men took to the tracks and the whole place exploded. It should have been here only three hours ago. Maybe then I wouldn't have heard myself speaking because it was Ghana's Joseph Paul Amoa, who in the 200 meter race, quite clearly a favorite, who did not again disappoint. It's about showing up. Um, you know, JP has been building momentum for some years now, but has yet to really capture a medal that is widely recognized. And this was, you know, at the pro level, at the senior level, this was a major challenge for yeah. him. But you could tell after his Commonwealth Bronx that he had a step up 
and he was ready for this. And you know, he had just enough in the tank to hold off um, Emmanuel from Cameroon, who made a band storming finish, yeah. you know, to go past Nigerian who came third. Um, so, I mean, good for him. He is that because he knew that he had reached the finish yeah, many, line many already. Many would have been looking to Joe Paul to win, but it was between the second and third place that I thought, really then, just, just a split second, the Cameroonian was ahead. Of course, but I also realized that Paul didn't give enough to the finishing. He thought that he had won, but it was very close. That was also 0 0.04 microseconds for that finish. But then again, I, I, it was it was very, very close. And you realize that for Emmanuel, he's been good. 0.04, it sprints, it's fast. No, Sito, but you could... That's you could have lost. Meters. You you want you want you want him to be superhuman. Yeah, he is superhuman I'm not saying already. that, but if the time is there for you to extend a personal record, yeah. a national record, just go for it. I don't like the fact that most athletes want to slow down even no, when they know they are. Okay, now let's get this. Did he deliberately slow it, or he was just, you know, tiring at the end I because mean, he had powered through? I mean, he had powered through. He eased up a bit towards the finish line. Right. But when you watch the slow motion again, he eased up at the finish line yeah. um I, I agree with you that he could have been out dipped but if this had happened just you know a percentage of a second earlier you could tell at this stage that he knew he had won and he eased up right and the cameroonian cloud emmanuel was dipping for the line but it was too late i mean you don't get anything yeah. extra beyond the 100 meters and consider the nigerian i mean he had already run his way so yeah. he hung on for third and, place, and so. for 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 Amwa, he came into this final knowing very well what had happened in the 100 meters, to especially to Azamati, more like a revenge mission. And we had two Nigerians who had already helped Nigeria to the 4 by 100 meter relay. So it was, today I'm going to pick the gold, yeah. no he, matter what happened. He, 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 he didn't medal at the last African championship. Yeah. And he, he, he had to come good and make good the promise that is JP. Was everybody expecting that at some point he'll become African champion and perhaps, you know, win some other medals at the global level. So this is a shot in the arm, not just for him, but the Ghanaian sprinting um, because they had missed out on key medals. And it's also very good for him because the next challenge for the 4x100 team is to qualify for the Olympic Games. All right, so then let's hear from the man himself, Joseph Paul Amour, who won Ghana gold in the men's 200 meters. Words can't describe how I feel right now. Doing in front of them is, is just amazing because um, I know the expectations were high uh, winning the bronze at Commonwealth Games so this one is like very special to me and I'm sure it's special to the fans as well. Um, rest for a few days, get back to practice and then start um, continue preparation to the Olympics. All right, so then he wants to be at the Olympics for sure. And why not? Why can't he dream on for excelling like this at the African Games? Meanwhile, it was with four by 400 meters women, and Nigeria were just too strong. They went on to win it, Nigeria. They were. Um, in terms of strength in that, they had it. My disappointment was that Kenya did not finish. We still haven't heard any official reason why the Kenyans did not finish because Mary Mora, who's already won two gold medals, could have. Um, she won the bronze medal in the four by 400 mixed. Yeah. And, you know, with her finishing, Kenya would have had a really good chance of doing well. But the Nigerians were running their own race. Um, they stretched out. The surprise for this race was actually Zambia mm. uh, because. Everybody tipped Botswana to yeah. at least run the Nigerians close and finish second. And for a moment, as they ran into the final 150 meters, uh, 200, 200 meters, I think, of this, Botswana were in second. The mistake they made was that they thought they could, you know, chase down the Nigerians. So the anchor leg runner ran herself ragged and ran out of steam, which allowed the Zambians to run past them to take second place right. and the silver medal. And for the men, though, it was again Zambia who were the surprise because Nigeria came into the men's 400 true. meters. We shouldn't forget the fact that for the Zambian women, that was a national record yeah. for them in that particular race. That's absolutely true. All right, but, but for the men, as I was saying, Zambia also came out as, as if like the upset of everything, not to say anybody underestimated them, but it was for many who were in the stadium, many who had followed it. We thought it was between Nigeria and Botswana, but it wasn't between them in the end. It was Zambia who went all the way to win it. What an amazing day for Zambia. I have been very impressed with the way they've run the 400 meter relay and this particular championship, both for the men and women. And I think that they have a lot, a lot, you know, in them going forward. That was a very fantastic race from Zambia. Impressive finish. I, for once, I thought Botswana 
had picked up the gold, yeah. only to see the Zambians coming and finishing that. And that was a very, <laughs> very impressive run. They yeah. never give up. Yeah. And then the speed to finish that particular race was very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Super. Th this race came down to, I think, also, once they put him in the place, the individual efforts of uh, Musala Samukonga. Yeah. Um, just two years ago, at the Commonwealth Games, at the age of 19, he won the 400 meters. And he, he's just 21 years. When he took that baton, Zambia were not in first place. It was apparent. And, and, and you know, for anybody watching, that Botswana were going to win the gold. But then he pulled them and he surpassed and overwhelmed his um, opponent from um, uh, Botswana, Botswana with just about 15 meters to go. And you saw him collapse because of the sheer effort yeah, that he's given. But he's a real champion. Incredible, the one incredible to watch show the there by, yeah. by Zambia to win gold in the men's four by 400 meters uh, race as we saw today. So correlations to all the winners from just a Paul Amua to Evans, Yamua Kadman, uh, Yamua Kadman to also to Nigeria. To everybody who won. And there was plenty that was won. But of course, we can't we can tell you everything. So we'll tell you some more away from the tracks. Let's get into the rink and talk about boxing shall we because in boxing Zola Levens in 48 kg lost out to Ayite Mohammed. Ayite Mohammed has gold in the 48 kg category. Ayite Mohammed has been one of the stars of this Ghana team um, right from the beginning when he started scoring knockout and you know, this Ghana team has been helped a lot by the fans who have been at the stadium and have shown class. Um, so I mean congratulations to him. He he just outmaneuvered his opponent he landed a cleaner shot and completely dominated his opponent he left the judges with an easy decision make to make mm. and then there was also after him that we also saw Komi Komi coming up against Andrew Shilata in the men's 60 kg Komi is a gold winner very very impressive you know that's the first time Ghana have won boxing at a Commonwealth game it's almost about 10 years now it's, yeah. it's very very impressive and Zichu, it's not surprising that a lot of Ghanaians are into the finals. This community is what has made great boxers when it comes to Ghana. And Bukom hosting this particular event, you have no, no, no excuse not to pick up a podium finish yeah. or get a medal. And you could see that they feel like they are fighting at home. Mm. And that is what has motivated a lot of the Ghanaian boxers to get a medal finish. And I'm, I'm sure there will be a lot of more medals they will be getting from the ring at Bukom. Yeah, and you know, Ghana could have had more medals. There have been a couple of shock results purely because the boxers took their eyes off the ball. In on both occasions, they were leading after two rounds. And then when there were onslaughts from their opponents, the referees stopped the fight. So it could have been much better. Mm. But we know that Ghana could win more medals um, in the competition. Joseph Komi is such a showman. Yeah, <laughs> he's such a showman. There. He was getting the crowd going. Difficult to fight against him, especially when it's in his, as, as Felix said, in his comfort zone, a place where he calls yeah. home because they are going to back him and he knows how to get the crowd to back him. Into hockey. It was the final for women in a pulsating game between the two West African rivals in Ghana and in Nigeria. In the end, Ghana clinching. Uh, Gold again, it's another discipline where Ghana have gone to beat Nigeria in the final to win. Yeah, and for context, there were three teams, and this contest was about uh, sorting out who gets gold, who gets silver. But I think the key thing for Ghana was when they beat Kenya, a team that they had lost to when they went for the qualifiers for the Olympic Championship. Um, and they were, you know, extremely confident and motivated going up against the Nigerians. The Nigerians are not a bad team, yeah, but I think. Ghana just had momentum and on their side, and this team was extremely determined, as we've mm. seen with the male team as well. And so that was then hockey where Ghana were uh, good. Away from hockey, there was football that was played today. The bronze place had to be settled in men's football, and we saw Senegal winning by two goals to nil against Congo to confirm their bronze medal. Lovely diving header to find the finish, but in, in stop it time really to, to confirm bronze for Senegal. Yeah, they were disappointed to have lost to Ghana, but obviously now picking bronze is, and medal would, would be something that perhaps makes them happy, Felix. Of course, and you look at uh, Senegal in recent times, they've dominated the, the youth football on the African continent, both the under-17 and then the under-20. And for them, this was one of the uh, competitions that they thought they would be getting a medal. Maybe not the color of medal that they wanted, but yeah. going back to Dakar or Senegal with the bronze is not a very you know, bad uh, uh, resource at all. Right, okay, so... Now that the bronze has been settled, 
who wins gold, who wins silver in men's football at the African game. It's, it's, it's Ghana coming up against Uganda at the Cross Paul Stadium. Yesterday, the Ghanaian women beat Nigeria and Cape Coast in what's, what's an incredible atmosphere. What kind of atmosphere are we going to see at the Accra Sports Stadium tonight when Ghana takes on Uganda? What a game that is. Fine margins, a game that plenty hangs on it. Big difference between the two medals at stake. There's gold, there's silver. Ha! Difficult there, game. You know, there, there come moments when home advantage counts. Mm. Uganda know that they are not used to winning uh, first place in Ghana. <laughs> you have to go back to 78 when they came to play in the African Nations Cup yeah. at that same venue at the Accra Stadium where they faced the Black Stars and lost by two goals to nil as Ghana won their third um, competition. But I've been reading what the, uh, the Ugandans have been talking about and they feel there's something special brewing for them um, because of what their women have done and what the men are doing. And already they know that there will be a full stadium. You just have to look at what happened here. And uh, at some point, when fans started leaving the stadium here, the word on the street was that people were rushing to get seats at Accra Sports Stadium because, before it finally gets sold out. So one yeah. thing is certain, Ghana would have a vociferously you know, packed Accra Sports Stadium cheering for them. And that should give them an advantage over the Ugandans. Phyllis, I'll come to you though, but we want to see how the Ghanaian team arrived at the stadium at Accra Sports Stadium. And there you see they're arriving in the team bars and fans all over the place, so excited and happy to meet them. Listen, it's going to be an advantage for them, Felix, but is it, is it, is it one of the, those scenarios where the, the fans could be pressure points or could be a push? Of course, the, the pressure will come surely, especially after what happened in Ghana's uh, women's football game yesterday where the Black Princesses won. But then again, it won't be an easy game. You look at Uganda, they've already beaten two of the top teams in West Africa. They defeated Nigeria and Senegal. And then if you look at Ghana, Ghana played Congo. It was a very difficult game. They couldn't pick up the maximum points. But look at Uganda. They came back from two, a 2-0 two you know, scoreline to win 3-2 yeah. against the same Congolese that Ghana. Yeah. Uh, Ghana 4-2 actually. That, that Ghana was struggling to beat. So they will come into this game knowing very well that Ghana have played against teams that they have already dispatched. Mm. You look at Senegal. They got a win over Senegal. They've gotten a win over Congo. And these are two teams that Ghana struggle to beat. Even in the semi-final, I had to take a last-minute effort you know, uh, from uh, FSN to get Ghana into the final. So the Ugandans won't come into this game and say, forget the crowd. We are here. We've done so much. Yeah. We've even exceeded our expectation of getting... Should they lose, getting a silver? So they'll come into this game and say, you know what? We are not a favorite. It won't be a shame if you lose to Ghana. And that will take off some pressure from them. But with the crowd, there'll be pressure on the team. But I've been impressed in the way that the 20 team have played. And mm. surely, they should be favorite for this particular one. Yeah, so there you see the players there warming up and getting themselves ready for what would be a very, very great final of the African Games. Since the host nation, Ghana team, that is coming up against Uganda, which, as well as described, Sammy, yeah won't be under the pressure for, and that's where their strength could be well what have they got to lose yeah. um, <laughs> they've already outperformed you know their own expectations but they would want to go one step um further and yeah. the biggest mistake the Ghanaian team could make is to underestimate the ugandans the ugandans yeah. played at this you know at this stadium for their final group game so i had the opportunity to watch them um close up they are very organized at the back you know they are captain um rogers tall you know gangling guy organizes them from the back so they don't concede a lot of goals when they concede as well they've got you know very good attacking players especially yeah. the wingers to cause problems for ghana so all the best to ghana um in this game they would start as favorites because momentum is on their side and they've got the fans but i think uganda is on a mission and they would not just roll over for the ghanaians gentlemen thank you very much thank, thank you, you so much sammy thank you so much felix thank you so much for doing the watching the night continues with Ghana and Uganda playing in the final of the men's football. It is the African game, the 13th edition, coming your way from Accra. Plenty of excitement and plenty to enjoy. We've left the oval. Now over to the Accra Sports Stadium for some more football. Enjoy.
now the national anthem of Ghana. Et maintenant l'hymne national du Ghana. Ali set there for an epic battle. The lipstick lines have been drawn at the Accra Sports Stadium. The pitch has been well mated, and indeed, the pedicure and the manicure have been done on the green pitch. And this is where the Ghanaians in white and the Ugandans in yellow and black will battle it out for the gold medal in this competition. And as you can see, the crowd is actually giving them that support right from the onset. And they are looking to make comments. Well, the Ghanaians should try to die for their Suleimana, the man who plays the club football in Lyon, giving the fans something to cheer about. It's something they've been looking forward to. He's been the brightest sport in the Ghanaian side. He did start against the South Sudanese side. That was a match. The black satellite struggled, and of course, they were able to get a win to get to Jerry Afriye. Suleimana was indeed 
and match for there for the South Sudanese side. But this is where we are now, the final match. And you're expecting the Kakandi, Buyangu, all of them coming to play at Chiona in the seven shed. They have been absolutely wonderful there for the peoples of Uganda. Always looking for their runs there. Chiona in the seven shed, Buyangu nine and Kakandi 11. I tell you what, Mutebe is playing just behind Usama in the heart of midfield. What has been very dominant in midfield as well on the 20 shed there for the heroes of Uganda. But the back line, Lukwago in the 17 shed there, and called to Rach and Madoi and uh, Juma. They're doing their bit there. And the ends also would have to say that they have ACL at the back together with Wachi and uh, Afri McCarthy and uh, Samwa, the captain. He's always watching in the right back. Midfield is Imale J and That is Bensa. Uh, Suleiman here. It's on the inside. It's before here. And they're able to keep the ball in play. Goes out. The fans have come in the numbers here at the Crossport Stadium. Absolutely. And I saw what happened in Cape Coast yesterday. And they have to um, just uh, replicate what happened in Cape Coast. And that is exactly what they're doing. They're still coming in their numbers. But you can see here in your shot. Uh, the skipper of the set tried to keep the ball in, but uh, the ball just had to roll out for a goal kick. I mean, that's a confident start from the Black Starlets. Um, they had a very fresh shot, and this one is another brilliant start from them. Uh, they'll be looking to uh, draw the first blood, but that won't come easy because this is a, a Ugandan side who have seen it all. They've come back from a two goal down to win by four goals to two. But oh, it's me and the uh, play there from Emmanuel Mensa. I was expecting some bit of rust there from him on the flanks. Taking the ball for it. Jerry Free has always been the target man up, up front at Chione here for Uganda. Always looking for some of the runs there. And here they push forward. Uyangat. And of course, Akande. Now they pick it up again. Or reward there. He plays a club football in the UK. Brookside College Academy in the United Kingdom. Alan Oriwas. Well, making his fifth appearance there for Uganda had to score just one goal again penalty against Senegal 360 minutes is split there for the heroes of Uganda I was in charge of the midfield there Abdul Aziz next year there for Ghana Mussein pushing it to the left hand side Mensa is giving the task here ACL now comes Mensa on the left hand side looking to whip another big ball into the box here on SL, Aziz, the Dreams FC player, been very instrumental on the Confederations Cup game. It is Kufua Samoa, goes round. Juma, oh, the referee spotting that to be an infringement. The first yellow card, very early. Player got his name taken there. And that is a bit of an interesting story, story there for this man, Ibrahim Juma. Four minutes. And already he's got his name taking. That means he has to be very careful. Yeah. Juma, I think he went in very late. Uh, that is quite some wonderful uh, piece of skill from uh, the skipper of the side, Asamoah, who, I mean, he tried it once, the ball rolled out for a goalkeeper by this time around. He beat his marker, but Juma was just there to bring him down, and he received the very first goal ship. Yeah, plays his platform ball in Spain for Leganes, his second yellow card. And this 13th edition of the African Games football tournament, Ibrahim Juma, also making his fifth appearance there for the Hippos of Uganda. It's played almost every game there for the side, and really interesting there to have him. Got a yellow card here. Hasn't really scored there for the side, a left full back, and the Ghanaians would want to take advantage. Suleiman behind the ball, as he's also. Now Ghana with a chance here to whip this ball into the box. And tactically see how many yellow and black shirts in the turf yard area. Trying to make sure that they repel any attacking play there by the Ghanaians. It is going to be Aziz whips into the pulls it. What a save there from da. Apu Magada needed to make the save. It was just hidden. Tip into the top corner there for Magada with that lovely, lovely save there. He came on to replace Shamlan Kamiya, who had a concussion in their match against Congo, but Magada simply isn't showing that he keeps them in the game there. Another ball whipped in, Magada comes out, 
Well, still dangling in a very dangerous area. Ghana with Neil. They have a chance. The Ghanaians have scored. Very scrappy. But I tell you what, it's already in. Jerry Efriye scores a second for Ghana in this competition. His first goal came against South Sudan. And here comes his second goal there. Well, I tell you what, there's some bit of confusion as to whether the goalkeeper was impeded here. Well, that won't count. That celebration has been cut short there, but the Guardians would feel that it should be given. There, he post protested and they got it right. Yeah, I think uh, for me, there are two players on the goalkeeper uh, just to stop him from getting close to the ball. I think it was a good call from the referee, but I mean, that was a brilliant uh, free kick from Aziz about our standard, and that, that brought about that corner kick, and they had an opportunity. Here they come again. Suleimana here. Very strong on the ball, he's trying to push his way forward, Suleimana. And Jerry Afriye really thought he scored his second goal in this competition for the Ghanaians. But that was cut short there by the decision yeah. of the Zambian referee, Hilary Amamba. Uh, Hilary Hambaba making sure that Alice is able to get a decision going the way he wants it. Shione pushed down. But that's going to be a lot and lot of talking points in this game between the Ghanaians and that of uh, the hippos of Uganda. When you see the likes of uh, Shione pushing forward there, there's been a lot of talk about this young man. There's a club in Ghana actually chasing his signature. I mean, he's been brilliant to us, uh, I mean, all tournament, and that is why. They're actually keeping tabs on him. Not only him, uh, Buyanga as well has been brilliant. He's got two goals uh, in their very uh, last game. And so, I mean, the likes of McCarthy will be keeping an eye on him as well. Fans of the players up front. Anytime they have possession, Osama was sitting deep in the heart of uh, midfield for the side. Torachi has been pretty strong at the back with Madoy. Madoy and Torach there. Look at how they play down the middle side of the pitch to rush press play looking for Ibrahim Juma good play now from Kakande Rianga It shouldn't be.
to the part of Jeffrey and it's that man again as he's who tried to feed through Jerry Afriye, but the goalkeeper read it all day long. Aziz, he was just being clipped by the Ugandan Alan a reward. And again, defensively, the Ghanaians are beginning to come out. Well, and stoppage there because of the injury situation there to Ablaziz Issa. This is where Ooh, yeah. this. he caught him. He caught him there. You can see why he's in so much pain. And Coach Dasma wouldn't like to lose such a talented and a quality player in Abdul Issa. He's been brilliant even in in the Cup Confederations Cup with Dreams FC. That's the reason why. I mean he's the maximum for the team. And Coach Desmond of Fell wouldn't like to lose him at this early stages of the game. He's somebody who can conjure something exceptional in this game there's a lot of battles in this game there one of them is about Shione and then another Kwame Buachi the bookmakers have always said that the second battle to watch out for is Chione and Kwame Buachi Chione turns out for Sport Club Villa in the start times Uganda Premier League as Buachi plays for Brickham City in the Premier League as well featuring as an inverted winger the left-footed Chione we talked about his uh, provocation to ACL and what he was able to do there. On well, the handball situation there, according to the Zambian official, Sulemana takes the ball out of play there, and the fans are not happy about the decision. Yeah. I think that Suleiman just had the ball just roll out of touch and just couldn't keep it in. Well, the very last time these two sides met was back in Mauritania. Coach Bayakasu in that game had the likes of Jack Kumakech, Gavin Gizito, Maguiri, Aziz Koyondo. He also had uh, Musa Ramathan and Kenneth Simakula. All of them played in that game where Ghana had the likes of uh, Philemon Bafo. Well, it's going to be a very cynical tackle there. And uh, Alan Oriwat. Skipping the wrath of the referee there, but again, this is a tackle there, sliding one there from uh, Alan Ori was. Yeah, that was a lit challenge on Suleimana who tried to use the craft turn, but it didn't work out. I'm well, just talking about the 2021 team and Alad Ibrahim for Ghana and the likes of Abdul Fatah Shah, who now plays for Leicester City, and this Ghanaian team with it. Uh, the opportunity to find a way out and to rush clears his lines. But the Ghanaians will keep possession. Here comes Isil. Suleimana again. He's got some trickeries there. Suleimana keeps the ball in play. Looking for another strip pass there. He's able to find. This is a free year. And goes wide. That is some try. That is some try. I think that the Starlets are now getting themselves into the groove again. That is a brilliant try from a free. At least he had it on target, but it was just a feeble one, I, I should say. But yeah, some confident play from the Starlets. Well, the satellites, I should say. The satellites. Well, they had the opportunity to at least get the early goal there. Three attempts there for the Ghanaians on behalf of the uh, Hippos. We're just talking about the uh, team that Ghana possessed. And coach Molly Oyokwasu, a second stint with the under 20 side of Uganda in any competition. Of course, he knows he's not picked up the sort of wings that is expected of him in Uganda. But at least when he gets the chance now in this competition where he had a very unblemished record, winning three of his group matches and a heavy win against Congo in the semi final. Clearly, he want to add this one to his. Uh, Portfolio and ensure that he's at the best account of committing a foul. And Desmond is first thing to the Black Satellite side, and already he's in the final of this all important championship. The Ghanaians picked up the uh, title back in 2011. Now they want to continue here at home and make it two wins because the princesses did that against Nigeria last night. Yeah.
Uh, for, for Desmond, he actually had his uh, footballing career curtailed with, um, I mean, a groin injury. And that didn't really work out for him at the age of 20. But then he, he just didn't finish there. He took up his coaching course, went to Chelsea, had some stint in Belgium as well. And now he's here coaching the, the Black Satellite. That's quite an impressive one. He's unbeaten in his first three games. And for me, he's been the talk of the moment. Just to show that these players are playing with some confidence and some panache. Well, they have been players who played in the National 17 League in Uganda, so they know themselves pretty well. Ghana in trouble once again, but uh, it's been well dealt with defensively. A little bit of wariness by the Ghanaian sometimes. They become a bit jittery at the back, giving the balls away and allowing the opposition to have a field day. So what you expect the likes of McCarthy and you know, Kwame Boachi to be a little bit resolute and not too expansive at the back, but a little bit you know, compact. Not yeah. to create too many chances there for the opposition to pick it up. I think they have it at the back of their mind, the likes of uh, Buyanga, who's been brilliant. He's got two goals already, and they know him. But in the opening first 10 minutes, they had no I mean, touches. They've not touched the ball. And so it looks like they, they, they've not warmed up themselves into the game yet. Free does well to keep the ball in play, but nobody there to support him. And so he has been uh, dealt with there by Magada. This is a uh, Mensa. Free most of the time needs support he needs to hold on to the ball for a while for his players to come close to him so he can release the ball quickly juma went it well there for the hippos of uganda as they check forward there oh, was lifting ball to buyanga here gione well the best of clearance there from the Ghanaians. the kande and ghana able to pick the pieces up brilliantly there by Mohsin Mahmoud. Now the Ghanaians pushing forward. Lovely turn there for Emmanuel J. I think there's something wrong with the players on the turf. I think that is a skip of the side. It looks like he must have felt something somewhere. A little bit of physicality there by the two sides, and sometimes how they able to come out. Well, so the coaches have talked about the fact that with two teams will be playing their game are uh, not to be overawed by whatever numbers they have in midfield or in attack there but see the push that did come in from yeah. it looks like uh, he catch his achilles yeah kiza arafat usama well the man i was just talking about and his performance there with the side he's seen some very exciting players there for the hippos of uganda some chances coming the way of the Ghanaians, and this is where jerry freer thought that he had to go the first goal for Ghana. Yeah. Came off the back of his head there, but the protest there from Uganda indicating that ref, uh, the goalkeeper was impeded in his own safe zone. Yeah, you can see the demeanor of this one of fair. I mean, he's not really bothered at all. He just saw them, the players to just, uh, I mean, carry on. And he knows that they've got goals in them and they can actually do some, I mean, conjure some magic to square goal, at least in this game, because they've been brilliant. Um, in in the tournament even yeah. though by one game yeah, they didn't score but again, they've the got goals in them the 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 i was just talking about the and the, the 20 side back then in the 2021 where Dalad ibrahim philemon bafo frank wabna asinki uzal hassan samulabi ashi kwe Emmanuel asiam patrick mesa abdul fatasha akur precious boy daniel fia bani muhammad sulemana i tell you what He played in a 0 0 drone game, and people were talking about him. But after he played against Gambia and Benny, and now people started nodding their heads. I mean, he's been brilliant. 
and Aziz. Here comes the free eight. Flag up for an offside. <laughs> Interestingly, 2020 there was 13. 24 to 19. There's yeah, I think it was just offside. Just a shade too early. Correct call from the assistant. Trying their best to keep it neat and simple in Okwami Boachi. As well, the few players have been talked about in this competition and what uh, he's able to produce here in Okwami Boachi. There's probability. And the big country was already in the stage. Happening at Legon Stadium. That should be propel the team to a win here. Here's Juma. Conceding a corner kick. Yeah, he should be very careful. He's on a yellow card. And as someone keeps on engaging him there. Ball whipped in again. And again, it's been a very much straightforward set piece by the Ghanaians. Yeah. Just only the previous one we saw entering into the net, but it was an illegal one. But Derek, I'm going to ask you this. What was the last time you saw this crowd at their cross sports stadium in any national assignment be it the black stars the Metros, the queens or the under 17 side tell me when williams i can't really remember honestly i do recall this crowd this crowd back in 2008 when ghana hosted the afghan yeah that is when you do have this our very massive first game. crowd yeah absolutely well the last time it did happen again for the black queens was back in 2004 when they played against nigeria it was supposed to be an Olympic qualification. The stadium was filled to capacity like we do have now. But Chione here has been fouled by a J. Well, the fans are really loving their time here, aren't they? They are. They are. I, I think they saw what happened in Cape Coast yesterday. And they just needed to replicate that. And they are doing that expertly. Well, the final match here of the men's football edition here. It comes to... The hippos of Uganda always getting themselves into a very important area as a candy. Here's Emmanuel J for Ghana. Trying to control things there with uh, Emmanuel Kufua somewhat. And Ghana playing it at the back very safe. Kwame, Wachi, Aziz, a J gives the way to Alan Oriworth. Always looking for Usama. And here comes Buyanga. And again, safe throw. Sorry, Yakubo to deal with it. Yeah, first shot on target, and obviously it will come from them. I just look at the run from him. Brilliant run from him, but that shot was just feeble to the near post. But that was a brilliant pass into the part of Buyanga. Well, the dreadlocked uh, Uganda Revenue Authority player face. He's facing a very stern character against the Ghanaian goalkeeper. Buyanga is at uh, one of the times they call him the hard working player. It's been sometimes described as a uh, player who works very hard like a queen bee in a busy beehive <laughs> yeah Juma again just look at what he's doing he's on a yellow card he needs to be very careful all right I mean the foul was for him not against him anyway but but it was needless for him to just throw his arm there you know sometimes off the ball incidents you get caution here comes Juma the candy When they have the chance, they try to hit from long range there, Lukwago. Oh, seeing that come played intricate passes there in the middle, third of the moving to spaces. Maybe there's been a little bit of traffic in the midfield, and so too many legs there. Yeah, there is. I think uh, Mahmoud and Ajay has, I mean, are doing a brilliant job in midfield. They're actually uh, trying as much as possible not to get beaten in midfield and that's the reason why we saw that earlier shot there just from a fine ambitious one
Yeah, another another one again to stop the attack. Well, they're doing well to block that uh, tackle coming in from uh, Chiani. Oh, the Ugandans have really got some very interesting players. The Arafat Kiza, Usma. Oh, sitting very deep in midfield. Some players to look out for, and Ofori McCarthy, who's obviously going to have a long battle there with uh, Arafat. Seems to have committed a foul there. He knows it himself. They need to talk to the referee there because there's a bit of an injury situation. There's a head of it. I think a collision from the back. Yeah. And so that's the candy going down. Yeah, that might be painful. Absolutely. So he went into that uh, hard uh, head on collision with Kakande. Patrick Kakande, the SC Villa player. His fifth appearance there for Uganda. 280 minutes so far he's played. He's got only one yellow card in this competition. Well, it's an impressive fans who have come here. Yeah. Enjoying every bit of the game. The love. Fans who have come here. Yeah. Enjoying every bit of the game. The love in the Sunday. They just need a goal to, to just let up the place. And soon, soon. That all important goal will come. Because they keep on knocking on the doors. They just need that breakthrough. But the Ugandans are also doing some. Well, Some brilliant job at the back. I tell you what, back in 1978, AFCON Ghana beat Uganda by two goals to nil. And then in the under 20 AFCON in Mauritania, Ghana again beat Uganda by two goals to nil. Now the know. question everybody's asking, <laughs> what will be the scoreline today? Let's see. I mean, they just know how to beat them, and don't they? They just know how to beat them. And sometimes football can't follow the trend. And we've seen it happen. <laughs> we've seen it happen in, in numerous times. As you just said, just a case of a deja vu, a 2-0, 2-0 win. It could also happen today. And the Black Stars have another test with the Cranes in Morocco. What's going to be the scoreline? 2-0. <laughs> well, again, this, this is a cooling breakdown. This game between Ghana and uh, the Hippos of Uganda. I'm not too sure if that's what we want to make a substitution early on in the game here. But Coach Mole Bayakwasu of uh, Uganda will be waiting patiently to see what... Uh, Desmond will be bringing in. He's trying to have some bit of a technical waste there with the team. Your assessment so far in the first 30 minutes of this game? Uh, I, I think that uh, for the first uh, 10 minutes, uh, the Sasslide really took the game uh, by the, uh, the scrap of the neck uh, to the Ugandans. The Ugandans just soaked the pressure. At some point in time, we just saw them. I showed a glimpse of what they, can, what they could do in the game. They had uh, a shot on target from uh, their max man or their, uh, their front line man. Uh, Buyanga, which was a feeble one, but for me, I think that uh, the satellites have been on top of their game. They just have to put the ball at the back of the net. They are doing everything right, but the final third, that is what has been lacking their, their talent pass. We saw uh, Issa uh, fed, uh, fed through a uh, free eight, but also he just couldn't convert. The goalkeeper was just there to do a job, a brilliant job indeed, which he did. But I think that Testimon of Fair will be very happy for what he's seen so far in the first 30 minutes. And again, so far, Magada will be pretty much uh, quiet in the day. He uh, hasn't been tested too well in this competition, but we love every bit of it. Yakubu, equally. Well, goalkeepers have been on some bit of summer holidays. Yeah, they have the been. Cross they stadium. have been. But well, except to say that he nearly picked the ball at the back of his net, but he had already been impeded, according to the uh, Zambian official. Let's talk about the... Uh, Coach for Uganda, Moli Kwasu, was part of the Cubs team back in South Africa in 1999. He was a midfielder, the team finished fourth. And he has things with his side and is looking forward to enjoying every bit of it. I mean, he's enjoying his football. Then he's, uh, I mean, Desmond didn't enjoy his football. He just uh, retired at the age of 20. But, yeah, Tati Kronis could show on the foot of play today. Wow, brilliant.
Oh, he's trying to sometimes he, uh, able to keep it neat and simple there, but it's been well collected there by Yakubu. Yeah, they are growing confident into the game with the Ugandans, the Cranes. And that was just from a long way out, comfortable for Yakubu. Chione. Here comes Usama. What a save. Well, again, this is the man you've been talking about, Kiza Arafat Usama. But it all started from Chione. That wicked left foot of his went through two, three people. You can see there, and just fed him through. What a strike. Well, the KCC player I was just talking about this man short while ago. He's got the sweet left foot. Who skates up, tackles, passes, and shoots easily when he gets the chance, it's just as he just did. One of the players is well respected there. He set the tone and the ball rolling by Neto Uganda's first goal for a tournament against Nigeria. Point in the opposing as somewhere clears. Only back to the yellow and black team of uh, the hippos of Uganda. Yeah, that was a poor one. He needs to deliver a better one this time. Very tight game for both teams, not too many problems there. And uh, Molly Boy, of course, we talked about this man and what he wants to do. Alan Ori Watts, another ball whipped in again. It's uh, a someone's clearance. Here comes Suleimana here for Ghana. Up to Suleimana, charge as well. This man certainly would have to find space. Was looking for a free year. Couldn't quite get to him. And look at that confidence. The hippos have been at the back trying to. Deal with the situation very calmly. It was sweetly done there by Ibrahim Juma. Yeah, but what a run for Suleiman. He's got that in his locker. He's quick. He's got that pace in him. But that final pass, as I said earlier, that final pass is just the missing piece of the jigsaw in this team. You get to restart play, Ghana. For McCarthy, sometimes where's the captain's armband when Kufa Samoa is on the bench. Asamoa looking to pick up a free year again. Ghana just giving the ball away easily. Always looking to release Winyanga. Oh, they have it. Tussle there with uh, Ofori McCarthy. Very oh, excellent play there from Ofori McCarthy, the Dreams FC player. He's played almost every match there for the satellite side in this competition. 160 minutes for him. Yet to pick up the card there at the centre back. Yeah, he's been brilliant. Very disciplined player. Yeah. Emmanuel J. The free back to AJ. Here comes Garnas. Mohsin Mahmoud. Turns it to the right hand side for Kufo to whip one into the box. Chiono now will pick it up for Uganda. His left foot is always very electric when he gets the chance. He's got a trickery in him. Kwambuachi. We've got uh, 10 minutes plus additional time to end the first 45 minutes so far no go to the side they've been very compact very tactical in the approach in the game Jay looking to release the ball down the right hand side for the captain before drills the back the ball back into the box has been headed away by Madoy Kakande recycles it back Usama Kakande Buyanga in the middle waiting and this is a team, Mutebi. A good tackle there from Mohsen Mahmoud. Yeah, that is a wonderful piece of tackle from Mahmoud there. That is what it's been brought in to do, Mahmoud. I mean, he's done that expertly, and the, the crowd simply loved it. And a long ball here, and the flag has already gone up. It's gone up against Ganesh uh, Emmanuel Mensa. He also plays his club football for Kofrudia Sympathy no, I think he was club. on. I think he was on. Well, again, you might have to disagree with that with the assistant referee on the yeah, far side I there think, from I, I think he was on. Burundi. But then just one insisted that they played the ball too early into the part of Mensa. But for me, I think he was on. Well, there's no VAR to check that, was Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> Here comes Buyanga. Two goals for him against Congo. But too easy there for Said Yakubo to deal with it. The Ghanaian goalkeeper. Sends one in. A free year. But this time, it is going to be Mensah picking it up. Mensah in the box. Mensah! Well, nobody there for a pass. 
He goes solo, wasting the opportunity. Oh, that, I think that was the wrong choice from Manchester. You can see that. Just cut the ball back for your player. He just went for glory, and that was a, a wayward finish for me. I think that that was a wrong option for Mensa. That was poor from him. Oh, lovely run there on the left hand side for Ghana's Mensa. What talents they see abound in most countries there. We did see the early game played between Senegal and Congo. Senegal beating Congo by two goals to nail. Ah, the chat there with their coach who indicate that they have a lot of talents. And of course, we've seen them in display in this competition. They're Senegalese. And then Uganda also come with the area of stars. Yeah. Uh, playing together. They've got some of them playing international football as well. And the calmness in their disposition and the calmness in which they play their football, these two teams. We expect to see more. Emmanuel J here, Prince and Kwame Boachi. On the left hand side here is uh, Mensa. Trying to cut him beautifully there. Another reverse pass into the box and Kozwe, Nyanga, for Kakande, as Chione for the Hippos as they try to push on the charge here on the right hand side, Lukwago. Uh, Chiano unable to keep his balance well to maintain possession. Now the Ghanaians have Suleimana here. Here's the toast and the fans are loving every round of him. And here comes Juma here to save the situation for the Hippos of Uganda. Kufu here for Ghana. Well, what the fans want to see, it has been a very packed stadium. They just want to hear the ball hit the back of the net and then the streams will continue on the rafters. Yeah. And ACL here will pick the pieces, sent to the left hand side. And once again, it's gonna charge in and looking for the spaces. It's been pretty much of a locked up midfield play. No spaces now to for any true pass, and the players are unable to locate their colleagues on the wide areas. Of course, it's been pretty tactically. I think they've been really brilliant there, the two coaches, haven't they? Absolutely. I think that both teams really steady each other very well, and they know that the danger would cost. I will be in display in midfield and that's why they've choked and parked the midfield area and we can see fluidity of football in that midfield but certainly there must be a breakthrough Suleimana good play here the Lyon player Suleimana oh, too many too many of the touches there yeah and I tell you what there's a talk about the Desmond affair there but one of the former strikers in Ghana Ari Bakwane talks about him and says that He'll be a future Black Stars coach because he's brought a model of playing the satellite team. And the team is playing to a certain plan and thumbs up to him, Desmond Affair. And if you have a former player giving this huge accolade to his former colleague, he tells you that Desmond is loved by his teammates as well. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Eric Bakun, we all know him. What he's, what he's all about. I mean, he's scoring goals left, right, centre uh, in the Ghana Premier League for Kumasa Santa Kozoko. He went to Petro Jets. And then, yeah, I mean, but of course, to, you know, give that sort of, you know, encouragement to Desmond. But we all, we, as I said earlier, we've seen what Desmond has done ever since he took charge of this team. And people are just loving him. They're just loving him. And it's just time when we give him the opportunity to take care of this team for a long period of time, we'll be producing some stars in the near future. Suleimana again here on the charge for Ghana. Suleimana. He just has been sandwiched there by and the Hippos. And time to lose possession. They're able to get it back. Aziz. He's had a very quiet evening, hasn't he? Yeah. A free year. Ghana. Aziz, Suleimana, went to free kick for Ghana, Suleimana, Abdul Suleimana, his fourth game for Ghana, he's had just about 201 minutes for the Ghanaians, hasn't really scored but he's trying to get some openings there for the Ghanaians, Abdul Suleimana. Yeah, I think he went to sleep for quite some 
some long spell of the game. And I believe that the Ugandans have really done a good job on him. But in the past few, few minutes, we've, we've seen him let up the game and he's brought uh, the Black Satellite into life. And he just won himself a free kick. Let's see what Aziz can do with this one. There's Aziz to the far post there, straight to the goalkeeper. And Magada deals with it. That is a poor one. You see that to nobody in particular. The goalkeeper comes out to claim it. He should be doing better as he's. He's also be kept quiet in this first half. I think the Ugandans are really doing a brilliant job on the the Black Starlets. For me, we haven't seen too many too many teams keep the Starlet at bay. Even Senegal couldn't keep them at bay. But as Uganda said, I've really done a brilliant job, I must say. When you talk about them, it's one of the best teams in the competition. They have been absolutely brilliant. The Hippos, but Sulimana will come in here. Well, they had nine points in Group B to qualify into semi-finals. They actually won all of their games. All the three games, they yeah. did win them. Yeah. Started out. And this time he might want to try it from a long range. Most of the teams have been trying it. Came off uh, centre back to Raj. That is an ambitious effort. But I think it was a corner kick. Yeah, it is a corner kick there to Ghana because the Raj had the final touch on the ball there, trying to clear his lines. Him off his left foot. Two one win against Nigeria. The he post one nil win against uh, the Senegalese side and another one nil win against. South Sudan with nine points and the heaviest win was the semi-final <laughs> even that one came in the semi-final and the second half they just came all guns blazing winning by four goals to two yeah but here they're packed across Paul Stadium Suleimana swings one to the far post again Magada palms it out there for another corner kick yeah another gallant goalkeeping I think this this one was deep into that area and Magada, indeed, got that all-important touch to take it away from a free year. We're doing three minutes at a time. Left-footed one to the far post again. And Uganda will deal with it. Go for. He yeah, lost possession there, but uh, the Kande couldn't quite get to him. Go for recycles it back to Saidi Yakubu. Slimana. His ball control is being locked there by the fans because it's lighting up the play. Slimana. Yes, a J. A oh, lovely pass now to Kufu. Sends one in, nobody there to pick it up here. That is a poor one from before. After all the good work done by Suleiman, a skipper should be doing much more better. All the other top players sometimes play a centre back, left back, right back, and hold a midfield row. And this is so lovely here. They're cross posted. Aren't you loving every bit of it? Aren't you? I mean, I'm loving every single bit of it. And as I said, we saw what happened yesterday. And yeah. They want to just do a replicate the same thing, and they are doing just that. That's the confidence you have, Madoy. Yeah, brilliant. Madoy dealing with the situation. They've been brilliant. I think Uganda, they've been massive. They've really kept this Ghana team at bay. The Kande, Buyanga. Well, that's the man they call the dreadlock Buyanga. And the man they say he's always busy as a queen bee. <laughs> he's been kept quiet, just one shot on target. And this game so far, but he's made some wonderful runs. He's found the pocket of space, but just that the Ghanaian defenders have also been brilliant. Well, a few will strike from this range. Magada picks it up here. 
quite some not some football yeah you saw that little nutmeg there from a few years just look at that again brilliant but show was not going to trouble magada at all Good play now, Kakande. Uh, pushed out. Where oh, are you going to throw? That's Anakwame Bwache. Yeah, what was that thing to over everybody? And uh, Bwache would have to come with a very strong tackle. Yeah. Don't forget about the height of Kakande, by the very serious and very sweet player, Kakande. But that's what the Ugandans have got in their lock up. They play the ball just in behind to allow the players to run in behind the defenders. They've done it twice. The first one was on target, but this one was brilliantly read by Boache. Oh, Patrick Okande plays his club football for Club Villa. It's known as Patrick Jonathan Okande. Good defensive header here. Juma. Good play there from Juma. Jay. Clean things up for Ghana. For McCarthy. Well, the first half has just been closed because these two teams have sold a very huge crowd here at the Accra Sports Stadium. It's the final of the 13th edition of the African Games. At the, and this is where both teams know that the stakes are pretty high for a win. It's a, the gold medal that is at stake. But at this time, nothing is showing for it. Gone to nail, you got to nail.
Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? Has their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror, you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Unite in a resounding call. The time is up. The African Games 2023 comes to our shores. Join us as we celebrate the unity of our continent through the power of sport. Experience the African dream. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding. Every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other. As well as their own unique talents and abilities. So every day, in whatever you do, Remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Voices unite in a resounding call. The time is up. The African Games 2023 comes to our shores. Join us as we celebrate the unity of our continent through the power of sport. Experience the African dream. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child?
child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? Has their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mommy. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved.
and the coach by Kwasu. He's a happy man in terms of what he's been able to produce. I think we, we need to give credit to him. What he's done with the boys so far in this tournament. He's won every single game. Naturally mentioned, scoring eight and considering just three, keeping two clean sheets. They're very difficult to beat. One the end, yeah, element. What Ghana scoring five and conceding one. Yeah, and talk about the Ghanaians. So another crossfield pass here. And Kufu, I'm not too sure. He was trying to pick up a free here. Not once, not twice, not three times. But that pass was just a sumptuous one. But the end product was poor. Just look at this one from Kufu. Well, the idea was brilliant. He was always looking for Terry Freer. Again, Ghana losing possession in a very dangerous area. Buyanga, Chione. And he's been oh, taken off from Chione. And this is Kufo somewhere on the charge here. Spreading play down to the left hand side. Yeah, Ghana. And Mesa cross one into the box. Juma heads it out only as far as that. The captain of Ghana trying to think this one to near pose again. Very, very disappointing display there by the Ghanaian captain. Yeah, it is. Very disappointing from what someone has done it not once, not twice, not three times. He's done it so many times in this game. He needs to be talked to. Where's well, the leg McCarthy. Yeah. Now gets this yellow card in the game. He's got his name taken for McCarthy. His very first yellow card in the competition wow. for McCarthy. Yeah, I think it was late. Just a little, a little shove in the back. And for McCarthy will have his name taken. And as Riley said, the very first one of the competition. He's been very disciplined. Yeah, now I think that the Ugandans are really frustrating. The satellite. Juma's born into the box. Someone's head up. Bianga commits a foul, but only as far as the blind side of the referee. The Ugandans are now enjoying some football. But it's still finding it difficult to string some passes together. And uh, there was an incident again. Well, again, it's gone up. Yeah. Not a poor pass to nobody in particular. Everyone called ball watching. I'm sure Dustman will be thinking to bring in some fresh legs on. We saw that happen yeah, in the semi final. Yeah, as as already mentioned, Aziz has been summoned. Garner again, giving a chance of Aziz. He's up. The space on the right hand side for Samoa. Turns well. Sulemana finds support. Ghana in control now. Yeah, and again, it's that final ball again. They just cannot find or locate their front man. And as this is a husband withdrawn again, we saw that in the semi final. But it really paid off. Well, again, that's the decision there by the coach. Well, I think there's the player. Well, a lot of people have faith in him. 
Abdul Aziz, he's up with Bao Aziz scored for Ghana against the Gambia. And so it's uh, it's Bao who is also coming in and yeah, remember Asamoah. Boateng comes in for Adrian Asamoah. Yeah. Remember did start in the first game and well, the second game but has to be uh, put on the bench there. The coach trying to ensure that the captain gets a, a feel of the ball here but hasn't really played his part. Accra Lions remember Boateng coming in. And then, of course, you talk about the Isbao Aziz. Once again, Ghana coming up with some flurry of opportunities. Here on ACL, also yeah. a long range of players are beginning to shoot from their long distances. Yeah, we've seen that so many times this game already. Just safe to say, probably they just can't break through. But looking at the changes that Desmond Affair has done so far, let's see what can change in this game. But for me, Many people raise eyebrows why Aziz Issa, the talisman, has been withdrawn. He's not, he's not been in the game. He's not been in this element. He split so many games for Dream Service this season. So I can understand why he needs to make way for some fresh legs to come on. We saw that in the semi-final. When he came out from the game, they actually won. And we need to just leave it for Desmond to take in charge. Corner again on the move. Satellite. Again, not able to penetrate through the decision to get to the final pass has always been difficult for the Ghanaians. That's one of the problems the coach has been trying to deal with, working the ball, not the long passes. Slimana switching down to the right hand side. Again, it's um, remember Boating. Kikande. Here comes Kikande. He stopped in his tracks there, but ball has been recycled back. Here comes Bianga. They are very strong on the ball, aren't they? Yeah. Bianga. Bianga. <laughs> Love Bianga. But Ghana would have to find a way out. And just get the ball up. Yeah, you know, the reason why the Sutler are really find it very difficult to break the, the Queens of Uganda down is that whenever they have the ball, they have five, six players behind it from the Queens. And so they just couldn't, they just can't penetrate in there. And I think that we should give much more credit to uh, Moses Ochama for doing so. He knows the sort of trader the satellite really possess, and he's doing that expertly. Good play now, Ghana. Efriye giving a chance. Oh, lovely play, Efriye. Efriye! Unlucky. Just unlucky, Efriye. He's, he has this in his locker. Doesn't he? Just look at that ball spread through to him again. Lovely control from him. And that's that strike was was not too far away at all every year. On his weaker foot. That is some try. I think the goalkeeper had a hand on it. Fingertips maybe. But the goalkeeper has been given. But that's some some strike from a free year. And that is the handwork of Desmond again. He brought on Miss Bao Aziz. He actually fed that ball through to a free year. And now Ghana in control. Well. To think about the fact that uh, the young man, a free eight, plays his club football for Thought FC in Ghana. Not the household name, you might be thinking of where which club he plays for, but at least he's been able to show glints of every quality side that the big clubs will be coming for his signature. Yeah, he's got two goals already in this tournament. Ghanaians are trying to cheer and spread the team on to victory. Here comes, remember Boateng? And it's being blocked away. Yeah. I think we should, that, is, that is Boateng again. Try to place the ball in that danger area for... Here comes, remember Boateng's boy free here, but again, it's Magadha's catch. 
But most of the long balls go straight to Magada and he's able to deal with it without any problem at all. <laughs> I tell you what, when he catches the ball, he just goes down. So to say, he just wastes a little bit of time. This is Ms. Bao Aziz. Suleimana. Very strong. Suleimana. Oh, looking for a three here. Would have been a very interesting goal there. Yeah, this is what the fans are looking out for. To just bring the likes of Suleiman into life. Aziz, who's come on, has also made life very difficult for the Ugandans. Well, Ms. Bao Aziz plays for Still Believes FC. Ghana. A free again, looking to have a little bit of a trickery there. Yeah. Still Ghana. If it, if it had paid off, that would be a, a brilliant 10 from a free year. But the Ugandans are proving so difficult to beat, so difficult to break down. And I must admit, they've really done so, so well to keep. Ball taken here, Ghana in the box. A little bit of a slip there, but the Ghanaians will pick it up again this time. It wouldn't be any problem at all for Magana to deal with it. Absolutely. But the second half, seen them improvement with the sunlight team with the substitution made by Desmond. Yeah, another audacious effort comes up, ricochet from the head of the defender of the Ugandans and into the gloves of the goalkeeper. Yeah, as I said, the changes have really. Really, really paid up. We've seen a free as this. And Suleimana. Well, the referee. Wrestling for an infringement. Yeah. We've seen Aziz had his chance fit through a free year and a free year had that effort. Just wide. And over the crossbar. But that is a free year in your shot. I think he's complaining about something. There's massive support there here. Yeah, the fans are loving it. The crowd it. are just really in and showing that the Sunlight team will be enjoying every bit of the game and a win and a gold medal here will be so much appreciated there. But that'll be two wins there for Ghana. Yeah. And that's the man who plays his club football for third FC and he scored in this game. Jimmy Free here. Two goals. And then it's a fifth game there for Ghana. As many as uh, 299 minutes. And a free kick advantage to the Ghanaian here. Yeah. The Cranes have got some defending to do. They've, I mean, they've been defending brilliantly. Well, an hour and four minutes played. And still Ghana nil, Uganda nil. It's from a long way out, I think. Oh, there will be an expectation that Suleimana would now have to deal with this one. Suleimana has been pushed away by Magada. Ball still in the box. Dangerous for Ghana. And remember Boateng. What a strike. But Juma had to block that. Well, again, it's Emmanuel J. Yeah, but that is a brilliant strike by Suleiman. Yeah, obviously he's got that in his locker. But that is some strike. But Magada also had it all covered. Brilliant save from him. To deny Suleiman. Ghana oh, scored very late against Senegal. It was uh, Michael Efsin. Well, that's tried there. Boateng ball in the box. Ghana would have opportunities in the net already. Again, for the very second time, a free year denied. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was, there was a little shove and a push in the penalty area, and the referee spotted it. Just look at that again. Yeah, I think it's a handball incident. Uh, the Ugandans are claiming it. Yeah, and that is the reason why it won't be given. Just look at the atmosphere. Beautiful. The atmosphere Beautiful. calling for a goal. Beautiful. The touch is on. Wow. The light is out. Fans want to see the black satellites yeah. shining today. Absolutely. This is beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful from the fans. Oh, your take after this. They are loving it. The opportunity yeah. two times here. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Free hit the back of the net and he was a judge of foul, the goalkeeper leading to the goals there. Yeah. Now for me, I think that it's a great call from the referee. 
the very first one. They just didn't allow the goalkeeper, Magada, to get to the ball. They shoved him, they pushed him, and the referee spotted out. And he didn't give a goal. And this one again, he saw that the ball hit the arm of the satellite arm. And he again denies the goal from the satellites. Let's see what they can control. Again, twice they've been denied. Maybe not a third time. But the fans have been brilliant, I must admit. As you really mentioned, the very last time we saw this happen, this pack stayed at the Crossport Stadium, was back in 2008. In Camp 2008, the African Cup of Nations. Ken. Corner. Trying to create space. Juma, creating by, remember, Boating. Remember again, looking to whip this ball into the box. Maga comes out. If he denied. Wow. That was quality. Quality there from Remember Boating. And still believes player. Here comes Juan Boache. Hossein is Bamouj. Here comes Boating again. Mahmoud, Suleimana, Black stays down, Mensa, race dip into the box and he wins corner, a corner kick. Yeah, talk about that delivery from Boatin. But let's talk about this again from Mensa. I mean, he's been working tirelessly, but the Ugandans yet again denying the satellites well, tell once me more. The hippos of Uganda are not being overawed by the massive crowd here at the Accra Sports Stadium. They're still enjoying their brand of football. They are one of the most successful teams in the competition, having won almost all their group matches in the semi final with the hefty win. Now they come up against the host nation and they still are not really coiling. They are just coming out and rather playing a very high line game against Ghana. Absolutely. And they are. And they're actually taking their time to frustrate the. The satellite, and that's the reason why Coach Moses Chama is not really making any substitutions because he's really loving what these boys are doing so far. That's to frustrate them, and they've done it expertly. Uganda. Well, we're seeing this happening in the match between Uganda and Congo. That was when Shemlan Kamiat, the goalkeeper, was uh, taken out because of the concussion he had at the time when he went out saving a set piece. Beyond that, the past 20 minutes or so of the match to be played for is what the fans are still pushing. In the Princess's game last night, they went into extra time. Yeah. And that is what the satellite don't want to happen. They want to finish and kill the game off. That is that strike again from Suleimana. But some venom, but expertly saved by the goalkeeper, who went down so early, he smelled the danger and had to deny Suleiman. That is brilliant from Magada. He needs to be given some credit. He's been brilliant all evening. I tell you what, I mean, the question a lot of people will be asking whether there's too much pressure on Ablaziz Isa to perform in this competition. For those who say they ha he hasn't really been the same Ablaziz who's been scoring wonderful goals there for Jim FC. Yeah. He's only scored one in, in his dozen games he's played. Jubilation already in there. Ghana will have a chance in the box. Not the best of our deliveries again for the Ghanaians. They still are pushing, and this time. He has been. What a chance. Bar Aziz just hitting the ball away. What a chance from Miss Bar Aziz there. He just took it so early. Just look at this again. Hitting buddies in that danger area. But I don't say that was a delicious crossing, but I think he still stayed in, hitting so many buddies in that area. And finally, it came to Aziz. 
I was thinking he was going to control the ball, but he took, made up his mind and took the first shot. That was way what finish. AJ, a free, AJ, Ms. Bawaziz. And then again, it's a Ghanaian who are calling for a penalty. Well, the Zambian referee would have none of that. Yeah, I don't think he'll give it. I think he's just, if it went down too easily, no, I don't, there's nothing in for me. It's not a penalty. Definitely not. Well, the Ghanaians are really calling and perhaps having a word there with assistant referee, the Zambian official. He's had a very interesting game there, Hilary and Baba. They've actually sounded the referee as if to say those, there's VAR. Suleiman Abed bets it again. Ghana would have to chase and get this one out. Aaron Esel, another ball into the box. And the all the people of Uganda really defended their lines and how they get themselves out is an incredible one, Ukwaku. And Brilliant. Alan Oriwat. I was leading the charge there. There's going to be a Ghanaian attack again. They have had to play one of the most exciting footballs in the competition. Your position has played well as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if your opponent don't score, and you're, you're still in the game, don't do it. And for me, I think that with, with both managers, Moses Ochama will be very delighted with what his boys has, has actually done today. I mean, they are, they're giving some tough time to the satellite. They are proving so very difficult to break down. And there's a team that has scored eight goals in the tournament. Yekande. Brianga. Here comes Brianga. And Ace are doing a wonderful job to raise back and win possession for Ghana again. Yeah. In as much as they've been trying to find the goals they've been also gallant at the back as well that is some defending <laughs> wonderful <laughs> the satellite are really enjoying themselves here <laughs> well the confidence has been given to them by the coach and this is Suleimana. A free year has been brought down. But the referee sees a very legal tackle there. Yeah, just look at the number of players surrounding the gun and players when, whenever they have the ball in that penalty area. Three, four players. Well, okay, Kandi went to ground. And Ms. Aziz was just pulled through. I tell you what, there's been some 15 minutes of so much pressure there to the peoples of Uganda. Yeah, I think, yeah, tireless. That was a clumsy challenge. If Ms. Bauer should have gone down, I think that a referee could have given a free kick or possibly a penalty kick. But that was a clumsy challenge from the defender. Mensa charging forward here. And Taraj, the captain, deals with it there for the hippos of Uganda. Taraj pushing it down to the right hand side. Here comes Taraj, gives the ball away easily. Chioni was a target. AJ is going to push to ground. The referee now whistles for an infringement. The Ghanaian way. And fans sharing him on. Emmanuel AJ has really had some urgency in the midfield play of Ghana. Yeah, I think he's been brilliant. Uh, for me, he's been wonderful. But it's doesn't runs on the left flank there he always find a way to penetrate and this time around he's won himself a free kick well, Zek comes in there Wakiso Giants player Polo Kagogwe trying to bring in a, a defender I'm not sure again what Ayokwas is trying to do is not to sip deep and allow the Ghanaians to attack and that's the foul there on AJ. Taraj had already lost possession. And now Ghana with advantage with a set piece here. Yeah, you've seen that from that man, Suleiman. What can he conjure this time around? 
Magará. Slimana. The one did a job. Yeah. Suddenly not this time. And ball taken away from him. Mutabi. Poor pass there from Mutabi. As far as he's. Trimsef seat is where he plays his club football. Didn't quite connect the ball well. And uh, Ophir McCarthy gets the unbound. And now Marshalling things at the back beautifully there for Ghana. Here comes Irwin ACL. It'll be very difficult for the satellite to actually break down the Ugandans. Just look at them. They are packed at the back. They just left Buanga up front. And they're really giving the, sal the satellite a, a tough game today. We'll push for the flag up for offside against uh, Bunyanga. You see the only what? time he came alive and scored goals there was against Congo. Yeah. The only time he scored two goals. And when the three group games never got a chance to score. You know, it was just a shade too early there. Bunyanga. Just a fraction too early. But I think that, I mean, Moses will be very delighted with what his boys has done to frustrate the satellite and as I said they have a strategy they just left Buanga up front try to keep the players at bay and then floats the ball behind the defenders and even caught offside not once not twice but if it pays off the satellite will be well a cooling break very important there for both yeah, teams absolutely. Oh, we're just about uh, 12 more minutes to end the uh, entire game there. And so far, it has been an entertaining night here at across Crossbow Stadium. Yeah. Even though we haven't recorded any goals yet, the fans are loving it. But they're just patient, waiting for that all-important goal. But that man, Magada, has denied everything that has come at him. The latest has been... That tender boot from Suleiman from that free kick. Motebi. I'm trying to pick it from another long range. Now Lukwagwe also giving it out. Kakande, it's been cut out today's game. Sometimes it comes out with some flashes. <laughs> the last 10 minutes of the game here at the Across Sports Stadium. The final match of the men's football, 13th edition of the African Games, Ghana and Uganda. Good pass now. Fie! Yes. This man is looking to get his third here in yeah. the competition. But that was wasteful. You could see. That was a brilliant pass from Fie. He could have just played that one, two. With us, he's there. He decided to go alone and go for glory. But that was a wayward finish by Fie. Player who scored two goals already in this tournament. Yeah. He wants to be in the mix to be the leading top goal scorer in this tournament. But I think that was the wrong option for Mifuye. Emmanuel Mifuye. Oh, is it? Jerry Mifuye. And then, of course, Emmanuel J. Who was a place to club football for Jim FC. He was born on 11th of March 2004. 13, the 10th for Ghana, 5 for Uganda. Yeah. And it's telling, it's showing. They've kept knocking on the doors, the satellites. They're just waiting for that key moment, that vital moment for them. Jay had a lot of reward to do it. 
Oiwot wins it again. Motebi. Here comes Buyanga. Yeah, this is where they can be dangerous, Uganda. Juma received the pass there. Kakande. And now it's straight to the goalkeeper. He missed an opportunity. I tell you what, that would have been an interesting goal there. Kakande. Thought he had scored, spilled it up, Saidi Akubu. And when they constructed this one perfectly, they nearly punished the Ghanaians. They nearly did. Awkward for goalkeeper Yakubu. But as I said, just look at this again. That was a clean strike. But caused lots of problems for Yakubu. He's a relief man right now. What a oh. chance. Well, that's the man. Muterbi. And, of course, you talk about the man attention, Kiza Usama. We came out with a long strike there, Usama. Yeah. I told you the Ugandans have got a game plan. You remember Boateng's born into the box. People come, start spills it. Here they come again. Look at how they construct things and look at how they move. And this is the man again. Kiza Usama. Contain the pressure. And when they get a chance, they release their powerful legs of Kakande, Wiyanga, and of course, Usama. So three players on two players for the Ugandans. And they just know what you're doing. Yes, he coached. Yes, one or two another dies into the game. Absolutely. Sulemana. Sulemana again, not the best of striking there from Sulemana. No, I think he just couldn't wrap up his leg over the ball very well. That's, that's not a, a pure strike. You can see that again here. Yeah. Not a clean one. The intention was there, but execution was poor. Well, both teams have realized that the only way to break the back is to look for the spaces and strike from the long range. Bunyanga. Usama. Juma. Juma. And Kakande. Good save, Saeed. What a save. That is brilliant. To deny Buyanga. Oh, they construct something beautiful, and when they do, they are always going to create problems. Yeah. And they go again. Here comes Juma. And you always want to see the likes of uh, Usama. It shifts into the middle third. Juma. Mutebi. Juma again. Hakim Mutebi. Remember Boateng, salvaging something for Ghana. But what a save it was there from Saeed Yakubu. That is a brilliant save. What a save, save from the Siano FC player. Yeah. Moussin, Emmanuel J. Fans were asking, just push the ball forward. Yeah, to release the ball quickly because they need the wow. ball to be here. Oh, the Ghanaian slowing the game down. Oh, ball into the box again. It has to be picked up here by Magada. Yeah. Five players just inside the penalty area for Uganda and just two players attacking the ball from the satellites. I think the Ugandans are really playing some brilliant football, I must say. Tactically, they've been brilliant. They've had oh. their moment, but... I'm watching now, sends it to the left hand side way. It is men's operating. And was trying to get to the first fitting pass, and the Ghanaians have been cut open at the back. Yeah. Oh, a poor round there from Lukagwe. 
Means the Guardians would have to recycle things and move forward. They need to stay focused and concentrated at the satellite because the few times that the Ugandans have come forward, they've really caught some. Here comes Garner again. Sulemana and Mahmoud. Good play, Garner. Sulemana here. Sulemana! Sulemana! What a block. That is a great block from the Ugandan defense. They've been doing this all day long. Just look at this ball from Suleiman again. Go past one, go past two. By the captain of the side, Turak, stood to his ground to deny Suleiman. That would have been in. Oh, Mainta. A place for Kofridia St. Pavi is out for David Amuzu. Amuzu plays his left football for Golden Strikers in Ghana. And here comes the Mediama SC player. Kelvin and Kroma. Well. He's got some very street fit there in Kroma. Yeah. And Suleimana looking to respond here with the ball to near post. And Ghana looking to strike here. And the best of connections, the Kandi gets it out only as far as uh, well. Get my mood. I was looking to cut Magana off track. That is some strike from him from a long way out. My mood, yeah. But Magana had it all covered. So, Ivan, Ivan Bazi. He has a chance in the game here. Rambazi plays his left football in Greece. And he's coming in for Kiza Usama. Yeah. The KCC AFC player Kiza Usama. And he's had his day in the game there. He's going to show things for the Hippos of Uganda. But Ivan, everyone Bazi. The only reason he didn't start this game, with Temi was able to control things in the second half, give them the opportunity. And Suleimana here, or oh, that defensive block there, as he charges forward, Suleiman ball taken away from him by Taraj. Good play there from the Hippos. Yeah. Another wonderful defender from Uganda. Kakande. Patrick Jonah Kakande. Kakande again. And the Ghanaians defend well. Uh, they run SL. They have. I think that Kakande, yeah, he went that too easily. That is a great call from the referee. Not to have awarded a free kick to Kakande. And Kruma. Mahmoud. Sulemana. This one is only for Magada. Comes out and Kruma controls well. It is a free. What a time to score! What a time! And the stroke of full time! Jerry Efriye, the third FC player, gets his third goal in this competition. Is the moment in for Ghana? That is quite something from Efriye. He tried it once, twice. It didn't work out as a set. The third time, he may be a third time lucky. What a sumptuous finish from Efriye. Brilliant. That is wonderful from him. He scored three goals. He's the top goal scorer of the tournament. And boy, he put his laces through. And this time around, Magada was beaten. Jerry Afriye, terrific finish. And what a time to score. What a time to score. Finally, Uganda 
have been broken down after defending gallantly throughout 90 minutes. But it took a sheer brilliance, a moment of brilliance from the top goal scorer, Terry Freire, to unleash one and to go past Magada. Terrific finish. Set the whole place agog. Jerry Efriye. There's going to be a party in Ghana. Absolutely. Black princesses picking up the gold medal. And a satellite who won the Africa Games back in 2011. Maputo appears to be heading to yet another gold medal here at the competition. And if you never knew about his name, write it down. Jerry Efiye. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been brilliant. He's tried it all evening. Twice he was denied. But not the third time. The third is absolutely delightful. Yeah. What is that? Well, think... if the first two were debatable, this one is delightful. It is sumptuous. And the last time a Ghanaian under 20 side won and beat Uganda by two goals to, nine, to nail, there was a free year banya. <laughs> so there's something about free years, isn't it? There's something about the free years at Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> Bunyanga. The Ghanaians are just some seconds away from the gold medal. The only team to break the record of this peoples of Uganda is the Black Satellites. Yeah. They have won almost every game they've played in this competition, the Hippos of Uganda. Brilliant record, but at some point, it had to stop somewhere. It had to stop somewhere, and that is a continuous persistence from the Black Satellite. Here they come again. Miss Bao spreads one into the box again. There's nobody there to connect. Even though Efriye was lurking around. Brian Kwasu had said he was going to play his game. His game, yes, he did play. But he came up with a very strong, resilient satellite side. But almost everything worked out for them. He had also played their game as well, what Desmond said. I am going to play my game as well. They have to play to our parting, not their parting. Yeah. And they did play to the Ghanaian parting. And Ghana will have Nkrumah here. They would have to see of this performance, the Ghanaians. A Zambian official would say that he is going to look for substitution. And Ghana would have to make an introduction. Yeah. And this time it is Ruth. man in the eight shirt, Frederick Kessie. Plays for Accra Lions. Well, 13 years ago, the Black Satellite picked the gold medal in Maputo. That was 2013 when Christian Pian led the team to that medal. 2024, his very first game, first tournament for the Black Satellite. Desmond Affair has won the gold medal for Ghana. And they did that against Uganda, a team they beat in 2021 to pick the fourth Afghan under 20 title. And now, the Ghanaians have done the same again to win the gold medal in 2024 and the 13th edition of the African Games. It wasn't 2-0, it was 1-0. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes things need to change, but credit to the Ugandan team. They really did so well. They really did so well, uh, I must say. They've been brilliant. Uh, they really give uh, this satellite a tough knack to crack. But boy, there was Jerry Afriye who took his... A chance expertly. What a resounding finish from Jerry Afriye. He tried it once, twice. He was denied by Magada. But not a third time. This time around, he picked his spot. And he arrowed that ball in. At the death. That is a dagger in the heart of the Ugandans. They just couldn't believe it.
They thought they had defended so well. They thought they had broken down the game plan of the satellite. But that man in your shot, the top goal scorer of the tournament, and a big, big kudos to Desmond Affair. He's been brilliant. Neil Datilamche. Yeah, he's sitting on the end team. of the game. He's sitting on at a 17 and a 20 and 23. The Black Stars, the assistant coach of the team, Neil Datilamche. Yeah. And his charges together with Desmond Affair really have had a good game here for the Black Satellite. There was Congo here. There was the Gambia. There was Benin. There was Senegal. There was Nigeria. There was South Sudan. And I tell you what, it was Ghana. Winning by go to nil and twice coach Molly by Kwasu has lost a final against the Ghanaian side. Yeah, he did that against coach Karim Zito, and now he's done that against Desmond Affair. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, Ghana has been the uh, has been his nemesis, but as you can see, they completely dominated in terms of ball possession. Uh, the seller were there in terms of shots on target, seven to six but they have been brilliant these boys these lads have been terrific in this tournament they began with the zozo draw against congo but they have never looked back the one the one and the one again and this time they have the gold medal in sight the ribbons are surely red Gold green. We're gonna come in into the competition and finding spaces and looking very sharp in attack. They've always had something up their sleeves to protect and deal with the teams there. They knew that the final was something they can't afford to lose. The Ghanaians coming in pretty hard. Had some chances with Silimana leading the attack as well for them. Well, that's where the free hit felt he had scored the first goal there for Ghana, which of course came out to be denied to the referee initially whistling for a Ghanaian goal, but he indicated there was a push in the goalkeeper, Magada. So that wasn't going to count there for Ghana. Yeah. Well, the first half came in with a lot of uh, openings there for the Ghanaians. The fear was always tormenting the, uh, the Gandans. And Brianga was trying to pick up a pass there from Usama. And then she only had a point came out. Quick feet, quick decisions from him. Again, some moves there by the Ghanaians. They kept moving, they kept going. He never stopped the free year again with this left foot strike. He can strike from both foot there. Yeah. And when the Ugandans decided to construct something, they also had something coming out there. Nakubu just spilling the ball, but he was able to come back and win it. The Kande couldn't quite deal with the situation. Kande kept pushing again. The Kande and Said Yakubu with a save. Now there was the moment where the free years magic just worked out for Ghana and Krumah with the assist 
Well, so that was the scoreline. effort has been so good all boys have fought we've played as a team we didn't take away our chances and we are punished for that good luck going forward thank you thank you sir. congratulations what's going through your mind No words. Uh, um, incredible, incredible. Well deserved once again. Credit to the boys. Credit to the technical team. Credit to the management. Credit to the president. Um, and, the, and the fans. And the fans. I mean, amazing, amazing, amazing final. Great football. Great Ugandan team. Incredible team. Incredible team. So we're happy. We're happy. We allow you to have your moment, but congratulations once again. Thank you very much. on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other as well as their own unique talents and abilities so every day in whatever you do Remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mommy. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. The first set of medals will be given in just a few after the cuff anthem has been heard for the dignitaries. Nous allons commencer à tout à l'heure avec les, la remise des médiales pour les habitants. Après l'hymne national de la CAF.
Now to begin, the first set of medals will be given to the match officials of the third place match and the finals. Nous allons commencer par les médias pour les habits du match de la troisième place de la et après on aura pour la finale aussi. Receiving the medals now, the first set will be given to the match officials of the third place match and the finals. presentation will be done by the third vice president of CAF, Mr. Suleiman Waberi. On commence tout de suite avec la remise des médias pour les habits de la troisième place et après on aura pour la finale aussi. You're watching the medal ceremony for the men's football tournament of the 13 African Games Accra 2023. The first set of medals is being presented to the match officials of the third place match and the finals. Presentation is being done by CAF's third vice president, Mr. Suleiman Waberi. La remise des médias pour les habits pour les deux matchs, les trois, troisième place et aussi pour la finale. And now as we proceed with the medal ceremony, it's time to present the bronze medals to the team that secured the third place in the men's football tournament of the 13th African Games, Accra 2023. And this goes to the national team of Senegal. And maintenant, it's time to remettre les médias de bronze à l'équipe qui ont obtenu la troisième place du tournoi de foot masculin de la 13e Jeu d'Afrique à 2023 et l'équipe nationale du Sénégal. That's the Senegal national team receiving the bronze medal for securing the third place in the men's football tournament of the 13 African Games à 2023. Et sur vos applaudissements l'équipe Sénégal. All right, so the award ceremony, it's ongoing for the men's football of the 13 African Games Accra 2023, the bronze medal going out to Senegal. They've also done a wonderful job tonight. They, they beat Congo by two goals to nil. And they go away with a bronze medal. Time to present the, the medals. So but Derek, uh, the exciting stuff is that they were looking for the gold in this tournament. And they would have to settle for bronze. It's not something they are really excited about. But once again, that's, they are a big nation in terms of youth football. And it's exciting to at least see them climb the podium. Absolutely. Uh, here comes Uganda, who, is, who are coming to pick up. The silver medal are there in your shot. The Senegalese team confirmed they pick up the bronze medal. Some talented football players in there. But yes, of course. Uganda are on the podium receiving their silver medal. They've been brilliant. Oh, they have been brilliant. They've worked very hard yeah. coming to this competition, having one of the best records. And, and eventually going down against Ghana. That was the only side. They would say that they couldn't break their back, but they had done that against Nigeria, had done that against Senegal, had done that against South Sudan, and eventually lifted the spirit up with a 4-2 win against Congo. Yeah. But the only team that had to stop their marooning run was the Ghanaian side, and they had to do that through Jerry Efriye's wonderful tender book there, giving Ghana the, the only goal. 
uh, prior to this game, Ghana had always had the 2-0 win against Uganda. Yeah. And Banyo Kwasu, the coach who said twice is losing to a Ghanaian side. But the irony of the entire situation here at the Accra Sports Stadium, just not about the fans, but had to do with the Ghanaian team winning the women's gold medal in Cape Coast just last night. And the satellites had to do the same here tonight. Yeah. I think that they've been brilliant in this tournament. Uh, kudos to Desmond Affair, who has also been such a wonderful, wonderful piece of a tactician in this tournament. Well, Torachi has been the man at the back. He's done a wonderful job there for the uh, peoples of Uganda. Well, I told you, the entire city in Kampala might be a little bit quiet, but they've sold a very great football here in Ghana. This team is a team for the future. This team is a team Uganda certainly would want to conquer Africa with. Watch out for Kakande. Watch out for Torach. Watch out for Madoi. Watch out for Buanga. Matebi. Watch out for Chione. Watch out for Juma. Watch out for Lukwago. Alan Oriworth. Abdul Magada. This is a team made for the future and this is a team uganda will cherish for a long time but the Ghanaians, the gold medalists in white in the victory and party mode will go for the gold medal well they've had to work hard they have to dust a lot of things off to break the hard hard and most resilient team the hippos of uganda yeah i must say they really deserve it and kudos to Coach Desmond with his tactics, with his substitutions. It's really paid off. And Kuma came on to feed through a free air who dispatches finish beautifully. That was quite some finish. And he came at the dead of the game, 90 plus one minute. And that is some dagger in the heart of the Ugandans. But for me, I think that this team is a team to watch. As I said, the Ugandans a team to watch in the near future. I also think that this team is, is a team to watch. Yakubu has been brilliant and it's in between the sticks. He saved some wonderful footballs and the talk of the moment every year. Well, there's talent in the Ghanaian team. Said Yakubu, Ofori Bakati, Nanea Kwambuachi, Adrian Kufour Samoa, Hossein Mahmoud, Abdulaziz Isa, Jerry Efriye, Emmanuel Mensah, Kos. Immortal J, Aaron Esel, Abdo, Hakim Suleimana. Also, do remember the likes of Frederick Kessie, Kevin Nkrumah, Michael F. St. David Amuzu, Vincent Anane, Daniel Afu, Maxwell Azafapwe, Ms. Bao Aziz. And remember watching this is a future Ghana is building. And so, the expectation is that you want to see some of them being drifted into. The under 23 side and gradually moving straight into the mainstream black stars because one of the players that did win the afcon under 20 competition back in 2021 is one of the players who was just nathan lejay who was called out to be part of the black stars team in morocco so this is the story here at the cross sports stadium gold medal ghana silver medal uganda and senegal with a bronze medal. The Senegalese won the 2015 edition and today they pick up the bronze medal yeah. here in Ghana. And the Ghanaians that won the competition in Malabo back in 2011, 11. 13 years later, they are the gold medalists. And the very best performance for the Ugandans have been for place. But this time they will continue to celebrate because they're building something for the future. Yeah. Congratulations there to the Ghanaians and your take. Yeah, we have to celebrate them. Uh, they've done a brilliant job today. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the ladies team also won gold and they just need to replicate that. They've done it with some sort of confidence and vigor. They have been brilliant and we just need to applaud them for what they've done today. There's been so much of gold in Ghana in the 200 meter race, we saw gold. In the high jump, we saw gold. And we've seen gold again in football. That is quite an astonishing one. The land of gold retains its gold. Absolutely. 
So Ghana, formerly the Gold Coast, a Ghana that export gold, and of course winning gold is something which is not new there for the Ghanaians. Congratulations to the Ghanaian team, to Joseph uh, Joe Paul for the 200 meters gold medal, and of course we've seen a lot of them. The hockey team also picking up gold. Yeah, today. There are boxers who are picking up a lot of gold medals there for Ghana. Two boxers already. And the Black Princesses gold medalist in the women's edition of the 13th African Games in Cape Coast and the Black Satellite have replicated the same feat there by the ladies. Congratulations to Ghana and wonderful, wonderful celebration. And of course, congratulations to the LOC, the media and everybody who ensured that we had one of the most exciting and successful Africa Games on the continent. This is our coverage of this event. of the men football tournament of the 13th African Games, Accra 2023. Félicitations à l'Ikana d'avoir rapporté ce tournoi, le 13e jeu d'Afrique, Accra 2023. On behalf of the government and the people of Ghana and the local organizing committee, of the 13th African Games, Accra, Ghana 2023. would like to say a big thank you for your patronage and support. Good night, and we'll see you next time. Au nom du gouvernement du Ghana et communauté de l'organisation, nous vous remercions d'être ici et passer une belle soirée. International Maritime Hospital, IMA, situated in Tema Community 3, is a 130-bed capacity hospital and a one-stop show for all your health needs. IMA provides all medical and surgical specialities. We have a modern gastroenterology and endoscopy suite to take care of all your health needs. The International Maritime Hospital offers nephrology with renowned dialysis and boasts of one of a kind radiology department with a wide world 3 Tesla MRI scanner, the only one of its kind in Sub-Sahara Africa. IMA boast of a flagship comprehensive stroke center. IMA is open to the general public. 
We have enough. A life of plenty for every child. We've had enough all along. There's enough choice for every child. Enough nutritious food produced responsibly and sustainably so children can thrive everywhere. Let's come together and stand with children to say we've had enough. Enough. Delicious is being denied. Munching has become mindless. To that we say, not on our watch. Messy munchers, play dirty. Busy fighters, take a moment and intensify it. Because when snacking is under attack, we'll be there to fight back. Snack in the name of play. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? You like no other. I can play the drums. I'm It's me like no other. I can sing. I can dance. You like no other. As well as their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. Voices unite in a resounding call. The time is up. The African Games 2023 comes to our shores. Join us as we celebrate the unity of our continent through the power of sport. Experience the African dream. Print like no other. As well as their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror, in the you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, Remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved.
Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? As their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror, you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mommy. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. So if you are watching, this is the women's single final in the long tennis. Kenya currently have picked up a point in the set. Kenya versus Egypt. The Egyptians will be hoping to pick up a medal. That was a big, big point picked up by the Kenyan. Okutui Angela. From Kenya playing against Salam Alamis. Salama about to serve. players returning that strokes and that was a good hit excellent one that was very very good return by Salamo
That was a great stroke. Salama will be hoping to add to the already over 90 gold medals won for the Egyptians. But she has to deal with the Kenyan. Returning those strokes. That should be out. And a two point from the Kenyan. A good start. A good start from the Kenyan. Angela Okoti. Surely this is not the start that Salama would have wanted. But still a lot of tennis to be played. That is another 47. did not work. Salama Lami have a lot of challenges getting herself across the net. Angela returns it. Temperatures over 33 degrees here in Accra. It's a very difficult condition to play tennis in. But these are experienced players. And I'm sure they will get through those temperatures as they seek to grab either the gold or silver.
So Angela Okutu. It's 15 love for Angela in the fourth set. Impressive rally from both players. A 15 all in the fourth set. Angela with the serve. That was very poor from the Egyptians. 30-15. Angela will be hoping to take a very good lead in the fourth set. That was excellent. Excellent return of that. Excellent return. By Okuti Angela. They should give him that point in the fourth set. A good start to the four sets by the Kenyan. Salam Alamis. Good return. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. That was very, very good. 